The NHL playoffs are finally here. Not long from now, one team will be awarded the greatest trophy in professional sports. And here at Pub Sports Radio, we are celebrating it with our first ever NHL playoff pool. $50 to enter and all of that money except for $3 in credit card fees goes into the prize pool. Your job is to create a roster of 20 players, any 20 players of your choosing. One point for a goal, one point for an assist. The team with the most points at the end of the Stanley Cup playoffs gets the cash. The top 10% will be paid here in our Pub Sports Radio NHL playoff pool. Picks must be in by Saturday, April 20th. Puck drop of the first playoff game, which should be an easy day to remember for you ganja smokers out there. 420, it all goes off. Compete against your favorite Pub Sports Radio personalities and get that cash. The Stanley Cup playoffs are here. Let's get paid. Get him, Jimmy. Where low shack at? The bottle's getting empty. I'm the crack and we stacking. Chips, all of this. What I want plus money when it's that's what I'm on. You can say I'm gone. I prefer elevated pump sports radio. Time to get educated. Who can produce? Fade the juice. Stay loose with so much abuse that the bookies want to call the truth. They're getting slaughtered. Can't forget Jeff and low baggers in the chat. That's a little weapon that we need. Oh, yeah. Pubbing. Pubbing. We be pubbing! What up, cappers, gamblers, punters, hustlers, low baggers? Happy Friday, April 19th to all of you. Thank you for watching Betting with the Bag right here on Pub Sports Radio. Beat went on yesterday. Another winning day. We've been stacking winning days. Wasn't a huge winning day, but any day in the black is a good day. A 3-3 three and three down 0 0.26 units in MLB, 1-0 and plus 1.14 units in NHL. We finish off the regular season uh, as I, you know, Told you yesterday what was going to happen. I was going to cash this bet easily and then be down 0 0.05, well, 0 0.05 units away from double digit units up. So we finished the season strong, very, very strong, but it wasn't a great season. We found our way and we succeeded in the end. But if you ask me to start the year, how about if you're up 9.95 units after the regular season? Take it or leave it. I'd say leave it. I can do better than ROI plus 2.74%. I'll take my chances. Uh, I'd rather, you know. But from where we were, it feels pretty good to finish off the regular season there. 179, 184, 49.3% plus 9.95 units ROI plus 2.74%. Average line plus 109. And I'm not exaggerating when I say it's the most important run uh, in my entire life. Uh, in my gambling career, I felt like my whole life was on the line at the end of February. And, you know, we dug in and we delivered. It doesn't always happen like that. You know, in life, I'm a cup is half full person. In gambling, I'm not. You know, uh, I didn't want, I didn't bet Austin Matthews to score his 70th goal in those two games. A failure and losing is such a big part of handicapping sports and i don't you know i've been on the wrong end of the stick you know I, i've 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 you know we're deep into our gambling careers now and there are no fairy tales in shawshank but this run that we've been on is extremely important and this baseball season which is about to take our main focus is extremely important Jose is seeing things very clearly right now. He's got himself in the black. But it's not enough. We as a group have been winning. We've been building our bankrolls. We've been paying for things that you may need to pay in life off of our sports gambling. But it's not enough. Uh, and it's not, oh, it will never be enough thing. But it's not enough right now. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, the big thing for us is our... NHL playoff pool. We're in double-digit signups. 
uh, Bobano Ghost are signing up today. More people are signing up as we go. And we want this to be, you know, an annual thing. And that can only happen if you guys support it. It's really easy. 20 players, your roster. You pick your own roster. And it's not easy, man. It's it's really, really, really hard. I, I'm so close to finalizing my roster. I'm so close. And I look forward to go uh, head to head with everybody. Remember, every cent goes into the prize pool except for $3 to cover the credit card fees. That's it. Every cent goes into the prize pool. We have a huge show today. Huge show. We start with an NHL breakdown of each series. We're going to do that with Bovano here. Then we're going to go into the two playing games in NBA. I expect that to be done in about an hour and 13 minutes from now. I want that to be done by 12.20 p.m. We can go to 12.30 p.m. That'll be fine if we go 10 minutes extra. Then we get into MLB. Our first game's at 2.20 p.m., so it'll be easy, it'll be easy for us to get into afternoon action. And everything uh, will be, you know, focused on MLB for the second half or the main portion of this show. And we have Dabby Cab with Best Bets. We have TJ with Best Bets. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, I... <laughs> The amount of prep I had to do for this show is, is you know, I have not filled my back again. And so fun is not the right word. We will try to find some uh, fun in our hard work, in our extremely important hard work. And you can probably tell that I'm a little bit on edge. It's just from lack of sleep. And all the work that goes into capping a card, capping the MLB play, uh, sorry, the NHL playoffs and, and being all prepared. So, yes, I'm a little edgy. And I tell you what, it's not from. It's not from losing bets. Because that's not been happening very often over the last six or seven weeks. And that feels really good. But I'm locked up. I gotta watch. Uh, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I know how important it is to succeed. I'm doing it. I've not been doing it for long enough. I need my unit size to grow. We need to succeed as a group. We need, how long are we in? Almost, I can almost swear. We need to get that money. Okay, shout out to all the cappers in the chat. I will be copying and pasting here with you guys. Let me get this here. So please sign up for... The playoff pool, Viper MB in the house. He's got Atlanta and the Dodgers minus one and a half. And the stacks play of the day is in. It's Olsen RBI at plus 140. I'm going to do as much copying and pasting here as I can, as I possibly can here. Let's get that in. And there we go. There we go. And get Justin McElvey's action here. And I will do this uh, quickly because we have a lot of work. We've got a lot that we need to accomplish today. Uh, there's our guy, the nuke worker in the house. Says, good morning, fellas. Leaning both dogs in the NBA. We're going to wait to see what everybody is thinking. Let's cash. Gerald Jones ready to get to work. He's got the Brew Crew uh, minus one first five at plus 145. Peralta. That's the Peralta seeing the Orioles for the second straight start, I believe. Was that? Oh, God, all these games are just. Uh, Swiggy says can't wait to fade the Golden Knights Last game was shameful Dallas starts minus 130 already smashed it Yeah I mean um, It's a pretty peculiar line Dallas minus 130 And You know When you look at that hockey team In the Dallas Stars Who has the heart of a champion On that team Little Joe Pavelski Who else Anybody? Is there another single player on that roster with the heart of a champion? Because there's players on the Knights that have heart and character and have held a Stanley Cup over their head. I don't think that we should overdo these quality hockey teams playing uh, poorly down the stretch especially a team like the Knights that had their captain sitting in the wings and were resting players. They really didn't care whether they played Dallas or Edmonton. And we talked about that last night. I just think we should tread with caution. I'm not saying that Dallas isn't going to wipe out Vegas in the first round. But that's a pretty peculiar line, wouldn't you say? 
for the number one seed in the Western Conference against the the last place, the, the final seed in the Western Conference? It's pretty peculiar. We'll talk all about it. We'll talk all about it. And we also, again, we don't need to agree with each other on these things. That's part of the fun of the show. Uh, LJ from H-Town, Cash at Fridays, Jordan Alvarez, over one and a half bases at plus 114. It is Astros versus a lefty day. I'm going to try to get some of these notes. I just My pages of notes are just disgusting today. I, I don't remember ever having this many pages. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, you know what? I just saw a box jump on the screen. And shout out to Sean Pulliam. What a guy. Sean had our back since day one. Uh, the best of us gifting five pub sports radio memberships. Thank you, Sharon, my guy, uh, Johnny K, Mally Mal, Abrama B, Dale Fick, and Michael Buona getting it. I love it. Uh, thank you, Sharon. What a great way to get me a little. Uh, I'll loosen up. I'll loosen up. It's just it. The grind is intense, and you you know you get out of life what you put into it, and um, and that's why we're succeeding. I see Razor Sharp's NBA futures there. Dallas Mavs to win the West a plus 700 and NBA champs a plus 1400. I think it's a very, very interesting and exciting look uh, that I will be copying and pasting. Uh, Subhuman Gaucho Canes to win the first three games of the playoff uh, series against the Islanders. That's a very interesting one. And smooth balls play today. Uh, Brewers and Peralta over seven and a half Ks. Let me copy all that. Uh, our guy, let me get that here. It's not It's not really going to be in order. I'm not going to try to get in order. I have not slept enough to handle those types of things. Uh, Julian Cesario says uh, that Giants Diamondbacks nerfy was a sweat. Good God, was it ever, man. I mean, I wasn't even on the nerfy, but some very questionable fielding. Now, we cashed that first five under, you know, with ease, but I hear you. Uh, Tori Coker ready to go. Sammy Calmer. Sammy Calmer in the in the playoff pool. Sammy Calmer, our guy, man, uh, just a spectacular capper, uh, destroying tennis right now. And look at that, uh, gifting thirteen ninety nine. What a guy. Uh, what a guy. And Sean saying, forever appreciative of your hard work. Uh, well, you know, you can call me uh, the fearless leader or whatever, but we are just a team, and we all play very important roles. I don't feel like a leader. Uh, I feel like Jeff Slaughter is the leader of this, and we're just working in unison to get batter bank rolls to improve our lives. Sammy Calmer, Vegas, Colorado, Nashville, LA, Tampa, Boston, New York Rangers, and Carolina for Sammy. I definitely want to copy and paste that as uh, the hockey pool is going to be extremely fun. So let me get that uh, here under NHL from Sammy Calmer. And that is uh, copied. And uh, paste it. Okay, so let me. I got to copy and paste a couple more, but we got to get to work. We got to get to work uh, quickly here. Uh, Mikey, money ready to get to work. Uh, cashed our grandma play of the day with the Giants minus one. Shout out to DC Capper, who was also all over the Giants minus one. Both of you guys had no concern with the line moving against you. I respect it enormously. Rocco Rogers ready to go. And Swiggy says, Slatsy, thanks for signing up for the NHL playoff pool. Thank you, Slatsy, my guy. A nasty Nate ready to go. Razor Sharp pick series business. North Ender, J Dub, Res Mob. Uh, Slatsy says, Wild let us down. Uh, they didn't let me down. Um, I didn't trust them. I didn't trust them all year. It was a very tough spot for them just because they were on the road for five games. They come back for one game and then their season's over and they all you know, take off to Cancun. It was a very tricky spot. And we saw Winnipeg struggle in that spot. It's just a tough spot that you would never have bet. You would never have bet that. So let's see if it was game 42. No, I was doing that down the stretch too, you know, um, and uh, Jose says, with the inside info on Tigers, Rangers making the winning day. I love it. Uh, I love it, Slatsy. Uh, I love it. Uh, Johnny K, D Jenkins, uh, Mally, Mal, Rez Mob says, eight units in the pocket from Say Hey Jose. Say Hey Jose is seeing things very clearly right now. Rez Mob with the 1999 dono. Thank you, Rez. Thank you to all of you guys who are supporting our channel here. Uh, I feel the teamwork. We feel the teamwork. Everybody feels it. And our bankrolls are showing it. And we just got to keep doing exactly what we're doing, working as hard as we possibly can, sharing all of our angles. And if you're having a losing day, don't sit in it. Focus on tomorrow. Move on to tomorrow. There are going to be losing days. It doesn't feel like there's been many in the last six or seven weeks, but there are going to be losing days. They happen. Just move on immediately tomorrow. Focus on tomorrow. Your cap, so much of your capping should be done the night before. So much of it. So much of it. So uh, shout out to Rez Mob, Sammy Calmer, Sean Pulliam. Thank you guys uh, for 
giving back to us. Uh, and it's not giving back because you give us already so much. Um, just thank you for the support. That's the best way to put it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, the support. Uh, it means so much to us. Slatsy just signed up for the pool. Okay. A Rodney Barton ready to go. Guillermo Zertucci back at it. The Santa Anita pick of the day. Race eight. Moonlight Trist at three to one. First time starter out of American Pharaoh. Couple of bullet workouts leading up to this race. Hopefully we get a better trip than the last pick. Uh, that last pick had so much horse. Uh, and I should have had the record in. And it's good. Things are going to get easier. Things are going to calm down a little bit right now. You know, the, the intensity is just a little ridiculous. But uh, Guillermo Zertucci, the Santa Anita horse of the day is Moonlight Trist from our guy, Guillermo. Thank you so much. Rocco Rogers says he should be joining the pool by tomorrow morning. Uh, Slatsy says, Jimmy, can't you see two players with the exact same 20 players in the pool? If there are two players with the exact same 20 players in the pool, I tell you this, they won't win. They won't win. I used to do this pool a lot when I was younger and we never saw that ever. Well, there, there were some times where it's, but never, never close to winning team, no, you know, never close. So there might be two. Uh, and, and I don't actually, in all honesty, I don't remember ever seeing it. I think we saw times where there's one or two players off, but I don't, I don't remember seeing a full, but the, the, the teams that are the most like, like uh, together are generally, uh, People taking like let's say two teams from the west and two teams from the east that are very highly rated, and a couple of them just buckle. I mean, it's just the way it works. So no, uh, and we'll see. Look, if this pool doesn't work, uh, we will you know do something different. But I, um, you know, Sammy Comer says he will have zero Toronto Maple Leafs on his roster. Okay, we got to get to work. Mally Mal on the Cubs first five money line minus one and a half, first five over four and a half. The the the, the I would like to get the show started right this second, but I can't because I know how important it is to have your guys' action so that we can talk about it. Steve G in the house, Marcus Anderson, uh, Brian Watson, Gifted Cartel, The Sweaty Butcher. Uh, I love it. I uh, uh, Oh, sure, Slatsy, it's possible. But I, I'm telling you, it's like, it's. I think I've, I, I haven't done this pool in about 20 years, but I think I've done this pool, let's say, f at least 10 times, at least 10 different years, and it's never happened. It's never been an issue, never been a problem. So, you know, and, and we'll see if it works. Uh, there's Joe Yurkovich in the house. Rez, Mob, everybody ready to go. Nordy in the house. Uh, Johnny K looking at Wyatt Johnson. He's a monster. Sammy Comer says 19-6. That NBA futures bet from Razor Sharp Picks is the Mavs. I need to make sure I've got that copied and pasted. You know, the most important part of my betting is after the show. Sitting with all these notes, sitting with everything. Um, Philly Eagle Flyer has Vegas moving on in seven. Uh, North Ender says, if you if you're judging Vegas off last night, you'll be in for a rude awakening. I, you know, and that's what we're going to talk all about that stuff with, with Bobano here in a second. So, uh, you know, we got the right uh, man for the job, and we'll get to work. Uh, we want Justice TV in the house. I love it. Uh, I haven't noticed that name uh, in our chat. It's great to see you, Big Daddy Boom. Everybody ready to rock? Chase J, Red Girl. Uh, if I've missed any, if I've missed Tom, Tom Miggins coming in, if I've missed anything, um, Jose. That, that can you just send them to me either text them to me if i miss any plays that i should copy and paste because i can easily if you text them to me uh, I, I can't with the private chat it's uh tricky for me to copy and paste but if you send them text them to me i can copy and paste them and have them ready to go uh let's see that well, last note on nhl big daddy boom says i was winning most of the week the last three days left in fantasy hockey the opponent was winning six four but my team turned around last three days thanks to dallas stars ottinger versus blues ottinger is a very important piece uh to the whole playoff puzzle. And, you know, Steve G said everybody in the league wants Dallas to play Vegas. And he's right, except for Stars fans and Golden Knight fans, I imagine. But everybody else, very happy that one of these teams is going to get knocked out. Okay, let's get to work here. We are running very, very nice in NHL. But it's about the totality of your work. And so we've gotten into the black. That's great. We need to keep moving forward. We need to keep winning. And motivation, you know, there's cappers who don't like betting the last, you know, few days of a season in the sport. And, and it just blows my mind. Motivation is just, it's so easy. I mean, it's just so easy. And things change drastically now because we hit the NHL playoffs. So everything changes drastically right now. Let's bring on your guest here, Star of Fridays here on Betting with the Bag. We're breaking down all eight 
uh, NHL matchups, first round matchups. Please welcome from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada's black and yellow, black and yellow, Steel Town, Mr. Ian Cameron to the show. Bobano. Oh, let's see if we get Bano. We do. Okay, let's do a little flip. Let's do a Bobano. There you are, my man. How are you? Good, Jimmy. Of course, I'm good. Playoffs are here. I'm excited. Well, let's get right to work. Uh, let's get right to work. We will be cutting this video out as well so people can because we're talking about matchups that are happening Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Uh, the two teams, you know, the the Vegas and the Kings who played last night, they don't have to start till Monday, which is nice for uh, them. Also, I will have all of the odds up here for series and for Stanley Cup and for conference. Uh, let's start with the – we're going to go in order chronologically as the games bang out. We start the NHL playoffs at 5 p.m. Eastern – on 420, April 20th, your NHL playoff pool rosters must be in by 5 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, April 20th. We have the New York Islanders, 39, 27, and 16, 18, 17, and 6 on the road at the Carolina Hurricanes, 52, 23, and 7, 27, 10, and 4 at home or at PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina. Sorokin is expected to be the starting goaltender, but Semyon Varlamov was the best goaltender down the stretch. That's nice to have in your pocket. It's nice to have in your pocket, just in case. You can bring out Varlamov. Varlamov, we've seen backup goaltenders get hot. That could easily happen here. But Sorokin is expected to start. And then we have Freddie Anderson. Uh, is Freddie Anderson a 1.84 goals against average, 932 save percentage with three shutouts in 15 games, getting shut out every five games? No. Does he buckle under the pressure? Yes. Will that happen here? I mean, that's what we're trying to figure out. They've got Kochekov backing them up. So they're in pretty good shape. This has been a goaltending crew that's been an absolute mess, and they're actually in pretty good shape. Hurricanes right now to win the Stanley Cup are the favorite at Bet365. Six and a half to one, plus 650. The New York Islanders, you have to click a show more to see them at 50 to one. To win the conference and series action, let's get into that. To win the conference, sorry, I'll have this all set up better for the following games hurricanes are plus 275 and the islanders are 25 to 1 to win the series the islanders are plus 325 and the hurricanes are minus 425 so obviously a bet 365 with just a ridiculous amount of vig we have to know that in future betting and round betting that they're going to take uh, a, an alarming amount of money uh in juice steve g says islanders might get swept uh, and yes, did I, if I said that wrong, did I say that wrong? That hurricanes are the favorite. And my dude says, I love the Dallas stars to win it. So we're going to talk all about that. The Islanders come into the playoffs rolling. They close the season winning eight of nine. They're only setback being a three, two shootout loss at the Rangers. So they got points in all nine of their games. You know, we all moved on. No, I shouldn't say we all, but a bunch of us moved on the Islanders at plus plus one ninety to make the playoffs when Patrick Waugh was announced as coach. And this isn't just Patrick Waugh doing a hell of a job. It's Lou Lamorello doing a hell of a job, you know? When uh, you see Dubis with the Leafs after Lamorello, you have a little boy manager. You see what little fanboys do. They bring in Joe Thornton and Wayne Simmons because, look, I'm the same age as Dubis. They, we, we love Wayne Simmons. Everybody in Toronto loves Wayne Simmons. We all love Joe Thornton. That's how he met. He brings in Carlson, the Norris Trophy winner, that to help an already good power play, and it becomes the worst power play, sort of, you know, marginally. Where's that? But, but we don't need to get in that. Then Trailoving gets a job. Why? Because it's this old man network that you, if you're an old white guy who's been a manager for 15, 20 years, you, you will always get another job. He's made terrible, terrible decisions, and, and the Flames are god-awful because of Trailoving's decisions. Now he's the manager of the Leafs. And I digress. Lou Lamorello has done a spectacular job. He knew to fight with these top teams in the Eastern Conference, he needs to have the best goaltending in the league. So he spent a lot of money on it. Then he knew he needs to have the toughest and best stay-at-home defenseman in the league, Pelican Pullock. So he brought them in. Now, if you're going to have stay-at-home defenseman, you need to have a sniper on the power play, on defense, a power play quarterback. So we got Noah Dobson, drafted him in the first round. Now, Dobson is dealing with an upper body injury. He's missed three straight games. I, we'll hear what Bobano thinks. I expect him to be in the lineup. The Hurricanes are also playing their best hockey. Uh, their five-game winning streak was snapped in a 6-3 loss to Columbus when they sat multiple players. Jesper Faust was the only player injured. He came back, and then he got helped off the ice and hurt again. We have not got the official update on whether Jesper Faust will be in or out of the lineup. Chase J says, I'm a local Hurricanes fan. This price is too rich. Islanders playing with revenge of last year's playoff elimination. Hurricanes are better, but no value in this, even in a parlay piece, in his opinion. And, and I get that. I don't. 
you know, this is a dangerous team. These Islanders are a very dangerous team to fade. They're dangerous. The thing is, is we've watched Bobano's draws, uh, and we have that up on the screen. Uh, and that's he's lost seven of his last eight. These draws were looking very, very strong. They're still they still gave a plus money. This is the time, and I, I'm, I imagine Bobano, and I hope Bobano touches on this. This is the time where the draws will offer a lot of value. There's going to be a lot of draws in this one. Let's go into the line history for game one here. Game one, Saturday at 5 p.m. Then we'll hand it over to Bobana. We're going to use pinnacle lines. Right now, Carolina is minus 222. They opened up at minus 210. We've had 12 cents of movement towards them. From a total side of things here, we're dealing with a five and a half. Under five and a half at minus 116. Uh, that sounds like a fair price. Well, are we looking at the first period under and the full game under? I certainly am. I've not moved on anything yet. Take it away, Bobano. New York Islanders, Carolina Hurricanes, our first round matchup and our first breakdown. Take it away. It's it's interesting because they're playing a Red Hot Islanders team that played their best hockey down the stretch and a Carolina team that, um, you know, awesome, really, uh, in the last few weeks of the season. And Freddie Anderson actually played very well. And I'm not a big Freddie Anderson fan. His playoff track record hasn't been great, but he was really good down the stretch. For Carolina played very well. And of course, they've got a guy in Piotr Kochekov that I think very highly of as far as, you know, his ability to play uh, in net for the Hurricanes. So they're, they're both goalies I'm fine with. I'm even fine with Anderson because I'm going to buy into him playing well down the stretch. He's got to do it in the playoffs. Now, the Islanders, a big part of their turnaround is they got a lot better on the power play. Their five on five offense started to get going. Uh, and, you know, defensively, for, especially with their goaltending, they turned away from Ilya Sorokin, and they turned to someone that Patrick Waugh, the new head coach, took over midseason, is very familiar with, Semyon Varlama from his Colorado days, and he played absolutely terrific uh, down the stretch for the Islanders. So, you know, it's just a surging hot Islanders team. We've seen this before with Florida last year, with many examples before that of teams that are red hot going into the playoffs become very dangerous in the first round. But at the end of the day, you have a Carolina team that got all the way to the Eastern Conference final, ended up getting swept by Florida, but every game was a one goal game and a Florida team that was red hot and got to the Stanley Cup final. And I can't help but think Carolina's roster right now is better than it was last year when they got swept in the Eastern Conference Finals. I think they're a better team. And if I think they're a better team right now, I can't go against them, and I won't in this series, despite how red hot the Islanders are. So, you know, I do think the Islanders push Carolina, but I think that's as far as it goes. The thing that bothers me for the Islanders, how much did they rely down the stretch on Bo Horvat, Brock Nelson, and Kyle Palmieri offensively? Way too much, in my opinion. You just did not get enough from the supporting cast. And what if this great Carolina defensive squad, which we know they're capable of having, led by Brenda Moore coaching them, shuts down those big guns for the Islanders that have carried them offensively down the stretch? Where's the rest of the offense going to come? I also am concerned about how much better the Carolina power play is with Jake Gensel. And Jake Gensel just makes Carolina's team all around very be much better, offensively especially. Their power play was awesome down the stretch, Carolina. And the Islanders... All these years with Barry Trotz and this defensive-minded team, low scoring, they don't score goals, but they're great defensively. They got a great penalty kill. They don't have a great penalty kill this year. It's been awful. It's been one of the worst penalty kills in the NHL, and I think that is an area that Carolina can exploit in this series. So I like Carolina to advance uh, in this series. No series bet, obviously, at this price. And I'm going to throw a curveball at everyone because all I hear in terms of totals in this series is everyone loving the unders, everyone loving the unders. The Islanders have not been a dead nuts under team this year. Okay, they've scored more. Their power play has been better. Their penalty kill stinks compared to what it's been in years past. Varlamov in net for as good as he was down the stretch. He has not had a great playoff track record, the few playoff starts he's had. And on the flip side, you know, I think Carolina's a better offensive team, maybe even a much better offensive team and deeper offensive team since getting Jake Gensel. Don't be surprised if this is a sneaky over series and you're going to get fives. And you're going to get five and a halfs to take plus money with overs in this series. I'm going to be looking at that value side of it from a totals perspective. More goals than people think. That's in interesting. That's interesting because I think that the Islanders fear the Hurricanes offense. And they're the ones that are going to go into the shell. 
they're the ones that are going to line up five on the line and play devil's early 90s trap hockey, not her, Carolina. I think Carolina is going to attack, and I think that, that, that Lamorello, he built those New Jersey Devils trap teams. So what's your take on that, and then we'll move on to the next game? Because I think Islanders are going to play – I, I'm I'm going to bet the first period under one and a half and the full game under five and a half. And I imagine the final score being two zero or three one Carolina. And then we'll see fives. And then then move on overs. But take it away. What are your thoughts? I do not think Carolina plays trappy. I think the Islanders do. Touch on that before we move on to the next matchup. Yeah, I mean, I'll be even I'll, first time I see a five, I'll be on the over uh, in this series. There's no question about that. Um uh, can the Islanders play two one games like they used to? I don't know. To me, they have not looked like a team that can consistently shut it down like that, at least from what I've seen. I don't think they're quite as good, you know, defensively as we've seen in the past. And that's even with Pelican and Pollock coming back. You know, and, and there's been games where yes, they've 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 won two nothing, they've won three one, they've given up forty shots, and, and they've needed the goaltender to be absolutely spectacular. I keep thinking of that Nashville game, you know, and that was just the goaltender. They didn't play great defensively. They were giving up great A's all over the ice. I remember watching that game because I took Nashville or did, what was, did I take? I think I did. Yeah, I took Nashville that night. And Nashville only lost because the goaltender was spectacular. They were giving up great chances. They hit a couple posts. I don't think there was good defense. And their penalty kill is way down from where it's been uh, in the past. So like I said, I think there's this, there's going to be a, maybe a few more overs in this series than people think. The question is game one, we'll see. It is an afternoon game, weird start time. Maybe that one stays under, but. I think as the series goes on, it's not going to be every game under in this series, in my opinion. Very important stuff. Very important stuff. So for game one, for your official record, is there anything you're moving on or do we move on? Yeah, we move on. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to 8 p.m. Eastern on Saturday night, 420. Hockey night in Canada. Toronto Maple Leafs go into the House of Horrors, TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. The Leafs 46, 26, and 10, 24, 11, and 6 on the road. Boston Bruins 47, 20, and 15, 24, 11, and 6 at home. Both teams closed out the season in underwhelming fashion. Right now, the Bruins are minus 125 to win the series. The Leafs are plus 105. I think it's a real interesting debate about whether or not this Toronto Maple Leafs team is better suited for the playoffs this year than they were last year. The problem with the debate is that Ryan O'Reilly, Ryan O'Reilly was a perfect playoff player. He's perfect. And they had him on the roster last year. And he helped enormously. This year's team with Bertuzzi and Domi and, you know, Reeves being tough. I know you don't want him on the ice often, but you want him to kick somebody's ass with McKay blocking shots with his face, there is a feeling like this team is much tougher and more equipped. The issue here is everybody thinks Toronto is going to fail. Everybody expects them to lose and everybody expects them to play heartless in Toronto. I, I talked to parents and they're like laughing. They're like, how much money should I put on the Bruins laughing? And I tell them, I'm like, where's Bergeron and Krejci? Like, do you really fear this Bruins team? Like we used to fear them. Because I don't, in saying that, I'm still pessimistic. I'm still nervous to back the Leafs. Uh, will Nylander back tech in the playoffs? Uh, he's a spectacular offensive forward, but you know, bad penalties and doesn't back check enough. Uh, I would take him 100 times out of 100 over Pedersen. You know, don't get me wrong. So... The Leafs finished the season with their four straight losses, four setback at the Lightning on Wednesday. Yarncroc, Domi, and McMahon are banged up. We know Keith loves Yarncroc. One of the things that Keith can do with the Leafs that you can't do really well with the Bruins is he can change up the lines nonstop. He can give you so many different looks, and he's done a pretty good job at that. I've stopped disliking Keith. I've kind of liked some of the, what he's doing this year, keeping teams off balance. Bruins finished their season with their third loss in four games, 3-1 at home versus Senators. Brazo has been out with an upper body injury. He's their heavyweight. They need Justin Brazo healthy. I don't think he I don't think he can fight. It's an upper body injury. Forbore and Carlo are banged up. So the Leafs are 13 to 1 to win the cup. Remember, they opened the year as the favorite to win the cup, which made no sense. A plus 750. To win the conference, they're six and a half to one. 
Uh, Bruins are 11 to 1 to win the cup. To win the conference, they're plus 550. Swiggy says Pasternak was Bruins' best player this year. Pasternak was, I mean, if it wasn't for, you know, McKinnon, Kucherov, and McDavid, you know, Pasternak would be the best player in the league this year. He was phenomenal. He was absolutely spectacular. He's a top five player in the NHL. Uh, we, we know what they have with Coyle and Marshawn, and we, we know that they have grit, and but do they have enough? And, and Charlie McAvoy, take it away for us here, Bo Bano, Maple Leafs Bruins. I mean, if you're betting history and you're betting pedigree and all that, you, you have to be on Boston here because you look at the Bruins beating the Leafs in three series. Although I want to point out with people saying the Bruins always beat the Leafs in the playoffs. You know, all three playoff series victories for the Bruins were seven game series. You know, it's not like they completely blew the Leafs right out of the building. You know, that those were hard fought, tough series. Uh, including, of course, the one, the first one where they had that four to one lead in the third period and they ended up losing in overtime, the Bergeron goal. Um, so the Leafs competed. They were right there with Boston in all three of those series. Now, this year in the regular season, that's another, you know, thing that your people are going to throw out there that like Boston, that Boston swept the regular season series this year uh, against Toronto as well. So that's a bunch of history that's against them. And it's as much of a physical ability to execute and play at a high level on the ice as much as, as it will be mentally for the Leafs. Mentally to get over this block and this hurdle that it seems like the uh, Bruins uh, have uh, on them. I, I, like to me, I was really, really in, in, interested to, you know, maybe take a go against Boston. And I still kind of lean Toronto here in this series, quite honestly, because I don't really love what I saw to the Bruins down the stretch. I am concerned in various facets of their game uh, late in the season, uh, a bit of a malaise develop. Uh, I, you know, you look at Brandon Carlo's health going into this series. They lost him in the last few games. And that defense didn't look the same. Now they do expect him to be back, which sounds uh, promising here for the Bruins. But, you know, I just think with Boston, there's a little bit of a vulnerability and let's not act like, you know, Toronto's been the only team that shit the bed. Toronto's the only team that's had heartbreak and gagged away series and choked away losses. No bigger choke and gag than the Bruins last year uh, against the Florida Panthers in the first round. So uh, this is one where, look, I, I don't know if I have the guts to take Toronto, but I am leaning that way. The biggest concern is, can Ilya Samsonov play like he did for the majority of the second half of the season um, for the Toronto Maple Leafs? If he does, if he plays well, Ilya Samsonov, the Leafs are going to win this series, in my opinion, because I think they got more game breakers up front. I know it's concerning that we've not seen anything from Matthews and Marner in the playoffs. They have to be the the, the big guns and, and the star players that the Leafs expect them to be. And I'm not talking about the 69 goal regular season version of Austin Matthews or the you know 80 90 point version of Mitch Marner in the in the regular season. I'm talking about the playoff production which has not been there for those two guys the last few years. It simply has to be there for them if they're going to win this series. But uh like I said, I think the Bruins are vulnerable uh and I think the Leafs have a chance. Again, it's if, for me this is a two teams I have a very difficult time trusting. So this is not a strong opinion, but for the purposes of our playoff pool which I'll be signing up for later this afternoon and you should be as well. Uh, our pub sports radio playoff pool. I'm going to pick Toronto to advance here. Yeah, I can understand why you're doing it. Uh, are you going to take Toronto in game one? And here's another game? thing too. And here's a good bet too. Here's actually one. I'm going to make this official. This is so. This is a. This is a series series player prop wager that I have placed, uh, and I think it's. I think it's tremendous value uh, as far as leading goal scorer in this series. That's a great market that's available at all the major books, FanDuel, DraftKings, Bet365. This I am going to make official because I think it's got a realistic shot to cash. Let's go for most goals in the series at 25 to 1. The former Boston Bruin, now with the Toronto Maple Leafs, Tyler Bertuzzi. He has been brought in here to be the difference maker for this team to score the kind of goals that this team just far too long has not been able to score, those dirty area goals, those goals right in front of the goal crease and the blue paint, getting to the front of the net, getting to the traffic areas where you need to go if you're going to have offensive success in the playoffs. And then it doesn't hurt that he's playing against his former team. There's obviously going to be that incentive to even go up to that another level. And the fact that he was red hot in the second half of the season. Tyler Bertuzzi found his game. 
He was scoring left and right. He finally found some confidence playing with Domi and Matthews uh, on the top line. I think that is a tremendous, very live plus 2,500 for him to lead this series in goals. Do you like the Maple Leafs roster this year better than last year? Playoff roster. I I do. The one part I agree with is that I wish they still had O'Reilly. I think their blue line has more depth, more diversity. They got guys that can carry the puck, and they've got way more sandpaper, way more we're going to put you through the boards you know, type of defenseman with Labushkin and another year of Jake McCabe and obviously the way Simone Benoit has played for them uh, this year. I like that, you know, Bertuzzi and Domi with the offensive upside, they're not willing to be pushed around either. There, there's going to be pushback now from this Toronto team from a physicality standpoint. And that was a big reason why Florida beat them last year. Florida beat them up in the physicality department. And there was just not enough of that physical pushback from Toronto. This year, I think they've got a team more equipped for that. You could argue that maybe from a little bit of a finesse and skill standpoint, the roster they had last year might have been a little bit better. But I think for the hard rough and tumble, you know, and what did we see from Vegas last year? What have we seen from recent cup champions? Big defensemen that are willing to throw their weight around. They can skate, though. you got to be able to skate in today's NHL. They can skate. They can throw their weight around. they got physicality. I think Toronto's got that on the back end. I'd still take Boston's blue line over Toronto's because just depth and players that have performed at a high level, no doubt. And I love McAvoy uh, and his game, uh, but this Toronto blue line's got that physicality and even up front, they won't be pushed around like they were last year by the Florida Panthers. And that's a big reason why I think uh, it's not, I, I'm going to say this year's team slightly better. Well, I tell you this. Um, and, you know, I, first off, I should give you guys the line history. This, Opened up with the Leafs at plus 114 and now plus 111. At I do want to say about O'Reilly, though. O'Reilly's offensive production was disappointing last year in the playoffs. It was. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It it was. But when, when it, he's not like a, you know, he's not like a Sedin. I mean, Sedin's not the right end because they could cycle when they weren't scoring. But when, when these guys aren't scoring, like players like O'Reilly, they do a lot of other things on the ice that can help you win a hockey game. But I hear that. I, I know what I'm going to do here. I tell you where I worry about Toronto is in Toronto. You know, the pressure is immense. Uh, I am going to bet. They play better on the road. They do. Yeah. I'm going to bet the Maple Leafs in game one of this series. If I'm right, I'm not going to take him again in game two. And I'm probably not going to take him again in game three. I'm going to take the Leafs to win game one of this series. I, I do not think... The, the what what concern I kind of wish I was fading a Bruins team running better. Honestly, I feel like the, I don't want to. I don't care that they lost three one that much in, in against the Senators. I just don't. I just think that you take the great first ballot Hall of Famer Patrice Berger on off this team. You take David Krejci, your your dream second line sentiment off this team. I just look. I love Charlie Coyle, and I, I love what Zach is doing. I, I just I think that. In game one of the series, the Leafs are going to have no pressure on them. That pressure will mount, and they haven't been able to handle it well. Uh, then Brahman, no. Uh, I, I'm not going to take them to win game two. I don't think. I don't think. I'm just going to take them game one. Slatsy says Bruins are 7-0 last seven games versus the Leafs. And, yeah, I'll deal with those consequences. Uh, you know, so I'm going to be uh, – I'm going to be on the Leafs. Oh, and also, uh, my unit size going back to 300. We moved it up to 400 because I was ho the hottest I've been in a long time, and there was motivational advantages. I put it up. I'm going back to 300. That was what I moved it to on January 1st. So we're going back. Uh, this is a playoffs. a different animal. I'm going back to $300 unit size. I'm going to be on the Leafs in game one. Okay. We move on to Sunday, April 21st action. The Tampa Bay Lightning, 45, 29, and 8, 2018 and 3 on the road at Florida Panthers, 52, 24, and 6, 26, 13, and 2 at home or at American Amerit, excuse me, Amerit Bank Arena in Sunrise, Florida. This game's going off at 12 30 p.m. Eastern. The Florida fans are very upset about the time. And and I get it. For a game of this magnitude, you don't want to uh, you don't want to change everybody's TV rules the world. You want to have a quadruple header, someone had to get this spot. That's why it is like this. Yeah, it's um, 
it's a it's it it makes the cap trickier. Would you agree with that? The game one cap trickier because it's at twelve thirty p.m. and everybody's out of their routine. Do you agree with that, Boban? Yeah, a little bit. I would I would say so. Yeah. All right, let's get into this one here. These are two very good hockey teams. It's the worst case scenario for me, Boston losing that game because uh, these are the only two teams I've got futures on. Uh, it sucks. It sucks that they're going up against each other. Uh, my the fu- my fu- I can't lose money unless I add to it. Like everything's paid for because we've had a great uh, futures uh, and thanks to the Islanders and making the playoffs, Flyers not making the playoffs. But I don't like my situation. I've only got two teams in the East and two teams in the West, and they're b- all playing each other. I, and, and look, I'm not nearly as co- I'm not confident anymore on the Kings or anything like that. That was early in the season. But I have Kings, Oilers in the West, Lightning, Florida in the East, and they're both playing. It sucks. Lightning were stuck in this first wild card round for most of last week, you know, and so it allowed them to rest, bang the bodies, allowed them not to go all out, allowed them to, to play, not play their forwards too much. You know, Coochie went for the 100 assists to join McDavid, to join Bobby Orlemieux and Gretzky. It was great to see that all come to fruition. Uh, They look like a healthy group coming into the playoffs. Just Tyler Mott banged up. They have playoff-type performers. Tyler Mott, uh, Tanner Janot, who will fight the toughest guy in the league. They bring in Duclair, who immediately his uh, toughness. I mean, when I watch Duclair Duclair play, I think he's 6'3". You know, he's much smaller than that because he plays a big, tough game. We know what Stamkos can do when he's locked in. We've been watching it for the last month. We know what Kucherov can do. We know what Hedman does. We, we This is a, a really, really good hockey team going up against a really, really good hockey team. Panthers finished the season strong. They looked vulnerable for a few weeks. Paul Maurice got them right. They closed their season with their fourth straight win, 5-2 home release on Tuesday. They expect to be fully healthy. Now, Aaron Eckblad hasn't played in a couple weeks. He probably won't be that good. You don't want to play him. I, you probably want to stick to 17, 18 minutes a game with, with Eckblad when he comes back. And Oliver ekman Larson has been better than I expected. The series price for the Lightning plus 165 is doesn't – it shouldn't be that high. Uh, you know, it's – uh, there, this is a. There's more parity between these two teams and it's baked into the odds. The Lightning to win the Cup twenty to one, Conference ten to one, Panthers to win the Cup seven to one, a Conference three t- plus three twenty five. This is a very difficult series. Uh, two very very good hockey teams. Let's get into the line history here for this one for Game One line history. This is Sunday morning. We have the Panthers at minus one sixty five. Uh, they opened up at minus 157, eight cents of movement towards them. And from a total side of things, this is sitting at five and a half, minus 117 to the over. This opened up at six. So the the Bruins, uh, it's a similar situation that we're seeing in that, that Bruins Leafs total. Six moves to five and a half right away, but it's a very highly, heavily juiced to the over. It depends where are you, where do you want the juice? Same thing happened here. It opened up at six and moved to five and a half. It's minus 117 to the over. Take it away for us, uh, Bobano, and the Russian goaltenders. I always think that when Russian goaltenders face each other, that they step up. And Bobrovsky and Vasilevsky are, you know, played against each other a lot. I expect them to both play well. And I expect Vasilevsky to play very well, even though he had rebound control issues all season. They never stopped. I mean, his numbers got a little bit better, but his rebound control was a problem all year long. And I can't understand why that is. Take it away, Bobano. Lightning Panthers. I mean, this is the series I'm most looking forward to. I mean, this is this is incredible. Battle of Florida. They don't like each other. Uh, it's got all kinds of storylines galore. The Tampa Bay Lightning have one more big, long playoff run in them after getting to the Stanley Cup final three years in a row, winning two times, and then, of course, getting bounced last year in the first round by Toronto. Does now that give them that? Do they now have the batteries recharged? You know, because I think they needed that extra time off. We'll see if it helps them here uh, down the stretch. Meanwhile, you've got the Florida Panthers, who have proven at least this year in the regular season that the run through to the Stanley Cup final last year was no fluke. This is a very good hockey team. Uh, and they have proven that this season. It's got all kinds of great storylines. It's Florida trying to avenge a unceremonious sweep at the hands of Tampa Bay two years ago. Remember, the Lightning swept them uh, in the second round a couple of years ago, the year that uh, the third year Tampa got to the Stanley Cup final in a row when they lost to Colorado. So I, I think when you look at it, it's got all kinds of storylines, bad blood galore. I think when you look at Tampa Bay, though, the thing that concerns me the most is this hasn't been vintage Vasilevsky. He was better down the stretch, but from start to finish this year, this has not been a great year. What's his goals against? It's hovering just below three, and his save percentage is hovering around 900. 
Those are not Andre Vasilevsky numbers. And what bothers me about Tampa Bay is that they are very reliant on the power play and they have a lethal power play. They have a tremendous power play, but it's almost like they rely on it too much. Their five on five play has been mediocre at best. And I'm being kind by that because their five on five play really hasn't been great this year. But again, you're talking about a Florida team that plays a style of hockey that sometimes lends itself to taking a lot of penalties. And that unfortunately, because the scrums after the whistle, face wash on the opposing player from Kachuk after the whistle, he does that shit all the time. You know, that's the kind of stuff that referees are going to nip in the bud early in this series and say, you know what, if there's that extra push and shove, there's that extra hack, you know, with the stick in the leg, or there's that extra cross check in the back after the whistle, they're going to call those the, the one team and put one of the teams on the power play to negate that because they know there's going to be a chippy affair. They know there's going to be a physical series. They know about the bad blood. So Florida's got to be careful here because their their one-way ticket to losing this series is their discipline going off the rails and giving Tampa Bay a bunch of power plays, which is what they don't want because the Tampa Bay power play is elite. Their five-on-five play isn't, but their power play is. So that's going to be very important here for Florida in this game. If they can at least not go over the edge with the discipline, uh, I think it's their series to lose. I do like Florida in this series to get the job done uh, over the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Again, no bet on the series price because even though I like a team, you will not see me ever lay minus 190 uh, with a series price, but I do think Florida will advance. This is actually going to be my first, well, I shouldn't say a first official play because I have the Bertuzzi uh, leading goal prop for Toronto Boston, but this is my first individual game official play for the show. I like over five and a half here uh, in this game. Uh, we're going to go over five and a half with the uh, Panthers and the Lightning uh, on Sunday. Uh, best current available price with that, as I check right now, uh, is minus, uh, let me just see here, minus one, 118 at Pinnacle. All right, so minus 118 at Pinnacle. Look, two straight overs head to head. Lots of goals. Tampa Bay has been kind of an over machine down the stretch. I like what I've seen from their offense. I like what I see Kucherov, obviously, under assists. Stamp goes heating up at the right time. We know what Braden Point can do. Uh, and we're seeing Nick Paul, by the way. Nick Paul is going to be someone to cash in on from a prop standpoint in this series. Oh. Such an underrated player. Uh, look how he heated up down the stretch. Their offense is fine. I worry about that back end still. Sergachev out of there. And after Hedman, let's be honest. Let's be totally honest about the blue line for the Lightning. It doesn't match the Panthers. And there's big question marks more than ever before about your radishes and your Nick Perbix and all these guys that are in that blue line now. I'm not convinced they're close to the same depth on the blue line. And not to mention Vasilevsky hasn't been as good this year. And one last thing, with the third and the fourth line, not as deep with the third the third line with Coleman, Gord, and Goodrow years ago. Amazing third line. They don't have that quite as much anymore. Very top-heavy now, Tampa Bay. So that's going to be something that does concern me here. I think Florida got deeper up front, deeper on the blue line. Uh, Bobrovsky can match Vasilevsky, especially if Vasilevsky plays the way he did much of the year because we saw what Bobrovsky did in the playoffs last year. But again, in a series, it's going to be chippy. There's going to be penalties. And again, if Florida does take penalties, that's the one way Tampa Bay is really going to get their offense going with that incredible number one rated power play. So I think there's goals in this series, and we're going to start right away in game one taking over, five and a half, especially five and a half, not turning that down. In the NHL playoffs and the NBA playoffs, I want game two action so bad. I'm going to try as hard as I can not to have too much game one action. You, you can situationally set yourself up very, very well. If you can be patient yeah. and focus on, you know, when you expect the team to bounce back in a series, when the pressure is off of a team and they don't need that next win. If the underdog steals game one on the road, you know, the home team is going to smash to the best of their abilities in game two, things of that nature. I'm going to watch Tampa, Florida game one. Don't want action in it. Two spectacular hockey teams. I will cheer Bobanos over five and a half. We move on. 3 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. We have the Washington Capitals, 40, 31, and 11, 18, 19, and 4 on the road at the New York Rangers, 55, 23, and 4, 30, 11, and 0 home Madison Square Garden in New York, New York. We just spoke about Vasilevsky not delivering up to his abilities, and the same thing can be said about Shesty. Uh, Shesterkin did look a little better again late in the year 
as the Rangers tightened everything up, but he hasn't looked as good. And we talked about Kemper uh, expecting him to struggle this year, expecting him to struggle last year. I'm not high on him, uh, but Charlie Lindgren has stepped up. So we, and, and having a guy like Kemper on the bench, isn't the worst thing in the world. If something goes wrong, you can bring him out there. You know, if you get shellac seven, zero, he can start the next game. So, uh, and North End, you're talking about Paul uh, Isamont, uh, Jano, Shiri. Yeah, I agree. I, I love, I love Tampa's depth. I think Tampa. I don't need to take Tampa at the plus one sixty five. You know, I've got futures on them, but th- this is going to be. They're going to be a. If, if if Florida can knock them out, I mean that's the problem in the NHL playoffs is to knock out these tough hockey teams. You're beaten, battered, bruised. And then you got to face another series. It's very difficult. So here we go. The Capitals are plus 350 to win the series. Rangers minus 450. The Capitals are 150 to 1 to win the Cup. 75 to 1 to win the Conference. Rangers 7 to 1 to win the Cup. Plus 325 to win the Conference. And the Capitals were much better than I expected them to be. And Ovi stepping up in the second half was a thing of beauty. Uh, we're so lucky that we get to watch a goal scorer of his quality with the, that matches goal scoring with toughness who loves hockey more than anything in the world. I mean, we're just lucky. Very, very fortunate uh, to watch a player like Ovi in his career. The Capitals closed the season very strong. They won four or five. They squeaked into the playoffs, finished with that two-on win at Philadelphia on Tuesday. Feel good about themselves. Rangers finished the season strong, winning five to seven on their way to the President's Trophy. Philip Hedl, I thought he was done for the year. So I, it did surprise me. Maybe I just, or maybe it was always the regular season, but Philip Hedl looks to be available in the playoffs. Blake Wheeler is expected to be back if needed. I mean, he, he probably wouldn't break their top 12 right now, but if needed. So if those guys come back, we have a completely healthy New York Rangers squad. Let's get into the line history here for this one. This total is at five and a half minus 120 to the under. I open up minus 115 to the under. We have a five cent move to the under in game one. On the money line, we have the Rangers sitting here at minus 226. They opened up at minus 226. There's been no movement. Uh, the Rangers have a lot of pressure on them to succeed. The Capitals have zero. That makes the Capitals a difficult hockey team. In saying that, I don't want to be involved. The Rangers can beat you high scoring. The Rangers can beat you low scoring and defensive. You ask how you want to play the hockey game, and the Rangers can beat you. But from a from a making money standpoint, I do not know if they're equipped to represent the Eastern Conference in the Stanley Cup Final. I would be interested in fading them against a few teams, the Capitals not being one of them. I don't have interest in this. I don't have interest in the Rangers minus one. I don't have, I just don't have interest in this game one or series or futures. Take it away for us, Bobano Capitals Rangers. Yeah. This is one where I considered a series <coughs> series handicap on the Rangers. But then I started talking to one of my great friends and viewers on the ice guys show, John Massey, who's a big time Rangers fan. And he warned me the Rangers never make it easy on themselves or very Rarely do they not make it, uh, did, very rarely do they make it uh, easy on themselves. And how many times have we seen the Rangers? Wow, they should steamroll this team in the first round. The next thing you know, we're going to game seven. You know, <laughs> it's so I don't know if I'm rushing to lay the series handicap here with the uh, Rangers. I do think the Rangers are the better team. I do think there's an element to this with the Washington Capitals that they overachieved tenfold to even get to this point here in the Stanley Cup playoffs. They had to rely on a defensive shell type of game down the stretch. They had to rely on out-of-this-world goaltending from a very unlikely candidate to deliver something like that in Charlie Lindgren uh, down the stretch for them. Can that sustain itself, especially against a Rangers team that when the power play's rolling, they can be lethal? Now, five-on-five play for the Rangers, I'll admit, in the last week or two, was not thrilled with it. You know, a lot of their damage was power play damage. Hell, there was a game against uh, Ottawa where I think every goal for them was on the power play in some form or on a power play because they also scored a short and a goal. But five on five, you know, their even strength play was not nearly as good down the stretch. That does concern me a bit, but I don't know if Washington's the team that's going to make them pay for that when it's all said and done. So this is a series where I think the Rangers win in six. or You know, it could be a, it could be four or five. Like if the Rangers play their A game and Washington becomes a pumpkin and kind of plays – more like what we think their ro- like their roster to me is not as good as what we've seen in their ability to get to this point. But the one thing they've gotten is they've committed to team defense 
And that's a credit to Spencer Carberry. He's one heck of a coach, and he's already proven that with this Washington team and getting outstanding goaltending from Lindgren. And if the defensive structure is there, the shutdown mentality is there, and the Rangers' uh, five-on-five play is uneven like it was down the stretch, Washington's going to have a pathway to be right there in this series and hang in there. But I'm not betting on that to happen, just like I'm not betting the Rangers at this kind of a price. So this is a this is a, this is a series where I can see a sweep. I, I think the Rangers win. The one thing that would surprise me is Washington winning in any form. Um, that would surprise me a little bit, but it wouldn't shock me because they've defied the odds all year. And the Rangers have rarely made it easy on themselves in some playoff series in years past. But I do think the Rangers advance, and I could see anything. I could see four, I could see five, I could see six. I could see them needing to go the distance. So uh, interesting series, but not one I'm involved in pre-series. Yeah, I think Billy nailed it too. I think anytime the Capitals take a one-goal lead, as long as it's not in the first five to ten minutes of the first period, you, you know, I, w- I try to wait till about six, five minutes left in the first period. To, you, you need to be getting plus, legitimate plus. Yeah. It's not, you don't want the early goal by the Caps and then you get the Rangers minus 115. No, my, there's no, never, a, there, there's in my live bets in NHL, there's never a minus beside it ever, not one time ever. It's only plus, you know. So I, I think Billy absolutely nailed it. Let's move on. Next up for us, we head west for the first time in these NHL breakdowns. Colorado Avalanche, 50, 25, and 7, 19, 16, and 6 on the road at the Winnipeg Jets, 52, 24, and 6, 27, 11, 3 at home. Canada Life Center, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Get to see the whiteout created by the great Roger Nielsen, He's coaching the Vancouver Canucks. But the Jets have taken it, and a lot of the teams have, and the Jets do a nice job with the whiteout. Jets to win the cup, 11 to 1. Avs to win the Cup, 8-1. to one. The Avalanche to win the Western Conference, plus 425. Uh, Winnipeg, plus 600. And to win the series here for this one, the Jets are plus 115. The Avalanche, minus 135. These are bet 365 odds. We've already heard from Mel. Uh, you know, and, and I'd love to hear Steve G's thoughts about this. But Mel, so Mel, Steve G, you know, Colorado Avalanche fans living in you know, in Colorado and Mel's best bet is the Jets to win the series. It's been such a yo-yo roller coaster ride, the Avalanche this year. At times their backers are the most confident. You know, and, and I know how many people have cashed live on the Avalanche when they go down two or three goals. Uh, I don't go, I only uh, and it's it's something that I'm very strict about. I don't go for the huge score. I I I take the team when they're down one goal uh with you know five minutes left in the first or early in the second, and I don't touch it again. And there's times where I could have had a huge score. That's okay. I keep it very strict. I bet it once, and, and it's just my system, and it works for me. It can work differently for others. And the Avalanche coming from behind and being absolutely spectacular. It was shocking to watch the Avalanche back their way into the playoffs. There's a lot of question marks with Georgiev. Even though he was an Iron Man this year, his numbers weren't very good. Is he capable? The Winnipeg Jets penalty killing has not been good this year. You're going up against the wrong hockey team in the Colorado Avalanche if your penalty killing is not up to snuff. They have the right personnel for the penalty killing to be strong. I don't quite understand. And we know what Hellebuck is capable of in the playoffs. We know what we just watched his second possible Vesna trophy this year. Remember, he won, I believe it was in 2019, and he showed out once again. Clearly, signing Shifley. Uh, and Hellebuck before the season started to those matching contracts. And that's when I moved on them on the uh, not over 91 and a half points. We talked about it in our chat. It was just like they they, they set a, a message. They sent a message to everyone. And that's why it was so shocking that nobody was showing up at Canada Life Center, and they will for the series. This is as exciting as hockey will ever get. You go up against the Colorado Avalanche in the playoffs. So the Avalanche coming up their second win in six games, 5-1 at home versus the Oilers on Thursday. They're hoping to have Samuel Girard back. And maybe Steve G can tell us if, if I, we expect them to come back. The big story around the NHL with the Avalanche over the last little while, and Steve, I'd love to hear you touch on this as well, is Casey Middlestad has, at first, they were like, this is the best trade. Look how good, look how deep. And then all of a sudden, hey, where's Casey Middlestad? Where is he? Where has he been in the last 10 days, two weeks? Missing in action. 
He's a young player. Uh, this there's a lot of pressure. Buffalo knows all about that. Yeah, yeah. So I'd love, I'd love. So Steve G says I like our chances with home ice, but not looking good without it. Winnipeg is the best goals against and goalie performance. Going to be a great series. No bets. Daniel says is this year, Winnipeg's year finally? Been saying this for 15 years. North Ender says the Jets also have very strong home ice advantage. A Philly Eagle Flyers on the Avs advancing. Deacon Mike says Colorado had 20 games of scoring five goals or more led the NHL. Things are a little different here. And Real Deal Prime saying Middlestad left last game with an injury. He's not on the uh, injury report right now. So nobody closed the season as hot as the Jets. Uh, they had that hiccup, uh, sort of like the Panthers around the same time, but they got right a little bit before the Panthers. They win eight straight games. This is a healthy group. This is a very, very, very dangerous, healthy group. I've watched uh, these players that they have on the Jets succeed in playoff situations. Now we've watched the Avalanche win the Stanley Cup. Right now, Winnipeg in game one is minus 107. This line opened up this morning at 8.05 at Pinnacle. So there's been no movement. Uh, and then from a total scenario here, we have the five and over five and a half and minus 115. To watch Shifley, who has so much character, rest in peace, Dale Howarchuk. And Dale, you were absolutely right. Pushing Winnipeg to draft Shifley seventh overall. We all love you, Dale Howarchuk and the Howarchuk family. This watching Shifley try to contain McKinnon, and he won't have to do it alone. Adam Lowry is the perfect defensive forward for playoff type situation. This Jets team has a lot of character, but can you beat the Avalanche in a seven game series? Take it away, Bobano. Avalanche Jets. I, I had to look this up because I like the over here in game one. I'm making that official um, in the in this uh, f- first game on Sunday in Winnipeg. Over five and a half, minus 115 at Pinnacle. I mean, to me, this is this is very cheap uh, with what I see as far as this total goes. Um, Winnipeg and Colorado, you look at, I believe, this year, a 6-2. We saw, obviously, the 7 nothing drubbing at the hands of uh, win, uh, uh, win, uh, the hands of uh, Winnipeg for Colorado last weekend, April. I couldn't believe how bad they were in that game. It was unbelievable to watch and witness just how pathetic the Avs were. It's one of the worst games you'll ever see them play. But I'm looking at the uh, series history this year with uh, Colorado uh, and Winnipeg. I'm seeing 4-2, 6-2, uh, and 7 nothing in the three head-to-head meetings. Um, five and a half is just too low. And I'll tell you why it's too low, because we know Colorado can score. But the the narrative is Winnipeg doesn't have enough offense, right? Win- that, that, and Winnipeg, sometimes they they struggle to find offense. They struggle to put the puck in the back of the net. Well, I'll tell you who's fixed that for Winnipeg. Gabe Velarde has fixed that. You look at Winnipeg when they were struggling offensively and they had that little downturn uh, and they were having a hard time putting the puck in the net. They were without Gabe Velarde in many of those games, almost all of them. You know, the loss to Toronto, the shutout to Pittsburgh, losing 4-1 to Philly. Um, you know, Gabe Velarde was uh, banged up at that time. You look now with Gabe Velarde back since February 17th. You look at when he's been in the lineup here for this uh, Jets team. They've suddenly been a, a team trending over. You know, they had three straight overs when he came back, four and one to the over when he first came back. And since February the uh, 17th um, for uh, Gabe Velarde. Now we're talking about games with him in the lineup. You know, we're excluding that period from the end of February to near the end of March when he missed a month. We're talking about games with Gabe Velarde in the lineup for this Winnipeg Jets team. And we're talking about a team that from an over perspective, excluding pushes, has gone 11 and 3 to the over. In 14 games with Gabe Velarde in the lineup since February 17th, 11 and 3 to the over. And that is because he is a difference maker. He was an incredible get by Kevin Chevelday off last year in that deal for Pierre Luc Dubois, which looks like highway robbery at this point. Uh, he's been incredible. He's been like, look at the goal he scored last night. If he shoot that shoots that puck right away, Demko makes the save, but he had the poise and the patience to wait, wait, wait for the goalie to commit. And then he just casually and calmly put deposited it in the back of the net. He's just a gifted play, great hands, uh, an underrated release. And he has given this jets team a, a different dimension offensively. Now you've got Kyle Connor red hot coming into this series. What if Shifley gets going? You've got Sean Monahan, who hopefully for the first time in his career can drag his regular season performance into the playoffs, which has been a problem for him going back to Calgary. But if there's ever a time for him to do it, he can do it here. So they've got more offensive weapons and uh, depth, I think, than people think. Uh, they've got Morrissey, a dynamic playmaker on the back end. Now, Colorado's got more of it than Winnipeg. There's no doubt. 
But the concern for me with Colorado is you can say all you want Colorado biding time, waiting for the playoffs to get here. Maybe that explains the malaise down the stretch. But this has been an extended run of poor defense, breakdowns in the defensive zone, turnovers with the puck, and borderline horrific goaltending from Alexander Georgiev. This has been weeks of this now from Colorado. What, we're just going to play game one and flip a switch and the defense will be fine again? Goaltending will be fine? Georgiev is going to be a brick wall now all of a sudden? I don't buy it. So I think this series is going to have more goals than people think, and I really like this over in game one. I love it. You are locked in over five and a half at minus 115. You want to talk about perfect gambling situations? Uh, Jets win both games at home. It's 2-0 going back to Colorado. Betting Colorado in game three down 2-0. I mean, that, that's just... Even I would, for as much questions as I have with Colorado. Oh, that, that would, would just... be a spot where, you know, they know they don't want to go... They can't go down 3 nothing. Oh, man. Minus one, team home. total over. You know what I've done with Colorado? Last night I did it. I did it with the Vegas game last Sunday when they got embarrassed by Winnipeg and they had to play Vegas in Vegas on Sunday afternoon. I took a team total over one first period and team total over one and a half first period the team total over one and a half first period against vegas was like plus 260 for colorado and they had two goals in the first period same thing last night you would have cashed it easily those two bets hell you could have cashed three and a half team total in that first period last night yeah it was a, it was my only bet on the card last night it was the avalanche minus one which you know and then you got the gift of all gifts with seven top players sitting out for edmonton later in the day yeah <laughs> Well, we, we, we talked about that. I mean, uh, you the, figured it, some, someone was going to sit out at least, but you didn't well, expect we knew I, that, even, I didn't expect that many guys to be out last night. And yet yeah. Skinner starting. What a stupid move. I know they only played him for a period, but that was dumb. Shouldn't have even played at all. That was Skinner. dumb. That yeah. was dumb. Let's roll on. We got to speed it up a little. Now, remember, yep. the first ML game is 220. Sorry, yep. MLB game is 220. So we don't need to panic. Next yep. up for us at 10 p.m. Eastern. On Sunday night, Nashville Predators 47 30 and 5, 24 14 and 3 on the road. The Vancouver Canucks 50 23 and 9, 27 9 and 5 at home at Rogers Arena in Vancouver, BC. Nashville is plus 140 to win the series. I think that's a fair price. And I'm going to bet it. I want it in my pocket. Uh, I haven't figured out exactly how much to bet on it here. Maybe it'll just be that, that regular unit for 300, but I do want Nashville plus 140 in my pocket. Nashville to win the Cup 28 to 1, to win the Conference 15 to 1. Vancouver to win the Cup 11 to 1, to win the Conference 6 to 1. You know, it's a it's a really difficult situation for Demko here. We've all watched them completely take over a series. You know, the Blues win the Stanley Cup. They face the Canucks in the bubble. The Canucks were not a good hockey team. Demko was spectacular. Won the series. Knocked out the defending Stanley Cup champions. Here, we haven't seen much of him. This is a very difficult ask. I'm not saying he's not capable of it, but it's a very dis difficult ask. Then you have UC Saros. And there's Maggie right there, the Iron Lady, Thatcher Demko. Then we have UC Saros, the only goal starting goaltender that's 5'11 in the NHL, the smallest goal starting goaltender in the NHL. And he's not had a great season. Uh, he's been, you know, shellacked at times. I still believe in him. He could step up here. Uh, the Predators finished the season f uh, losing 4-2 at Pittsburgh. Stamped their two-game winning streak. We watched them get a point in 18 straight games. This team is built for the playoffs. Luke Shen and Ryan McDonough. I mean, they're, that, is that not your dream <laughs> bottom pair defenseman? Like, if you were putting together your perfect playoff team, wouldn't maybe, maybe you don't want them playing together because they don't have enough speed. Maybe you want one on one line, another on another, but... Come on, heart, soul, character. I want Luke Shen over McDonough. I want Luke Shen so badly in the playoffs. His, his toughness. They have team toughness. They have team speed. You see Forsberg's numbers this year? He was absolutely, what did he go, 94 points? Yeah, incredible. He, he, he was absolutely spectacular. And, and, and he took players with him. Yeah. Uh, players that we don't, look at Nyquist's year this year. You know, remember Mr. when. Virgin's playing with Phil. Exactly, yep. And there was times we thought Nyquist and Tatar were done. Now, Tatar is done. Yeah. Nyquist, almost a point a game this year. O'Reilly doing the dirty things, the little things to make this team go. Yeah. You've got great young talent in Evangelista. This is a – and then, of course, we haven't even mentioned Roman Yossi. I mean, yeah. so the Canucks did just enough down the stretch to hold on to the Pacific Division title. Uh, they lose 4-2 at the Jets. You know, JT Miller wasn't out there. He won the MVP for the team this year. He was by far the MVP. Uh, toddler shoulders. Pedersen's been nowhere to be found for weeks. 
Now he could score a huge goal. Let's say, let's say Pedersen's nowhere to be found all game and he scores an overtime goal to win them game one. And then he could heat right up. I mean, that's what happens with snipers. You know, this is a healthy group. Zadarov brought size, but their forward group isn't tough enough. Uh, you hear Kessler talking about, you know, who are who are the character guys on the Vancouver Canucks? Now, I don't like Kessler as a man, as a guy, uh, but but he was a tough playoff type of performer. They ask him, who are the guys with character? Who are the guys with toughness? First, immediately JT Miller. Of course, JT Miller is your ever, he's phenomenal. And then Connor Garland. Oh, no. That, that's Those are the character, that's the team toughness to, and now we have Dakota Joshua. There's players who can step up and be big, but all the pressure in the world is on Vancouver. The house of losers uh, never won a Stanley Cup. Now, I know the Sabres have never won a Stanley Cup, but all the Canucks know is to buckle under pressure. And this is a very, very, very difficult matchup. And I do not believe in the Canucks. I would love to see them make it through the first round. I do not believe in this hockey team. The over 5.5 minus 119 uh, opened at minus 119, now minus 116, a very small move to the under. And then on the money line for game one, the Predators are plus 128. I don't think I need uh, to bet that, really. You know, uh, I'm interested in it. I don't need to be in game one. The pressure is so high. I, I don't know how exactly to bet this yet. i got to figure this out. Uh, I've got till Sunday night. I want Nashville. I want Nashville to win the series. Uh, Sky Dragon says, honestly, he thinks this price is cheap. You know. Uh, and I'm sure you've watched a lot of their hockey. I, I, I've watched a lot of Canucks hockey, and I'm about to watch them lose. Maybe they can get through the first round. I hope they can get through the first round for the sake of the city. Take it away, Bobano. Nashville Predators, Vancouver Canucks. I thought I was going to be on Nashville here, but I might pump the brakes. Um, I might pump the brakes uh, because I think Vancouver did a decent job down the stretch steadying the ship a little bit. Uh, you know, getting back to, you know, pretty solid defensive play. Thatcher Demko looked good, you know, in, in the games that he returned for. Uh, and I think when you look at it, if you're Vancouver, you've got a coach in Rick Tockett, you know, that to me has done a really nice job with this group. He's pushed the right buttons a lot of the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I thought for, I definitely don't want to bet against Nashville at this price, but I thought I was going to be on Nashville and um, I, I, I don't know if I love the price enough to take it. I lean Nashville because I do think there's a dangerous opponent for Vancouver with Philip Forsberg playing at the high level. But here's what concerns me about Nashville. It's kind of the same thing I talked about earlier about the Islanders. If Forsberg somehow, and easier said than done, right, to shut him down. But let's say he is shut down. And that line is subdued by Vancouver. Where are they going to turn? Can Evangelista step up? Are you going to get something from Key for Sherwood? Who beyond that, Tommy Novak, can he you know, bring his regular season performance into this series? That's going to be the big question. There are still concerns about that third and that fourth line from an offensive punch perspective for the uh, Nashville player. You're going to get Mark Jankowski going on that, and I love him because he's from my area here just outside of Hamilton. But you know, is he going to be able to chip in like he did during the regular season? That's going to be end up being the question. And we do have a situation, too, with Soros, very much like with Vasilevsky, where you know, he's had these incredible seasons in the past. This was not one of his better seasons. He was, he was, he was all right. He was solid, but he wasn't great. And, and, and you see the numbers, it stands out that way. I think you kind of have to give, assuming Demko's healthy, which he looks like it, and the fact he played well in those last two games, I think you got to give certainly him a little bit of an edge in net. This should be a very close series. I think there's going to be a lot of close games, a, lot, a competitive series uh, when it's all said and done. So, like I said, I think Nashville makes this a good series. But at the same point in time, I was not comfortable with taking them only at this price. And I like that Vancouver kind of got back to look the way they're going to have to win, you know, is they're going to have to be get a scoring by committee uh, and they are going to have to make sure they rely on everyone uh, in the lineup. So uh, I look at, you know, not just because you can't rely on Pedersen fully with what we saw down the stretch. Miller's going to have to be good, which he's capable of. Besser's going to have to be good, which he's capable of. And I think, too, and this goes to actually a, an official bet that I do have uh, on this uh, series, uh, I think it's well worth a look. Um, and we saw him find the back of the net last night. This is, to me, another guy that is the, the value is just too good to resist. Leading goal scorer in the series. Now, Philip Forsberg could easily win it, and he's the rightful favorite, you know, to be the leading goal scorer in this series at plus 275, JT Miller plus 550, 
Besser plus 650, Pedersen 750, O'Reilly 850. But right after that is the guy I'm targeting for the Vancouver Canucks, Connor Garland plus 1200. Uh, I'm locking that in for leading goal scorer in the series. He's got smallest guy on the ice, but maybe the biggest ticker, as Bill Raftery would say. Love his effort, love his compete level. He's willing to go to the areas of the ice you need to, even for a smaller guy to score goals. Red hot down the stretch. It's got all the makings of a very live 1200 plus 1200 12 to one ticket. Garland to lead the goal, lead the series in goals. And other than that, that's it for me here. Yeah, I there's going to be a lot of opportunities now. You you can't take the Predators plus one and a half on the handicap. It's minus one seventy five. Yeah, too expensive. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I, I can't wait to. And I remember, can't... with so many of these series, you notice I haven't moved on a series price yet in anything we've talked about because mm-hmm. there's going to be opportunities opening up based on what happens in Game One. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. you're absolutely right. Uh, NJ Striker, we'll we'll close with that question. NJ Striker is saying uh, Stanley Cup Finals. All right, we have two series left, and then we get into NBA. So let's move on to the next one. And my, my God, is there a more fascinating situation in all of sports? I, I don't think so. West first round, Monday, April 22nd, Las Vegas Golden Knights, or Vegas Golden Knights, excuse me, 45-29-8, 18-17-6 and six on the road. The Dallas Stars, 52-21-9, 26-11-4 at home, American Airlines Center, Dallas, Texas. When in your lifetime have you seen the number one seed in the conference against the lowest seed in the conference and it be minus 130 plus 110. And it's just wild, absolutely wild. You have the lowest seed in the Western Conference that's just 10 to 1 to win it all and plus 525 to win the conference. Now they are the defending Stanley Cup champions and they did circumvent the cap and and that allowed them to bring in Thomas Hurdle, you know, amongst other players at the deadline. Dallas to win the cup, 8 to 1 conference plus 425. You know, Jamie Ben has stepped up and showed more character than he showed early in his career. Remember, he's a first round talent that went fifth round uh, because of up here. Uh, but he has shown his toughness, his grit. I mean, you know, he, he's he's been good. The DeBoer has not overplayed players. They've rolled four lines. Rupi hints. I mean, you know, is Robertson? We thought Robertson might be a perennial hundred point scorer. What do you go this year for eighty? Rupi hints had what sixty five. Still, little Joe with Rupi. And Robertson is a dangerous, dangerous line. And then you have Wyatt Johnston, the the kid, like, you know, picking everybody up. This team has a ton of depth. And Ottinger hasn't been very good. Is he capable of stepping up? We've seen him do it before. And then for Vegas, it doesn't matter who they put in net. They sprinkle magic fairy dust on them and they become George Vesna. So... I mean, yeah, I expect Aiden Hill to, to, to roll here. And if he doesn't, I expect Logan Thompson to be Johnny Bauer. You know, I, I I don't know how they do it, and but they continue to do it. Vegas comes in off a surprise 4-1 loss at home last night to the Ducks, gave them the lowest seed of all. Uh, Stone will be back. They're hoping to have William Carrier as well, which would make him completely healthy. For Dallas, they've been waiting for Yanni Hakampa to be good to go, and then they'll be complete. They finished their season winning their 12th in 14 games. I mean, how good have they been playing down the stretch, and yet they're just completely – you could say they're being disrespected in the in, in the market. You could say it. In game one here – sorry, let me move over to Monday. In game one, we have the Vegas Golden Knights at plus 118 at Pinnacle. They open up at plus 109, so there's been 10 cents of movement towards Dallas. There should be. You know – you know, Dallas in game one is 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 becoming, the more I think about it, is becoming more appealing. And it's not just this 10 cent move towards them. Uh, this total, by the way, uh, five and a half minus 108 to the over. This is, Vegas will get better and better and better throughout the playoffs. Why would they be so good game one? I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't get here until I started t- saying this out loud, but why would they be ready to go in game one? And if anybody wants, Vegas for the series, you were going to take plus 110 against the best team in the Western Conference. You almost want them to lose game one, and then you come in on Vegas. Yep. So I'm going to be on the Stars in game one on the minus one line. I, I don't know how these teams are so – it's not the teams, it's the players. Kucherov sits all season and comes in and, and he wins the con Smythe. You know, uh, I think he won the Conn Smythe that year. I, I just remember him, you know, shirtless drinking a beer. But I, I believe that he won the Conn Smythe. Uh, you know, Stone's going to do it. Stone's already done it before. Uh, sat for months and then come in and rolled. How could they be ready in game one? 
How could they be ready? I, You know what? I'm going to bet against them being ready in game one. I'm not taking the Stars to win the series. I don't want the Knights to win the series. I want these two teams to beat the shit out of each other. I'm going to move on the Stars minus one in game one. Take it away, Bobano. Vegas, Dallas. I am right there with you uh, with Dallas in game one. This is definitely – actually, I forgot to mention, too, with the over – I, I am on Winnipeg in game one as well uh, against Colorado oh. and the series. I forgot to mention that. Oh, wow. I, I, Winnipeg okay. and game one and the series against uh, Colorado. Okay, give me uh, those prices. Actually, when I sorry, sorry. I screwed that up. Sorry, I screwed okay. that up. Winnipeg in the series, not game Just one. Not okay. game one. I actually okay. stayed I, – I had circled game one, but then I thought, you know what? Last time Colorado played this team, they got embarrassed 7 nothing. That kind of made me uneasy about game one. But I think in the series, I still like Winnipeg there. So, yeah, Winnipeg in the series there uh, against uh, Colorado. That's the one series bet I've made. This is the second. I'm on Dallas game one with you uh, in this uh, the, the individual game one uh, with uh, Dallas. Actually, let me first get you the uh, series price with the uh, – you can uh, find me that once we break down when I'm breaking down the next game. Let's plus one fifteen. Okay. Plus one fifteen for the Jets for the series. Uh, for this one, Dallas game one. I'm with you. Um, I think when you look at this, this adds up for Dallas. Vegas didn't play great down the stretch. Mark Stone is will play. I, I you know I'll, I'll say that right now. He is going to play. He's going to be back. Of course he is because you just know that's the machinations of what they've been doing the last couple of years. They're going to find a way to get him back and in there. He'll probably play in game one, but sometimes that screws up chemistry. You can't expect him to be, you know, at his best uh, right away, even if he does play that night. But more importantly, this is about intangibles. It's about a Dallas team that if they don't take care of business in game one, they're in some trouble. This is their spot. This is their game. You've been the better team in the regular season. You were the better team down the stretch. You have home ice. You got totally and utterly crushed by Vegas in the elimination game last year in the Western Conference Final. And you're building six to nothing last year. You'd better be ready to go here for game one. And I expect them to. And if not, shame on them. Shame on me, but shame on them uh, for, for not being ready here in this game. Revenge for last year. And it's, revenge matters not throughout the whole series. But I think in game one, uh, it definitely matters. And I know I, I heard you say that Vegas has all these warriors and all these champion, you know, then they do. Petrangelo and uh, and obviously what they've got up front. Marcia so guys that have elevated their game in the playoffs. Eichel had a good play. Uh, you know, they've got the players that can do it. And they got the blue line that can do it. But there's still questions. I'm not as convinced as you that Aiden Hill's just clicking his fingers and he's back to the form last year. He didn't have a good year. He didn't have a good down the stretch for the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. And I know people are ragging on Ottinger a little bit. He hasn't always lived up. That was not a great series for him in the West Final last year. But he's capable. I I love that he struggled early in the year, Jimmy. Faced adversity, Jake Ottinger. You know what he did down the stretch? He fl turned it up another level, another notch, and he played his best hockey down the stretch. Jake Ottinger. That is what I like from him. He got better. His numbers improved. His best play was in uh, April and, and late March. That's good news for Dallas. And I know you said who's got the heart for Dallas because you're right. There's some question marks about a Tyler Sagan in the playoffs. There's question marks about Jamie Benn, even the captain, uh, in the playoffs. But I'll say this about Jamie Benn. He's been on fire since the early part of March. He's been piling up the points. And I truly believe this guy has new life, new adrenaline, new energy playing alongside these two young kids, these two young studs on that third line right now, Wyatt Johnston and Logan Stankoven, who have been absolutely outstanding. I truly believe it's given this guy a, a, a new life. He's playing like a a, a, a 10-year younger Jamie Benn down the stretch. You just hope and pray that he brings it like this, game in, game out in the Stanley Cup playoffs, because that's been his problem at times. No shows and invisibility you know, in the big moments at times from Jamie Benn. But if you're going to go by what we've seen from him uh, down the stretch, I think he's ready to 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 turn to change the narrative and, and to show that he can uh, get the job done. So, and I love, I think they're, I think they can match the Vegas forward group. In fact, you could say now Dallas is deeper up front, even the fourth line. I've seen Radic Foxa score big goals. I've seen Sam Steele, who's a very good fourth line player for Dallas chip in offensively, and then forget it with the first three lines. They're outstanding. Everybody, Robertson, Hintz, uh, Pavelski, Mr. Playoffs, Marchman, Sagan. Um, it's incredible to watch how much depth. And then that great Ben Stankoven, Wyatt Johnston line. I mean, they are loaded up front. 
Their blue line is better now. Haskinen's got support because it's not just him. Chris Tanev brought in to shore up the blue line, to put his face, his body, his back, his neck, and every piece of his body in front of every puck known to man blocking shots, which is going to go a long way. I don't think there was enough blocking shots commitment last year from Dallas outside of Haskinen. Now you got Tanev to help that out. You've got Ottinger in good form. So I like Dallas to take game one. This is they, they got to come out storming here against a team that knocked them out unceremoniously in the West Final last year that limping their way a little bit into the playoffs. So Dallas in game one. And I'm also going to jump on Dallas, not for the series. Actually, you know what? I'm changing Dallas. Yeah, why would I take Dallas in game one if I like them in the series? I'm going to go instead of Dallas minus one. In, in game one, Jimmy, I'm going to take, because I like them in the series too, at FanDuel, I'm taking Dallas to win game one and the series, plus 146. That makes sense to me, because I don't know if Dallas wins this series if they lose game one. It's just such a downer. It's just such a, uh-oh, here's Vegas again, about to go on this run. Uh-oh, here we go again against a team that knocked us out last year. It's just such a mental block potentially for Dallas if they lose this game that they're in a hurdle they're going to have to overcome that to the point where if they lose game one I'd be worried about them in the series so that is why I'm going to approach it this way Dallas to win game one and the series plus 146 at FanDuel you got it and if if Dallas loses game one what a gift it will be betting them on the minus one line in game two <laughs> it will be absolute you, you, you know you'll be able to get everything back and more uh, on that and i'm going to be on stars minus one in game one and we just did a whole breakdown about vegas without mentioning you know what? Chandler. actually i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna double up with the, i'm gonna i'm gonna take game one individually as well i am okay. because i thought i'd be stunned if they lose game one it's just it's sir it's triple circled they're playing great vegas is going to need a game i think especially if stone and some of these parts come back to get uh the chemistry right get in sync yeah, so I'm going to also take individually Dallas game one minus 125. Oh, just on the money line. Money line, yep. yep. Okay, you got it. Uh, you got it. And I was going to say, we just mentioned, we just talked about the Vegas Golden Knights. I didn't mention Chandler Stevenson and Nicholas Waugh. Yep. They're, oh, yeah. they're, they're, if you were to go, in, if you were playing a video game and you were building a playoff, you know, a, a second line and a third. I think Nicholas Walkie can be third line center. He can be fourth line center. They're, they're putting Willie Carlson as a third line center right now. A uh, while Bill uh, and using Wad the fourth line. I mean that, but he can do so many things. Um, I love it. Okay, let's move on to our final game here. Final matchup of round one NHL playoff action. It is the Los Angeles Kings 44, 27, 11, 22, 15 and four on the road at the Edmonton Oilers 49, 27 and six, 28, nine and four home Rogers place in Edmonton, Alberta. You have to think this is the weakest goaltending of any series. And of course that um, explodes the volatility. Uh, Skinner 905 save percentage this year, 36, 16 and five with two shutouts, 2.62 goals against average. Uh, Pickard's actually had better numbers, but it's much smaller sample size. It's tough, you know, Starting 60 games in the NHL, very tough. 12 7 1, 2.45 goals against 7.99 save percentage for Pickard. If, if you see Pickard out there, you know that the Kings are going to upset the Oilers. You don't want to ever, you don't want to see Pickard out there, but he could be there. Uh, Talbot, if Talbot could come back and snake Edmonton, the team he used to play for, I mean, that would be uh, the greatest thing that happened to him. And Riddick, Riddick wasn't bad this year. He could, he could back up. I, I, you know, again, if you see the backups in net, your team is in trouble. Kings barely got past the Blackhawks last night, 5-4 in overtime to set up a series with the Oilers. They've been barely getting past teams ever since that huge run they had on the road, that glorious record-breaking run they have on the road in the first 25 games of the year. And then it just all falls apart. You know, it all falls apart. Oh, let's do a quick switch here and get you. There you go. It all, it all fell apart. And I don't know what to make of them, but the Oilers backed their way into the playoffs losing 4-5. or five. You know, they close things out with that 5-1 loss to Colorado. They rested everybody. Uh, both teams are healthy right now. The Kings are plus 180 to win the series. The Oilers are minus 220. The Kings to win the Cup 25-1, to Conference 14-1. to Edmonton Cup 7-1 to and Conference plus 375. At this point here, this is by far the best Oilers team in the Conor McDavid era. You don't need to be a great regular season team. You need to have the physical makeup to be a great postseason team and a big team and a tough team to play against. And they, you know, they robbed the predators of Matthias Ekholm uh, and now they 
have a warrior that can play and, and take the pressure off of Darnell Nurse, who, who can be disappointing at times. You have Zach Hyman, uh, who, who got kid who's never been the best player on his team in his whole entire life. And now he's, you know, a 50 goal scorer and, and so much character. They, this team is more character. Now, you know, you could say that Corey Perry and Evander Kane, you could, there's a lot of different things you could say about those two gentlemen. But they thrive in tough situations. They don't thrive in a speed skating contest. They thrive in a in in the toughest spots on the ice, in the toughest games, with the most emotion. With now now, Kane, both of them will give horrible penalties that'll just that you can lose a game over. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to this Oilers squad that are special, and so we'll get to the question that NJ Striker posed here. Uh, the pressure is immense on the Oilers, immense. And there's no pressure on the Kings. Could the Kings walk into Edmonton and, and steal game one? For us gamblers, that would be great because then you could move on the Oilers for the series and the Oilers in game two. I don't want the Oilers in game one. I don't want the Oilers series price right now. Uh, I want to watch game one. I, I don't find very much appealing here from a gambling standpoint because – the Oilers are going to be carrying the weight of their the world on their shoulders. Take it away, Bobano. Our final NHL breakdown of round one matchups, Kings Oilers. Yeah, you basically said it. I mean, it's it's true. I think Edmonton wins this series. I can't trust LA too much, too much uneven play. You know, some games they'll score four or five, and then they'll have that game where Talbot or Riddick, the one of the goalies, shits the bed and they'll lose. And then they'll have a game where they play their usual pretty staunch defense and they they don't score their offense dries up. I mean, there's just, that's been the LA Kings a lot the last few years, including this year, you know? So and that, that's the, been the problem with them against Edmonton the last couple of years in these playoff series. Their defense has not been good enough to shut down Edmonton for as good as a defensive team as the Kings have been all these years. Their defense hasn't been good enough to shut down Edmonton. And I don't know if it's going to be good enough to shut down Edmonton here again, because, you know, years past, you've still had quick, you know, playing at a decent level. You've you've had goaltending. You can really hang your hat on. Can you hang your hat on Cam Talbot? No. You know, as a playoff goaltender, I'm not so sure. Certainly can't hang your hat on David Riddick. You know, if he were to get in there, as far as a playoff goaltender is concerned. So, you know, to me, what changes here? What changes for the LA Kings compared to the last two years where Edmonton knocked them out uh, in the uh, first round? And they go from Todd McClellan, who knew the Oilers inside and out, to Jim Hiller now. You know, so. I, I got to see it before I believe it. You know, if the, that the uh, that the LA Kings that uh, third times the charm that they're finally going to knock off the Edmonton Oilers here uh, in this series. I will say this to Jimmy's point about the uh, waiting on Edmonton here for Game One. The last two years, um, Edmonton did win Game One, but man, they were close games. I think they were both identical four three uh, final scores. And I'm looking at the series a couple of years ago uh, with the uh, Kings and the Oilers. Uh, which ended up, of course, going seven. It went the distance. Uh, game one went over. Uh, you look at uh, game uh, two, uh, game one last year, it was 4-3 in overtime. Uh, it also went over the total. And in fact, in that series, which was six games last year, it was a four and two over series. Game one went over, game two and three stayed under, and then four, five, and six all went over the total. So there's been more goals than you would think here uh, with the uh, Kings uh, and the Oilers in this series this total right now is six. It's shaded to the under. I'm not on a side here. I'm with you as far as what how I'm going to approach this, that I'm going to wait to see if maybe Edmonton gets a better adjusted series price later on, say if they lose game one or if they fall behind in this series at any point, then I would probably move on Edmonton for the series. But I've got nothing in this game from a side perspective, nothing in this. Actually, you know what? I do have – I know you've been waiting for a draw. Right, you've been waiting for a draw. Um, last year, overtime, four three Edmonton in Game One, in this building, and I think LA, two years in a row losing to this team, they they throw a big punch. I don't know if it's enough to win the game, but I think it is enough to really test this Edmonton team, make it a difficult Game One for them to win. Again, there's a Kings team that took the Oilers to overtime in game one last year. And then in game one, the year before it did not go to overtime. It was a regulation game, but it was a four, three game again, that close to overtime. So I do like the draw uh, here. My favorite draw of the game ones is right here. Kings Oilers draw plus three seventy uh, at FanDuel. 
And I'm also going to grab because at Pinnacle, I see over five and a half minus 115. I'm mm-hmm. taking that. I, I think when you look at it, 4-3, game one, each of the last two playoff seasons in game one with these two teams, bank on the history, bank on the fact that I don't trust the Kings defense or their goaltending this year with the Talbot-Riddick combo to hold up. I love it. I love it. Billy Friedrich just entered the NHL playoff pool here at Pub Sports Radio. Thank you. You have till 5 p.m. on 5 p.m. on Saturday, April 20th, 420, uh, to get your picks in. There was a question about how many a future or sorry, how many series do I think will get to seven games? Uh, Truth Teller asked me the same question. Uh, he showed me the numbers. The the highest vote was that two, and I was surprised at that. Uh, I I would say three. And, and even that four or more was appealing. There's so much parity in the NHL. I, and 46% said two. I think three is probably the most likely and would lean towards four or more. Quickly, before we close this off, NJ Stryker said, if I gave you a free bet on a Stanley Cup winner right now, who would it be? And for me, and, you know, I, I can't help it. Uh, it'd be the Edmonton Oilers. Bobano, for you, who would it be? In the vocal stylings of, and I look probably two months ago, I would have said Florida, and I still, I, to me, I'm going to go Florida, Dallas, Stanley Cup final, and as Stanley Cup champions, Dallas Stars, Dallas Stars, Dallas Stars, Stanley Cup champions. Oh, imagine Sagan handing the Stanley Cup to Duchesne. It's never going to happen. It's just never going to happen. Matt Duchesne getting the Stanley Cup from Tyler Sagan over my dead body okay that is our nhl breakdown here uh apologize that it went long uh for you guys looking for other uh sports uh we move into nba now two games here in the play-in and i know a lot of you guys are thinking uh how is operation garcia going operation garcia has been extremely successful and it's been extremely successful with Two games going over, one going game going over by 25 points. So as a re- for a review here uh, for Operation Garcia, betting every single player prop under. Again, it's expensive, uh, and I have to use a local with credit, which means I have to go through the 365 odds, which are bad. I haven't done the average line yet. Uh, the average line's not good. Uh, but overall, uh, 200 bucks a pop. Uh, 33 and 24 i'm up 986 dollars uh that's if you want it from a unit standpoint it's up 5.2 units so in day one was great we went 19 11 plus 6.3 units now we've been fortunate that no games have gone to overtime yes the lakers pelicans game went 10 and 4 i made 954 bucks on that one plus 5.15 units warriors kings went 9 and 7 i won 82 bucks on that one plus 1.15 units in day two I went 14 and 13. You could say with both games going over, albeit one by one point and one by 15 points, that every that there was a worst case scenario, you could say. Uh, overall, 14, 13, down 1.1 units, down 50 bucks. It's just 50 bucks I lost. There was uh, some player props that were plus 110 and, and, and plus 100 and, and things like that. So it didn't hurt as bad. So uh, in the Heat Sixers game, I went nine and six plus 1.7 units. That worked out to making 400 bucks. In the Hawks Bulls game, I went five and seven down 2.8 units. I lost uh, 450 bucks. So I lost 50 bucks in day two overall when things went very, very wrong. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to have 6K invested. At this point, there's only 27 players listed, so we'll see if that changes. But we're going at it again today, and I'll keep letting you guys know uh, how it goes. So thank you to Dennis Garcia for Operation Garcia. Again, this is the third year he's done it according the, that I know of. Uh, I've watched it very closely in year one. We tracked it with a fine-tooth comb in game two, or sorry, in year two, and now I'm betting it here in year three. So there is uh, Operation Garcia. Now, we've heard from BJ, best bet is the Heat money line. Let's get into it. NBA playing game, East 8th seed game. Chicago Bulls 39 and 43, 19 and 22 on the road this year. The Miami Heat 46 and 36, 22 and 19 at home at Kaseya Center in Miami, Florida. Let's get into the line history and the cash flow uh, and then set a quick table for Bobano. We go into. The line history here. Let me just get this over quickly. Sorry about that. 
We're going to be using pinnacle line moves. We have Miami sitting at minus one and a half at minus 105. They opened up at minus two. There's been a half point move towards the Chicago Bulls. From a total side of things, this is 206 and a half minus 111 to the over. It opened up at 206, 206 and a half, 206, 206 and a half, bouncing all over the place. When we get to the cash flow here, get this up quickly. Uh, here you go. Uh, for the cash flow, 54% of the tickets and 75% of the cash on the Chicago Bulls. 54 and 75, it's moved a half point in their direction. On the total, 27% of the tickets and 33% of cash are on the under. Chicago, uh, I did the last 10 games instead of five games for pace and, and, and shooting. I thought that would be more helpful. Five and five over their last 10 regular season games. 96.89 possessions game, 25th in the league, 49.3 from the field, and 36.2 from three. They were shooting pretty well. And they continued that in the first playing game. They also were forced to speed things up a little bit because of the Hawks' lackluster defense and the fact that the Hawks played at a faster pace. In the playing game, the Bulls played at 100.5 possessions a game. They shot 56.8 from the field and 42.3 from three. Can you expect in Miami, with all this pressure on the Bulls, for them to shoot the ball as well as they did? In their last game, I'd say no. Maybe they don't have to to win though. Miami seven and three over the past, uh, the last ten regular season games. They look good. Ninety seven point one possessions a game. That was twenty second fastest. Forty eight point eight from the field and thirty eight point five from three. They did not look good in the play in. It was a slow way down and and Hemi was nowhere to be found due to the MCL injury in his right knee. They played at a pace of ninety three point five possessions a game. Forty two point two from the field and thirty five point nine from three. Coin says the under 206 and a half just feels right. The Heat come in having their two-game winning streak snapped in that uh, E7 seed, 8 seed playing game, 105-104 at Philly on Wednesday night and cost Jimmy Butler the MCL on his right knee. Uh, Butler was injured in the first quarter, and he stayed in the game. You know, he's got a ton of character. Finished with 19 points, but 5 of 18 shooting. And sadly, there's no scary Terry, which sucks. He would be huge in this basketball game. He's been ruled out. Sixth straight game he will miss. And Hero and Bam didn't play very well. Now, Hero shot the ball poorly. He scored 25 points, but he was 9 from 27 from the field. And Bam got into the, those two early foul trouble, uh, fouls against Embiid, and he couldn't really get a, a, a way. And now and that's a terrible matchup. I mean, Embiid's just a monster. Uh, Bam got 10 points and, and 12 boards. So last year, last year, we had a similar situation. The Heat lost their first playing game to Atlanta before beating Chicago, 102-91. In that second game to reach the playoffs, uh, the Heat eventually made the NBA Finals. Miami finished in that basketball game in Chicago, scoring 15 of the last 16 points. Uh, these are the quotes from players on the Bulls. DeMar DeRozan, I remember the plane ride back home vividly. Everybody was just frustrated. That feeling sucked. I know for me, that's one thing that's on my mind once I realized we were going back to Miami to not have that same feeling. The Bulls come in off their third win in four games. They won that 10-9 seed game easily, 131-116. Kobe White was absolutely spectacular. And he said this about the game. It's going to be a junkyard fight, a dog fight. We know Miami. They know us. We have to come in ready to compete and leave it all on the floor. Alex Caruso questionable with a sprained left ankle. It's a problem. Drummond is, looks fine, and Io looks okay. Left ankle, quadricep injury together. So I am going to bet, and I wanted to talk it out with you guys first. Let's get uh, Bobano back up in here. I'm going to be on the Miami Heat first quarter. I expect them to step up first quarter, and I might also be on, them to the, on the race to 20. I wanted to hear you guys and read the chat. And then if I'm right, obviously, I would like to live bet the Bulls at that point. When I hear the, what the Bulls are saying about this basketball game, I want to back them. It is a problem knowing that the Heat will step up without Jimmy. Take it away, Bobano. I can't wait to hear you break down Bulls Heat. I think they will step up without Jimmy. Uh, and I don't trust Chicago uh, you know, to shoot like they did the other night uh, at the at either. Uh, I also like the over a little bit, but I was hoping Caruso wouldn't play. Um, and it looks like he's going to be in there, and he's the best defender the Bulls have. So I'm not in love with the uh, over as much. I'm going to have the over in pocket. I already bet the over small, but uh, with uh, that was contingent upon being stronger on it with Caruso being uh, in 
uh, the lineup uh, for this game. But uh, look, I know Butler's a huge loss, both ends of the floor. There's no question about that. But I've seen enough of this flighty Chicago Bulls team to not trust them, even with the absence of Jimmy Butler on the road when they shot the lights out against a dead-to-rights Atlanta team that did not impress me down the stretch. That was a uh, a, a chemistry uh, a chemistry team without chemistry. Let's be real. Team without chemistry all year, Atlanta, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Miami's still got the coach to set this team up in a position to compete and win in a game like this without Jimmy Butler. Now, are they in trouble against Boston in the first round if they win tonight, Miami, and somehow survive Chicago and get to it? Um, yeah, of course they are, uh, Miami. They're probably not making any kind of run like they had uh, last time, but uh, like I said, I think when you look at this game, uh, there's something about Chicago. It's a lack of trust for me uh, when it comes to the Bulls. Uh, Miami a little discounted, people giving up on them because uh, Butler is out and people jumping on Chicago because they look so good against an Atlanta team that does nothing for me, especially at the defensive end. Um, so I think I'm going to take the discount, Jimmy, with Miami here uh, in this game and uh, take them here minus 125 on the money line at DraftKings. Obano on – the, and you're not making the over official. No, Obano, I have. I bet it, but not not without. I don't like it as much without Caruso. That's huge. He's definitely, uh, he's, he definitely is going to help the over if he doesn't play, and he is. And I'm interested in the Heat first quarter. The coin says I'll say it again. Spo over Donovan. So there's that. Uh, Sammy Comer found the Heat at minus one eighteen at Pinnacle. Thank you, Sammy. Well, I'm interested in the Heat first quarter. Yeah. And I've got to decide what do you think of these comments from the Bulls? I mean, do you just think that they're they're such a weak basketball team that even though their stars have been thinking about this game for a year, they don't have the character to pull off beating them without Jimmy Butler? Oh, they certainly have DeMar DeRozan and Kobe White play well, and they have to. Those two guys have to have a big night. They have to play well. Kobe did against Atlanta. You don't think Eric Spolster's drawn up game plan for this game tonight, one of the great coaches in the last 20 years, knowing that Kobe White popped off for 40 points the other night? They'll have something that uh, maybe the Bulls and Billy Donovan don't expect. You can count on that. And now can Chicago uh, make the adjustment on the road this time against a better and more well-coached team? They're going to wow. have to show me first. BJ on the Heat, Bobano on the Heat. I wanted Heat first quarter. I thought that would be um, – I'm a little surprised that there's the confidence in the Heat without Scary Terry and Hemi. Uh, Bobano on the Heat at minus 118. I'm going to be on the Heat first quarter. And then at that point, I'll be able to move on the Bulls. The Heat better not fall behind in this basketball game. They better come out flying. Troy Torrance says they're about to break this team up. Leader stepped up and said no, didn't allow it to happen. Heat suck at home. Okay, that is game one, Bulls Heat. Let's move on to game two here in this one. 9.30 p.m. Eastern, NBA playing game, West 8th seed, Sacramento Kings, 46-36, and 22-19 on the road at New Orleans Pelicans, 49-33, 21-19 at home at Smoothie King in New Orleans, Louisiana. Let's get into the line history here first and foremost. From a total side of things, it's sitting at 211. Opened up at 218 and a half. That's this huge, huge move uh, to the under, obviously. Zion not being available is a huge piece of that puzzle. From a spread perspective, the Pelicans are minus one, minus 102. They open up at minus one and a half. We've had a half point move towards the Sacramento Kings. Smoke and treat. Scotty Rock saying Max King, Max play Kings money line. Uh, Troy Torrance says Pelicans early, Kings late. Uh, and DC Capper on both Chicago plus the points and the over. Gets Scotty Rock's action in here. So let's take a look at the cash flow for game two tonight. We have 80% of the tickets, 79% of the cash on the Kings. Half point move towards them. You have 61% of the tickets, 60% cash on the over. Here is our second game with a team with their best player not available. And it's not like they'd be not available for a bunch of days. It's game one. We watch teams step up in that first game without their star player. Does that happen here? Sacramento finished the season poorly before shooting 46.2% from three in the play-in against the Warriors. Sacramento coming into this final 10 games, four and six, 28th fastest pace, 96.55 possessions a game, 44.9 from the field and 37.8 from three. And then they stepped up. 
against the Warriors. The Pelicans also backed their way in five and five, 19th fastest pace, 97.5, five possessions game, 46.4 from the field and 40.1 from three. In the first play in game, they looked bad. They shot 30% from three. Uh, they didn't look good. They did not look good. Uh, but, you know, the Lakers are a tough basketball team. Two losses to the Lakers and back to back for the Pelicanos. Uh, again, no Zion. He went for 40 and 11. And the Kings lost all five regular season meetings with the Pelicans. Five. They know that. They're talking about that. Four of those five games were by double digits. Kings coming off their second straight win, 118-94 at home versus the Warriors. Keegan Murray went off. Eight threes, 32 points, nine boards. They did not look good down the stretch. Herter gone for the season. I don't know if that's that big of a deal, really, because he's so meek defensively. But Malik Monk will be out for at least the first round of the postseason if they qualify. They're hoping he comes back late in the postseason, late in that first round. Take it away for us here, Bobano, Sacramento, New Orleans. Yeah, this is fascinating. Obviously, we saw Zion do what he did against the Lakers, kept them in the game, uh, really, against the Lakers. And um, now, of course, not playing tonight. But it's not like the Pelicans haven't been um, accustomed to playing without Zion Williamson. They've had to do it a lot the last few years. I don't know. Can Sack, can Keegan Murray rain threes like he did the other night against Golden State? Can he really do that again? Can Keon Ellis have that huge game again um, at home against Golden State? A team that, by the way, that spot was circled for Sacramento, uh, obviously, after what happened against the Warriors in the playoffs last year. They've had zero success against New Orleans. Now they got to go on the road this time. I have not moved on this game. I don't know if I will, but I'm not laying on the road with Sacramento. Pelicans are nothing for me. For now, it's nothing. Interesting. Uh, also, your overs have been very successful in your small sample size with us here. And I know this, there are no overs on nope. your card. Were you close I to almost got there with Chicago, Miami, but not quite. Uh, DC Capper leaning towards the Pelicanos. Collins clips on the Pelicanos first half. So with clearly you expect the Heat role players to step up and you don't have that same expectation with the Pelicans role players. It's just because so much of that LA game in particular was Zion influenced. Like he was such a huge part. I mean, B.I.'s got to be a whole lot better than he was the other night uh, against the LA Lakers, Brandon Ingram. And, you know, he's had these little fits and starts here to his game, you know, since he's been back. So I'd be concerned about that a little bit uh, going into this game. But uh, like I said, you're not buying low on Sacramento here. Okay. They've been dummied by this team. They're off the uh, performance of a lifetime against golden state shot the lights out at home. And now they're going on the road here. Um, for this game, and there's no way you're getting value here with Sacramento, in my opinion, laying points on the road, even with the Pelicans without Zion. Hmm. Uh, Troy Twain says, I've done nothing but buy the Pelicans and fade the Bulls all season. Now I flipped. Says my RI is strong under these conditions. Eric Jones, thank you for becoming a member of We Be Pubbing. Doug says, does B.I. even care? He's got to care. He's He's got to be the big dog here. He's got to be the big dog. Got to be. Troy Torrance says Sacramento advances. Saturated says this is blowout city. Uh, wow. I'm going to have to spend more time on this one, obviously, and go back over this and read all of your comments. Smoking tree on the Kings money line is his max play. Only being a half point move uh, towards the Kings here. Surprisingly, we know the to totals dropped uh, heavily. Troy says the Kings have been top eight in efficiency the past month against the stronger schedule. But people in their heads have been thinking about what they saw with the Lakers smash and grabbing the Pelicans in back to back. Mally Mal says, give me the Kings or give me death. There we go. Uh, that is our NBA breakdown for official plays. I'm on the heat first quarter. I haven't bet yet. Uh, Boban's on the heat full game. And I do have interest in getting in on the Bulls. I do, uh, I do, but I want the Heat for. If I believe the Heat are going to win the first quarter, why would I have a pregame bet on the Bulls? It just right. Take so it line. doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, and another reason, you know, it doesn't matter what my record is on Twitter. I mean, it's helpful for show purposes, but it matters. The bag is what matters, and that's why I'm not putting out the player props. You know, on Twitter, this was, this is Dennis Garcia's baby. 
I think it's sharp and I want in. I want the money. And it's just for us here on the show. Uh, same will go with, with trying to find a way to get on the Bulls. Dan Kelly says um, Drummond be on the over on his rebounds. Dan Kelly on the over on his rebounds. And again, knowing that I'm going to have $200 on every single player prop does take a little bit of the pressure. I only I only moved on the Bulls. It was my only playing game bet. You know, the pressure's on these player props. Well, Bano, excellent work today. I apologize to everyone for how long we went on NHL, except for the hockey fans who hopefully enjoyed it. And uh, to our guests for MLB, I apologize. Thank you so much for your patience and waiting. Uh, Bobano, excellent work. Please support Bobano and his new Twitter, a new X handle at Bobano Bets and support the Ice Guys. Uh, Bobano, looking forward to uh, compete in our NHL playoff pool with you. I can't wait to see the players that you choose. And uh, thank you for being here on Friday. Bobano, any last words to the Capper supporting the show, my friend? No, other than uh, let's have a great Stanley Cup playoffs, a great weekend in all sports, but especially the NHL with that going on. It's fun to talk playoffs. I get to talk playoffs again for another hour and a half, two hours on the Ice Guys in an hour. We got Eddie Lack, Danny DeKaiser, Luke Adam joining us on the uh, Ice Guys. I'm looking forward to that. We'll talk playoffs more if you didn't hear enough already. I'll be entering the playoff pool, and you should as well. Um, Pub Sports Radio, NHL playoff pool bracket challenge uh looking forward to that uh, jimmy have a great weekend everyone in the chat have a great weekend cash some tickets we'll see you next week there he is bo bano and tory coker moving on bulls money line also troy torrents four and oh this season fading the pelicans six and two backing the bulls i wonder if i want the bulls in my pocket i it's just that first game back without their star player we just watch these teams step up can they step up when it's all on the line all right, it is time to get into Major League Baseball. Let's bring in the star of Major League Baseball programming here on Pub Sports Radio. Running hot, running nice. Please welcome from San Antonio, Texas, home of the Southtown 101 and Pub Sports Radio, Mr. Jose Bouquet to the show. Jose, how are you, my friend? Uh, Jimmy, it's nice to see you. There we go. It's especially nice to see you. Um, I... <laughs> At what point is Bobano going to figure out it's not a bracket challenge, it's it's picking players? I, I wonder at what point is he going to figure that one out? Because I don't think he realizes that. Uh, he, he, uh, he'll, he'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, he'll God. Figure it out. That's gonna be good. That's going to be good. I can't wait. I wish I could see Bobano's face when he clicks on a team and then all the players pop up. He's like, what am I doing here? Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be great. So it's nice to see you guys. Um, it's, and I'm glad that the chat's in a better mood than they were uh, yesterday towards me. It's nice to see everyone. But yeah. Well, you were much. very, very right. You made uh, some of our followers a lot of cash. Let's review what happened yesterday. I went 3-3 three and three down 0 0.26 units. In the order of when I bet them, uh, Arizona, San Francisco, first five under four and a half was the bet I placed the night before. It was just an easy casher. Tigers, first three. I'm the only guy who lost a bet on the Tigers in the first five innings. Yeah, that was gross. Uh, the Angels, uh, plus 125. Uh, I I bet a full unit on them at plus two and a half, minus 110. So I, nice. I got back, but I mean, it doesn't help my record, but it helps my cash flow. Uh, Texas, Detroit, over nine. Uh, that was thanks to you. I wish I was on that first five over as well. That cash. Guardians cashed. And then, again, with totals, man. I mean, it's one thing when we get in late on a side. It's another thing when you get in late on a total. Uh, I could have, if I got in earlier on that Cleveland Boston under, I would have got nine. I got eight and a half. That balk, that balk. Oh, that God. Balk, I had to, I was driving and I had the game on, like actually watching. I had to stop the car and walk it off. That's what I did. When I watched that balk. I had to stop. Yeah, the car. that was disgusting. And the worst part about it, obviously, no runs being scored was disgusting too. Yeah, it was. Um, it bothered me, and I've been having a lot of these bad breaks. I, I, I feel like as soon as I can turn, we watched me lose what thirteen out of fourteen overtime and shootout games, and then I started winning them. It'll happen here, but some bad bounces. Yeah, that cub the the um the Angels game was was gross. It was just two one shitty luck there. So. Uh, I, I I don't hate that bet at all. Plus one, you know, almost thirty. So, uh, review your action from yesterday as I set things up here. Yeah, I went four and two, and I was fighting a mental battle uh, yesterday and this morning. Obviously, like reputation bet cash it was easy. 
it was hilarious too. I had fucking people just messaging me after lighters first inning. Oh boy, here he goes. And and then quickly, like I even got kicked out of my gambling group chat. No one believed. And then lighter got blown up in the second inning, and it was uh, quite humorous to see. Um, I I was the 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 best part I think of, of yesterday. Obviously, was not taking the Tigers. I guess because I I just stuck to the overs, and I was scared about the the market and everything. So I was fortunate in that aspect. And KBO Kenta got fucking wrecked. I lost another under with the Red Sox, or should I say with the Guardians? Uh, I'm gonna just not bet any more unders with Guardians game. I'm one five and one now, or one four and one, something like that. It's just disgusting. Uh, but we cashed the under in the the Giants at Arizona game thanks to you. Uh, I should have doubled up there. That was easy. And even when Ryan Nelson got fucking destroyed, yeah, his arm, you know, comebacker, the pen came in there and did it nicely. Um, but I'm excited to talk about all these games today. There's some spots where bullpens are used up. I'll be interested in. Um, so exciting to talk about. Yes, I'm excited about all of this as well. Uh, it's going to be great having TJ rocking with us as well. Both Cab and TJ are a part of our final game here. That is Mets Dodgers. Uh, and then that's the only spot where we're going four. We'll have four of us here. Uh, that's the only one. So I could get this. You know, uh, I only have one play locked in uh, pre-flop here. And I was obviously, you know, going through it during the show, before the show. And I'm like, ah, this today is just tough. I think today is a, is a, is a tough, tough card, honestly. I'm just trying to avoid the landmines, it feels like, for me today. Yeah, I hear that. I'm going to kind of keep a couple things up here. So uh, let's get started. I'm trying to get all these fucking... Things off, and I got. All Want me to start it off because no, it's I'm just a, a game from yesterday, which is uh, starting our car, which I know everyone's very excited about. Cubs Marlins, the friend JJ Puck back on the mound again. Yes, uh, AJ Puck in business. So let's um, move over here. Okay, let's roll. We have 15 games to attack, and we have both TJ and Dabby Cab with best bets. Three each for them. Uh, both of them sitting 500 uh, on the season with very small sample size. So looking forward to watch them find the black. We've action from our cappers in the chat, which we'll go over. Let's start 2:20 p.m. Eastern with the Miami Marlins four and 15, two and four on the road. The Chicago Cubs 11, seven, five, one at home at Wrigley in Chicago. Now Troy told us yesterday would be postponed, and it was. Today, 54 Fahrenheit at first pitch, 16.6 miles per hour to right field. Stays between 16.6 and 17.6 from a Spread perspective or uh, uh, odds perspective, we have the Cubs and Tyon sitting at minus 159. They got up to minus 186 at 1030 this morning. So there's been a huge move back to the Marlins. And now we have a seven cents of movement to the Marlins. But again, they were at plus 170 at 1030 in the morning. Now they're at plus 146. So very interesting U-shaped movement. From a total side of things here, we're sitting with a nine and a half. It's minus 107 to the over. That's exactly uh, where it opens. So there's been no move there. Uh, we got spreadsheet plays of the day coming in as well. I'm going to be copying and pasting that as soon as I hear uh, Jose's thoughts on the spot. 88% of the tickets are on the under nine and a half. There's been no movement on that total. Interesting. On the money line, though, 83% of the tickets and 99% of the cash are on the Cubs. 99% of cash. So, of course, we have the move towards them with all that money on them. Why in the world has it come back? Is it a player personnel situation with the starting lineups? Why would it come back so enormously? I'm sure there are big bets here on the Cubs and they're very concerned. Horner, Wisdom, Bellinger, Morrell, or Morrell Swanson, Hap, Cooper, Madrigal, and Amaya. This is the lineup for the Cubbies. For the Fish, it's Arise, De La Cruz, Chisholm, Bell, Sanchez, Anderson, Gordon, Rivera, and Fortes at catcher. The puck we talked about yesterday finally had a good start. He had a spectacular spring. Finally had a good start. Four and two-thirds, four hits, two runs, one earned, solo shot. Two Ks, five walks, three-two loss at the Yankees. Tie on eight and ten, 4.84 ERA, 1.28 whip, 154 and a third, 140 Ks, 41 walks. Marlins versus righties this year, 239, 680. Cubs versus lefties. 295, 914 OPS. 
Marlins bullpen's being trashed. 5.87 ERA, 1.64 whip. Have converted just two of eight save opportunities. While the Cubs bullpen is being questionable. 4.25 ERA, 1.38 whip. Converted four of nine save opportunities. Gift to Cartel says Cubs number one in the league versus lefties. Marlins bottom of the bucket. Marlins bullpen is trash. Uh, TJ says, I can't back Tyon at this price in his first start. I can't possibly bet Miami with Puck. I think the over is the only look you can take seriously. Take it away, and with all the money on the under and the line not moving, it does appealing. But why isn't it being hammered? Why isn't it being hammered? Take it away for us here, Jose Marlins Cubs. Yeah, I uh, I'm passing on this game. You know, it's always nice to have afternoon action, but um, I don't want to be on uh, the Cubs here with 88 80 percent of the best, 99 percent of the money, like you mentioned. I know Troy is going to be in the chat saying that the public cashes at high rates and in MLB, I get that. The line's moving that way. It moved that way. Now it's, you know, kind of steady off. But truthfully, I'd rather be on the Marlins, and I'd probably lean over in this game as well. Um, but the postponements uh, don't help the line movements, like I think Troy said as well, and that, that kind of throws this game out of whack for me. So no action. Um, but, yeah, gun to head. I, I'm going Miami Marlins, and I lean over. But, you know, unfortunately, no action for the afternoon game. Um, why do you not want the over? Uh, that's a good question. The wind kind of obviously worries me. It's not blowing, you know, necessarily like uh, where I guess I'd want it to blow, like specifically out, out. It's going out to that uh, right field pole. So we'll see if anyone can take advantage of it. Um, and I kind of do like still like Puck. I still think he can be a decent starter uh, in baseball this year, but. And I don't know what to expect from Tyo either. So it's just a, a game that I just didn't want to have my money on and have to sweat out. Just before we move on, Deacon Mike says wind blowing out to right at 16 miles per hour. Tyon easily giving a few home runs. The over is an easy bet. It's such an easy bet. It's such an easy bet. Why would all the money be on the under? Why? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's why I was confused. Or uh, I looked at the total thing and it's yeah, 88% of the bets on the under there. I looked at the movement. Uh, for me here, Jim, and it was funny. I, like you mentioned, I had nine and a half minus 120 to the under, uh, and it moved to minus 110 at one point, but then went right back down to the minus 120, which made me feel like a little bit interested. But yeah, no, I just uh, nothing really at the end of the day for me. Joe says because it's 51 degrees, I just I can't possibly fathom why this wouldn't be moving to the over. I can't. Like, it makes no sense. Uh, Mike Money says uh, the screams bet the favorite in the over. We see dog and under and now chasing all weekend. Don't do that to yourself. I just, if I can't fathom why anybody in the world would bet an under, these bullpens are bad. The starting, Tyon had a 4.84 ERA last year. Uh, AJ Puck looked better in that loss of the Yankees, but he's been terrible. If I can't explain it, I just can't bet it. It's not like the books don't, they're not giving you gifts. I can't. Troy Torn says the total was seven and a half yesterday. Now it's nine and a half. Yeah, but in the wind it matters nowhere more than Wrigley, like TJ saying. So look, the over is absolutely makes per. But I'm not going to bet it here. Something's up. Something's something's up. Agreed. Yeah, I I agree. Maybe it's weather related, but nothing here for me. Damn. Okay, I'm gonna let it go. Damn. I wanted afternoon action. We move on. 6.40 p.m. Eastern, Los Angeles Angels, 9 and 10, 7 and 6 on the road at Cincinnati Reds, 99, 4 and 5 at home at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, Deacon wanting to bet five pigeons. Though there ain't no pigeons here in the um, the burbs, man. No <laughs> pigeons, man. I, uh... We're all grown up. Yeah, man. Time's changed, man. Uh, now, uh, speaking of grown up, who's starting here for the Reds? Because I had Lodolo. Uh, for a while, but then I, I saw this line uh, got I'm taken excited. down. Wow, Lodolo is not starting. Wow. Yeah, okay. I, so That's I was new. confused as well. That is new. So no Lodolo. Roto Wire, I just popped it up, still has Lodolo. Wow. Okay. We need to find out who is paid. If someone can, uh, uh, Amali Mal, the wind's blowing out the right field. Can somebody uh, find the. Um, Reds beat writer on Twitter. Just write Cincinnati Reds beat writer uh, and then let us know what the hell's going on here with uh, no Lodolo. Damn, I was all ready for that. I was interested in like a first five under or something with them perhaps, but 
I don't know. Yeah, it was uh, it was tough. So that's why I thought Lodolo geared up for it. And Tyler Anderson's been pitching, you know, really well. He has Shout been out to him. He has been two and one, one point four seven ERA, zero point nine eight WHIP, eighteen and third, twelve K, six walks and two homers. In his last start, he went four and a third, four hits, three and runs, two homers, four K, three walks, five four loss at the Red Sox. In his first two starts, he was spectacular. Now it was wins at Miami and at home versus Tampa, uh, two teams not hitting very well. He went 14 innings, eight hits, no runs, eight Ks, three walks. Then the Red Sox, who don't hit lefties, got to him. So it's, I certainly don't think he's nearly as good as his numbers indicate. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. We don't have Lodolo. Uh, so who the hell is starting? Uh, 253, 767 for the Angels versus lefties. They're hitting him hard. Reds are two, but. Uh, I guess we don't need to care about what the Angels are doing to lefties. Uh, Reds versus lefties, 236, 748. OPS and both bullpens have been struggling and not looked good. Let's get into the line history here. And a lot of books that pulled it or didn't even offer it. At this point, the over nine opened up minus 118. Now it's minus 116. I don't know how we can make you know, thoughtful decisions here until we know who the hell is going to be on the mound for the Reds. Uh, from a money line standpoint, the Reds with the undecided pitcher opened up at minus 135. They're now at minus 128. When we get to the cash flow for it, 77% of the tickets are on the over and 56% of the tickets are on the Reds. And then when we talk about the weather, 63 Fahrenheit, 10.8 miles per hour out to right center. Uh, take it away for us here. Chase J looking at Trout to go yard. Jason works saying the over 17, 8 and 1 in the Angels' last 26 road games. Uh, take it away for us here. Uh, Jose, Angels, Reds. Yeah, if it's Lodolo, I'd be interested in an under, you know, semi-interested, but uh, I, I just, you know, making this short and sweet, I'll pass this game as well. I will mention, uh, again, Jimmy, you agree with this as well. Now, the numbers against righties and lefties for this season are actually uh, at a big enough sample size that we can mention them with a little more confidence now, which is nice. Uh, against lefties this year thus far, the Angels, seventh. 124 weighted runs created plus. Now, uh, only 102 plate appearances. That is the second least, actually, on this list. Now that I'm I'm looking over it, the least being the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, so in a small sample size, they've hit them pretty well. So just keep an eye out for that if they do end up going with Lodolo. The Reds, uh, where are you? Reds, they're 12th, 108 weighted runs created plus. So just make those notes, but no action. Yeah, I mean, we need we need to know who the hell's on the bump for the the Reds. So uh, let's roll on. Six forty p.m. Eastern. Boston Red Sox ten and ten, seven and three on the road. The Pittsburgh Pirates eleven and eight, three and two. A homer at PNC Park in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have not made any bets in MLB, and I had a lot of the work done last night. So I, you know, I just wanted to talk it out with you guys, and I knew that we'd have TJ and Dabby rolling with us 61 Fahrenheit at beautiful PNC park in Pittsburgh, 10.7 miles per hour out to center. And it dies completely down by the end of the game, 5.9 at the end of the game, double digits to start. And even an hour and a half in it's, it's 9.5, but then it just dies out. We have Quinn Priester. I had fun talking about the Cary Grove uh, high school graduate uh, last year, uh, first round 18th overall in the 2019 draft. And he was horrific last year. 7.74 <laughs> ERA, 1.7 whip. Uh, he was so bad. In spring training this year, he got lit, lit up. 15 and a third, 10 earned runs, two over three walks, 13 Ks. I mean, the K to walk ratio was nice. The whip was nice. But again, he allowed his long balls. Uh, two home runs in the 15 and a third. That's not that bad uh, in spring training. And he allowed 12 home runs in 50 innings last year when we go to what he why he's here i mean we know he's a first round pick uh but w what he's done in the minors to you know force their hand uh, in triple a at indianapolis he's looked pretty good this year he started three games gone 13 and two-thirds uh, allowed six or in runs struck out 20 and walked five last year in triple a he was pretty good there so he's showing some signs that he can be at some point uh legit TJ says full fade Priester. Just like last year, he's fine in AAA, but won't be able to handle Major League Baseball bats. Joe T, by the way, on Cubs for five minus half and Cubs first five team total over two and a half. Okay, so let's 
roll here into the line history for Red Sox. Pirates. Pirates sitting at minus 111 right now. Uh, they opened up at minus 110. We've had a one cent move towards them from a total look. I got everything off now. I should be much faster at this. I apologize. And it will be as we move forward. From a total standpoint, we are dealing with an eight and a half minus 115 to the under. Uh, this hit eight at one point, backed eight and a half. And it was a legit eight, too. Uh, so, I mean, not fully legit, but not no, no plus money on either side. And then cash flow here for this one. We have 61% of the tickets, 50% of the cash on the Pirates. So some bigger bets coming in on Bayo uh, and the Red Sox. On a total perspective, 38% of the tickets are on the over. We haven't seen much movement. Well, we saw it dip to the under uh, very briefly. So the question is, what are your expectations of Bayo? He's looked very good. 3.92 ERA, 1.21 whip, 19 Ks and 20 and two thirds, 19 Ks and five walks. His last start, 5-4 win at home versus the Angels. He went five and a third, allowed two and runs, eight Ks and two walks. Uh, the Red Sox are hitting poorly versus righties, 224, 667. You could say the same thing about the Pirates, 250, but no power, 696. Red Sox bullpen, uh, almost a full run better than the Pirates bullpen, over nine innings to start the year. Take it away for us here. Uh, <laughs> take, it away, take it away for us here. Jose, sweet tea tits bouquet, Boston Red Sox, Pittsburgh Pirates. I think this was the closest I've been to betting the Red Sox all year. Uh, truthfully, I, I really want to take the Red Sox here. I think, you know, in a, in a card that doesn't have many spots, this does interest me. I will write them down and uh, I will be taking them full game money line if I do take them. I just think at home they're horrible. And I, I have a feeling um, it's kind of like the Maple Leafs, Jimmy. You, you know, when they go home for playoff games, the fans are very anxious, and that anxiety transfers to the players on the field, on the ice. The same thing happens with the Red Sox. If they make one error at home now, it's boo! Because last year they were horrible defensively. This year they're horrible defensively. By the way, they lead the league in, in earned runs by like 10 earned, unearned runs, by the way. Just like, just as disgusting. But yeah, I want to take them here. They think they're a better road team. I actually did a, a little stat muse look and I just looked up last year. Their home record was 36 and 44. Not good. Last two years, their home record 83 and 85. Um, so I just think that if you're going to bet the Red Sox this year, I think it should be on the road. I think uh, this is a little disrespectful for my guy, Bayo. I think the, the Red Sox should have been favored going into this game, honestly. Um, Isn't it extremely fishy? I mean, the Priesters well, look nothing but trash in the majors, and they, you're going up against the Red Sox ace. The issue is, and I need to the the like the lineups. I need to see who's in because you know I don't think Devers is going to play. Um, his knee, he got an MRI in his knee. I just don't think he plays. I think he might give him like another day or two. Um, we know Tyler O'Neill is not going to hit, or he's not going to be there. So the expected lineup for the Red Sox is Duran, uh, Devers, who will probably end up being Bobby Dahlback, uh, Abreu, Casas, Yoshida, uh, who will be back in the lineup after two days off. Um, everyone fucking hates on the guy, but I like him, but he's not been good this year. Valdez has not been good. Uh, Maguire, who masturbates publicly in parking lots, but has been pretty okay this year. Uh, Rafaela. Pretty and okay at Cameron. masturbating in parking lots or pretty okay at, at baseball? Uh, baseball, baseball, baseball. But that is he, that is a confirmed thing. You know, he was wearing a Blue Jays uniform while jerking it. Yes, yes. So I'm glad that we, we he's been apparently cleansed of that. But who knows? He who knows. But uh, I like I said, I really wanted to take the Red Sox here. I just haven't moved on it. If I don't have any other action besides the one bet I do have in now, uh, I probably will break my my curse, my seal, and bet the Red Sox. That will always be recent my bond so we both jerk off wearing blue jays uniforms oh yeah i was i was where well, i was going to ask more questions about what parking lot no 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 you know. uh, i do mine privately uh, that's the only difference i think Other his was that. like a fast food restaurant like i think it was like a mcdonald's he was sleeping in the parking lot aren't you uh, allowed you know. that's your home dick out it's your Man. home it's your home. If your car is your home, can you do whatever you want in the car? It's true. That's facts. What were his windows tinted? No, they weren't tinted, thing. but it's your home. 
It's true. Well, that's true. I need to ask these questions. But yeah, Red Sox, maybe. Look at Nuki. I mean, Nuki, 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 who's never jerked, in the, jerked off in the parking lot? I mean, this is. Who among us? But I mean, this is our. Nuki is the best of us. And of course, I mean, we're just, we're just men. We're just men. It, it, you know, apparently Nuke's comment was so uh, grotesque. StreamYard doesn't even want to show it. StreamYard does not want to show it. No. Uh, this is fishy. It's just so fishy. Would it make you feel better if that line's moving towards the uh, the Red Sox? Because, like you mentioned, there's less money or less bets. Thirty seven percent of the bets and fifty percent of the money on the Red Sox. But so why would it, that be? Well, why would it, I? I just think the Red not, Sox are a better team. No. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, let me rephrase this question. With, with the Red Sox here, with um. Uh, 37% of the tickets. Why would only 3.7 out of every 10 tickets come in on Boston when they have their ace on the mound against Quinn Priester, who's looked horrific? Uh, going 3-7 and seven on their last home stand, maybe, perhaps. The Pirates are better at home. This opened up at minus 115 and has dropped uh, towards the Red Sox as well. So, God, Razor is just... I mean, we talk about Nuke being the best of us, but Razor also. the uh, the best of us. Fair. All right. Uh, I, I look. I guys been guys. of course, of course, bet Bayo. Of course, bet the Cubs Marlins over. But it's just I'm not going to. Yeah. You know, it's, I won't do what you tell me to do. All right, let's move on. Six forty p.m. Oh. Eastern. The Chicago White Sox three wins under their belt after eight games. God bless them. One and six on the road. Let's say Chase J says, because the public is humping on the Tigers and Pirates all season, they're overpriced every game. Just get used to it. Uh, Brent Cook says, they're trying to get Pirate support. Uh, all right. Oh, my guy, Garrett Crochet on the hill. One and two, 3.57 ERA, 0 0.84 whip, 31 Ks in just 22 and two thirds. Two home runs. We used to fear the Phillies versus lefties. Now they have no power against lefties. And we imagine that will change. 268 average, 720 OPS. White Sox, 201, 591 OPS versus righties. White Sox suck. So Garrett Crochet against Spencer Turnbull, obviously. So here is my thinking here, okay? I see Garrett Crochet and I see Spencer Turnbull. I immediately think, oh, you know, I'm interested in the over. You know? Really? Interesting. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, I'm interested in the under. I see them right away. I'm interested in the under. So this was the first game I did sort of a deep dive on last night. And I'm like, well... What's happened to Garrett Crochet now? We have tape on him. We've seen him in the majors, ton of tape on him. And I know he, you know, tall and and a lefty, and, and that's a dangerous combination. You know, shout out to Randy Johnson. He went four and two thirds. He allowed five earned runs, still struck out ten, but he didn't look very good in that five zero loss home to the Reds. And Spencer Turnbull, he's not an ace. He's looked like an ace until that last game. You know, at home against the weak kid. Well, the Pirates aren't hitting that weak, but they don't have a ton of power. So then I was like, you know what? Of course, everybody's going to want to look under with these two teams and how they're not hitting hard. And the White Sox bullpens look pretty good, but Philly's bullpens look bad. So then I was like, I should flip the script. And I and I don't like doing that, but I was like, I should flip to the over in this one because they're not as good as their numbers indicate. And they're going to start getting touched. 59 Fahrenheit, 8.1 miles hour, hour out to left. Dies down to 4.3 miles per hour. When we get to the line history here in this one, we have a Turnbull right now. And the Phillies at minus 171. Uh, they opened up. When did they open up? At 155. This got up to 195. This was minus 195 at 11 this morning. At, at 10.52 this morning, this went from minus 195 to minus 164. I mean, what could possibly make this line move 30 cents? I, mean, I think everyone knows that Garrett Crochet is going to have a good start. I think everyone, I think he's become, a, well, I don't know everyone. I'm, I'm going to guess that people that bet on baseball frequently know that Garrett Crochet is a good pitcher and he's coming off of a poor start uh, against the Reds last time out. I think he because has a bounce tape back. on him in the major league level. But, I, I, you know, that's true. I agree with that. The market was was screaming Reds that day, too. And, of course, I think I took the White Sox that day in a classic fashion. Um, but I'll say this, Jimmy. The under was appealing. It was. It moved immediately. It took five minutes for this to go mm -hmm. to eight and a half to eight. 
Now it's at seven and a half and juiced heavily to the under. Uh, Go to about first five. Just take the first no, five. I do now. not want the under. I do not want the you under. Don't. I sat. I sat with this for a long time. I do not want this under. Let's get into the cash flow here. You have ninety-seven percent of the tickets and forty-one percent of the cash on the Phillies, which goes to your point of crochet. And you have sharp money on the over: thirty-eight percent of tickets and sixty-three percent of cash. Uh, you know what? I don't care that this is dropped to seven and a half. Uh, and TJ saying, please let this get to seven. I'll smash the over. Okay, so I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait, and I'm going to be betting this over. Now, do I bet full game? Yes. Yes, the Phillies' bullpen's being trash. Do we trust the numbers from the White Sox bullpen? And this is why we don't. This 3.76 years is because there's been a lot of games where they're down by eight or nine runs. The other team's not locked in or trying their hardest to squeeze runs across. So this is going to be one of the few times where I want I, I'm building confidence to go up against this market move. I do not believe the pitchers are as good as their numbers indicate. Take it away, Jose. Yeah, I lean under. I'll pass though. Uh, I would be interested in like a first five under here uh, because you mentioned the the Phillies bullpen not good, and once Garrett Crochet comes out, it's all bets are off for the White Sox. Um, so no action here for me. But I'll be interested to see Crochet having to bounce back after his. Uh, first poor start, you know, I think he can, and I think he will. Um, but like you mentioned, maybe the tapes out, maybe people know about uh, him having like just like two good pitches or three good pitches, whatever he has. I haven't done my crochet deep dives yet, but uh, I, I pass on this game though. I might double up on this first five and full game. I just want to sit here. I, I just, I think that, and Joe, you're saying so socks should have familiarity versus Turnbull. Right about that. My remember, remember, okay, last year was not a good season for me in baseball. It was horrific, it ruined my summer and, and ruined a lot of things. Then the year before, I had a really strong year, you know. And the first thing I would do, remember, two years ago, Jose, remember, I'd say the first look that jumped out on me on the board, I would put a line through immediately. Yeah. Because those were losing. Those were always losing. The first thing, this was the first thing that jumped out on me on the board. The under, of course, the under. I would like to, um, I'd like to, to fucking mess with this shit. I'm uh, going to fade my version of that later on the card, I believe, as well. Philly Eagle I, I'm Flyer. Gonna, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to rephrase. I'm going to fade that play that jumps out at me, but go ahead. Okay. I feel you. Um, uh, Twins and Phillies games, both tied after second, both lines dropping. Philly Friedrichs, only seven hitters have faced Turnbull for a total of 45 plate appearances, so not much familiarity. Uh, yeah, I one... looked at the uh, the starts. His last start against them was in 2021. Uh, four innings, two hits, one earned run. Uh, it lost 8-9, which is hilarious. Five innings, uh, eight hits, five earned runs in 2020. Um, so yeah, he hasn't put pitched against him in quite a while. So 21 one was the last one. And Mikey Money saying Philly's eight no to the under after a game with six or more runs. Okay, so uh I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm with TJ on this one. Let's roll on. 6 45 p.m. Eastern Houston Astros, six and fourteen, two and five on the road at the Washington Nationals, eight and ten, two and four at home, Nationals Park, Washington, DC, for the season debut of Justin Verlander. Let's take a look at the weather here in Washington to get this uh, rolling. 62 Fahrenheit, 7.3 miles per hour to left field. And like all across the stadium, first fives may be the better look for overs today because not that it's that big of a difference, but and you want to attack bullpens, but the wind dies down in all of these games. All of these games, second half, wind dies down. Uh, and Fat Wally says when Crochet gets pulled, the shit hits the fan. Rocco Rogers says, I want to bet Jordan here. Haven't found the best way yet. Speaking of Jordan, that was what was given to us already from our guy, LJ from H-Town. Jordan Alvarez over one and a half bases. Justin Verlander, I want you to talk, Jose, about velocity issues for Verlander. Your thoughts on what Verlander is going to do. Going up against young Mackenzie Gore. This is a very fun cap. This total is sitting at eight. It's minus 113 to the over. It opened up at eight and a half. From a money line standpoint, this is sitting. Sorry, get over here. This is sitting at uh, Mackenzie Gore plus one twenty eight. Opened up at plus one fifty two. Jesus, that's a huge move, a monstrous move 
uh, towards, wow, there was a little bit of buyback at 1049 at one point. So there would be no movement at, at you know, 1030, 10, at 11, there'd be no movement. It's since 11, this has gone, you know, 24 cents towards the Washington Nationals. Wow. From a cash flow perspective here, we have 55% of the tickets and 96% of the cash on the Washington Nationals. 67% of the tickets on the over. Jesus, is John Tay Porter betting this one? What the? This is nuts. Astros versus lefties, they smash them. 274, 813 OPS. Nats are hitting righties hard, and you've been touching that on that all year. 251, 757 OPS. Mackenzie Gorse looked excellent. 2.81 ERA, 1.19 whip, 23K, 16 innings, 5 walks, 1 homer. Wow. A true a la 4th and 1 entertainment in the house. Great to see you. And Dan Kelly says, this is the only thing I could find. The Reds did not officially announce their starting pitcher ahead of Friday series and opener, but we're expected to turn the left-hander Nick Lodolo. Wow. I, uh, uh, Astros bullpen's being trashed. Nets bullpen's being very good. Take it away, Jose. Astros Nationals. Yeah, this is my bet here, actually. Um, hey, and, and TJ is saying, you know, Verlander's rehab starts. Yeah, he was horrible in his rehab starts. But, Jimmy, we, we've talked about how um, old men, pitchers, don't really care about the results. They just need to go out there and throw. So we'll, we'll list them for everyone. Four innings, seven hits, six runs, five of them earned. Uh, there and then three innings, seven hits, seven runs, six of them earned. Another start there. By the way, six strikeouts, no one walk, three strikeouts, one walk. There are two wild pitches as well. So very interesting. Um, but yeah, I was shocked to see this this line movement and the under just crashing. And I was like, you know what? I could see a Justin Verlander just going out there, doing his old man shit, just being savvy, getting through a Nationals lineup that's super young. Um, again, I've talked about how uh, old man pitchers I, I like against uh, younger lineups because I think they just know ball, obviously, can find a way to get those young guys out. Um, but I'm on the under here. I'm on a first five under four, minus 105 here. I'm glad I'm on a first five because you mentioned that the wind's going to die down, so that's going to be nice. But, yeah, the, the main thing, and like you mentioned, I'll be looking at here is velocity. Does Justin Verlander throw hard? Can he uh, get up to the mid-90s? Can he stay up there? Um, and if he doesn't, it's going to be interesting because all the old men pitchers that are throwing slow, like, uh, you know, and it's, it's not going to be Kyle uh, Hendricks slow but it's going to be you know potentially slower uh have gotten crushed so uh i'm interested or i'm i'm on first five under four minus 105 and, and the, the obvious things are you know the astros against lefties they crushed them last year uh they crushed them they, they're crushing them this year 228 plate appearances 140 weighted runs created plus second best in the league but i just believe in uh my guy mckenzie gore being good enough uh, to go out there and do his thing and pitch well here. Now, it looks looking up uh, if McKenzie, McKenzie Gore has faced the Astros, and luckily enough, he has and dominated them at Houston last year. Five and two thirds, four hits, no run runs, four Ks, three walks. Uh, I think he's good enough to get the job done here. And I'm hoping, praying that Justin Verlander can come up and, you know, be competent here and be good. So I think he does it. And I think he looks decent. Yeah, it's a very, very, very interesting look. Oh, God. Uh, first five under four. What was the juice? Uh, minus 105. Minus 105. So, and yeah, I obviously saw the market crashing on this under, like you mentioned. And I was. Uh, that was another sign and, 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 you know, no money flow, unfortunately from action, but 67% of the bets on the over and the line is, you know, falling like that. Um, I it just, it made it very interesting to me. And of course, like this is one of those spots. Um, you, you look at the Astros against lefties. You see, you look at Verlander's uh, rehab starts. You're like, Oh fuck, this guy's going to get crushed. He's not ready yet. The Astros crushed lefties. Uh, I just think this is a, a hopefully a good spot for us here. And Mikey Money, Houston and the under eight and a half at plus two. And Houston and the under. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, it's a fascinating look. You got minus 105? Yeah, for four. Yeah, for four. four. Okay. I, I'm I was, very, I was very... really hoping to get a four and a half, but yeah. I'm very interested in that take. Uh, and Gift Cartel says uh, Verlander didn't even pitch spring training in that rehab start. He gave up five and double A, six and triple A. Just because of these guys, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. They couldn't care less. They're just yeah. stretching out like it. It's it's for the younger. But now maybe maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe Gift Cardell, maybe maybe. Uh, but I don't. I found that putting too much into those, it just doesn't help at all. Uh, it doesn't and help at all. I've been on the that. leader. I've been the leader of the Astros regression train uh, all year thus far, and I, I just could easily see the uh, Astros again struggling here. But what's interesting here. Um, he faced the Nationals last year against them with the Mets. If we forget that, five and a third, five hits, one earned run there as well. So, you know, maybe it's a different Nats team. I get that, but I think he's doing good stuff here. We have one more game before TJ Best Bet, Cab Best Bet, TJ Best Bet, back to back to back. Then Cab comes in, and then they're both with us for the final game. We have a special guest dropping by here to give us a PFL play to talk about the UFC contest with an NBA uh, prop. Uh, we got to be really tight here because we're in the middle of baseball, and the show is already two hours and 40 minutes long. Uh, but please welcome star of our uh, MMA programming here, star of our new locker room podcast show that we're very, very proud of. Please welcome Mills to the show. Mills, how are you, my man? Oh, what's going on, man? Pub Sports Radio. Getting the morning back. Man, can't go wrong with that. Millsy, my man, what did you want to fire off? Because we got to be tight. No worries, man. So look, man, no UFC this weekend, right? So it don't matter. MMA Mafia. It's all about making money any way you can. So I got PFL going on for you guys today. We covered the media for you guys. Gave you guys some good exclusive clips out there on the YouTube. Check that out. But look, for today, we got Thad Gene. He's a minus 300 favorite. We're taking him to win inside the distance at a minus 130. That's one of our best bets that we're going to be giving out right here. We didn't, we weren't able to do the podcast this week, but that would be our podcast play of the day. Last Last week, we gave out Kayla Harrison inside the distance at a plus 115. So we're going with that gene to win inside the distance at a minus 135. And I know it's all about the NBA today. So it wouldn't be right if I didn't come here with the best player prop to get you on top. Keegan Murray over 18 and a half points in at a 60% clip is my best player prop to go out. He's averaging uh, the second most attempted shots for the Sacramento Kings. One of the more consistent players, long range game, mid range games, rebounder, always around the rim. Take Keegan Murray over 18 and a half points. And when you guys are done, make sure you guys are watching the UFC podcast that we do here every single Thursday over here at Pub Sports Radio. Video. We do it. We download it on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere that anywhere you can download streams. And then we put it out there on YouTube too, so you guys can watch it. It's nothing like it. It's not your typical prediction show. We just love to get money over here. So hopefully everybody's having a good day. Don't want to take up too much time, but those are my two best player props to get you guys on top. Keegan Murray over 18 and a half and Thad Gene to win inside the distance. I love it. Thaddeus Gene inside the distance minus 135 and Keegan Murray off of the 32 point explosion to go over 18 and a half points uh, in our playing game tonight versus the Pelicanos and the locker room podcast. We are extremely proud of here at pop sports radio and next week we'll be back in action. Uh, and it's a great, great, great show. So uh, thank you for stopping by Millsy, my man, go out there and get that cash. Please support uh, Millsy at uh, MMA locker room. Uh, is it POD at the end of it? Nah, nah. Uh, I know. I just MMA locker room for the uh, you know social sites, but locker room podcast is out there. Ran by Big Show. Shout out to Big Show. He's the man behind it all. It might say locker room, but trust me, Big Show's the man behind it all. Shout out to him. Uh, we love Big Show, and we love you too, Millsy. Thank you for stopping by, my man. And please support the locker room podcast, uh, Millsy Brizzy. Uh, two cents. It's it's a great. It's a, it's a great show. Uh, we roll on. We have one more game before best bet time. So let's get into it. And shout out to Millsy. Thank you for stopping by. 7 5 p.m. Eastern. We have the Tampa Bay Rays 11 and 9, 4 and 2 on the road at the New York Yankees 13 and 6, 4 and 2 at home. We have Tyler Alexander, the lefty, not to be confused with Doyle. Uh, Clark Schmidt on the other side, a pitcher that I like. Uh, I know he's uh, a little bit above average. I think you can get nice numbers on him. 
His K to walk ratio is a problem. I like his movement. You can tell he's one of those pitchers you can tell right off the hop whether he's got his movement. Uh, if he has it, he's tough to hit against. Let's go. We're in the Bronx. Let's move on to the weather in the Bronx, New York. We have, oh, sorry, here we go. 50 Fahrenheit, 8.2 miles per hour right to left, but slightly in. And then, of course, it dies like all of the weather that we've been talking about today. Then let's talk about the money line. Clark Schmidt, minus 167. Opened up minus 154. 13 cents of movement towards ye old Clark Schmidt. From a total standpoint, we have an 8.5. Uh, this opened up at 8.5, plus 104 to the under. Now minus 112 to the under. 16 cents of movement towards that under. Go over to the cash flow for this one. We have 80% of the tickets and 93% of the cash on the under. It's moved 16 cents. Sure. 91% of the tickets and 83% of the cash on the New York Yankees. It's moved, what, 13 cents. Shout out to Fat Wally. Blessing Millsy's a PFL play. Thad Gene inside the distance at minus 135 tonight. Thank you, Wally. Uh, it means a ton, man. You're a great guy. Uh, Fat Wally in the house. So, Tyler Alexander's last start, 9-4 win at home over the Giants. Six innings, six hits, two earned runs, one homer, four Ks, and one walk. And Schmidt coming off a nice start at Cleveland. The Rays are not hitting righties, 237, 667 OPS. And the Yankees are hitting lefties, but not with a ton of power at this point in the year, 252, 726 OPS. The Yankees' bullpen is very strong. Now, the Tigers' bullpen, best in the league at this point of the year. A Yankees' bullpen, top five, a place they're very comfortable in, a place that the Rays usually find themselves in. The Rays have the worst bullpen statistically major league baseball right now but they looked pretty good yesterday but that was against the angels take it away jose Rays, yankees in the bronx yeah tough game high line i i'm off um it's funny you're, i i understand the high line reading tyler alexander who let's see here real quick he's gone four and six innings uh he, he's got to go deep here today um because the Rays bullpen again just not good this year so far um, it was a sweat for them yesterday as well. They were holding a 2-1 lead. I thought they were going to blow it again uh, for us. But, um, yeah, I expect the Yankees to win here. Uh, again, this is who I think will probably finish in last place, if not the Red Sox, for in the division. I think the Yankees win. Minus 160. You could tell me it's cheap on the Yankees, and I'd believe you. But um, no action here for me, unfortunately. This isn't appealing to me other than I, I have a feeling that Tyler Alexander is going to pitch okay here. Uh, now that nice start was at home and now he goes to the Bronx, but you know, nobody back. Uh, you know, I, this, this is not appealing. Uh, not appealing. I, I get the move to the under, I guess. Um, I guess top set took the Yankees minus one fifty five last night. He's loving the spot. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I think minus one fifty. I think again, minus one sixty, you could tell me is cheap. I believe you, but, I just don't want to sweat out of minus 160, you know? Well, no, you'd have to get on the minus one line. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do that, obviously. But, yeah. I mean, could you imagine these are the same line for the Cubs? You know, it's basically the same line for the Cubs-Marlins uh, game. Seems wild to me. TJ says, remind me to talk about this game when I get on. Well, now is the time, TJ. So let's get you talking about it right now. Star of the gift play of the day. No play of the day has ever hit at a higher ROI than our next guest coming to us from upstate New York, baby, just outside Colgate University. Please welcome TJ to the show. TJ, how are you, my guy? Oh, we're muted, TJ. We'll get him right. We'll get the we'll get the unmute there. We'll get that. No, we'll it's all right. Yeah. He's watched Dabby Cap too much. And I'm gonna get mm -hmm. shit from Dabby for when he when he He's gets also on. being very patient with us. Very patient. Uh, uh, now we lost him. But he's been very patient with us sitting backstage for a long time. And I apologize. The NHL went so long. Yeah, he's and just Ruchia, Our guy, Rushi is signed oh, up. Oh, boy, NHL. the shark. Oh, no. Well, I, 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 we welcome sharks. We welcome them. Welcome them. Come on in. Come on in and uh, and join us. We welcome them. Welcome yeah. them. By the way, I guess everyone's going to have uh, McDavid on their team, huh? Yes. Yeah, McDavid and, and uh, Leon and whoever else is on that fucking line. I just, I was thinking about that today and I was like, ah, oh, I guess that's pretty popular. I did a, a bracket pool for one of my friends here. TJ, welcome back. Well, hey, hey, sorry about there that. There you are, TJ. TJ, thank you so much for your patience uh, as uh, we went along with NHL uh, as per usual. Uh, you wanted to touch on this Rays-Yankees spot, TJ. We still got it up on the board. Take it away. 
Yeah, so I, I don't actually have a play here, but I wanted to make a point. This is the fifth time on the Yankees this season that I've done this, and it's worked. Um, so Yankee lines, when they open, okay, the day before you got to get this, they almost always get – Yankees almost always get bet, bet. You pay the Yankee tax, you pay the Dodger tax, right? It opens, you see an obvious pitching matchup like you do here today, you bet the Yankees, okay? No matter what your unit size is, this is a grind, right? We're not just trying to get rich quick. This is a grind. So we'll say we do an average unit size of 100, all right, so you're betting 138 to win 100 on the Yankees. Now, when this line flips 20 cents, for instance, about an hour and a half ago, I took it at plus 159 the other way to cover my original bet. So I have a zero risk bet to win, if my unit size is 100, to win 20 bucks. All right, if you're thinking about betting long term, and this is stuff I really talk about a lot on, on locking in profit before the game even starts, I have a no risk bet. I win 20 bucks if my unit size is $100. Um, so just look at Yankee games in advance. Uh, I've seen it seven or eight times already this year. I've been on it five times. It's worked out twice. The other three times, you know, the Yankees won and you break even. So just something for betters that, that care about that kind of stuff. No, that's a very, very interesting take. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. And you were talking, Jimmy, when you started that, like, this is hard work. This isn't just picking. It's not fun. Um, you know, you wake up every day. It's it's If you're serious about this, this is hard work. So, you know, you take money when you can take it. Yeah, I know. I like it. Uh, I like it. It's um, yeah. I mean, the harder your work, the better your chances are of success. It, it comes down to that in every single thing that you will do in life. And here uh, is a perfect example. Sports bring us so much joy, but we're also trying so hard to, you know, improve our lives with it. Um, uh, Harambe uh, seeing Washington only as high as plus 125. It was at the plus 148 that is being uh, that uh, DC Capper locked it in. There was this huge move that we saw. Let's move on to our next spot. Our first best bet here from TJ, the Oakland Athletics, 8 and 11, 4 and 2 on the road. 4 and 2 on the road. Remember how often that was talked about last year or over the last couple of years from Peter Loshak? How much added instant value you get for the A's from the A's on the road at Cleveland guardians, 13, six, three and three at home or progressive field in Cleveland, Ohio. Let's get into the weather first here in Cleveland, 54 Fahrenheit, 11.3 miles per hour left to right across the diamond. By the end of it, it cuts down to 7.3, but it starts moving slightly, very slightly out from a money line perspective here. We have Cleveland at minus one fifty seven. Uh, they opened up minus 172. We've had a huge move towards Oakland. And after watching Tristan McKenzie, uh, his start to the season, you know, why wouldn't you want to get in the way? Now, the total is at minus or eight, minus 111 to the under. So we've had a huge move towards the under, which brings the question, who the hell is Joe Boyle, a fifth round pick out of Notre Dame in the 2020 draft? And he... Uh, this year has been poor in a small sample size, 12 and two thirds. He has struck out 15. He's walked eight and 12 and two thirds, not allowed a Jack, but uh, has allowed nine hits, nine hits with eight walks and his whip uh, very high uh, last year in three starts. We so started three times this year, last year in three starts. Uh, he looked really good, uh, really, really good. But I mean, the sample size was tiny. Uh, in those three starts, he pitched 16 innings. He allowed just three earned runs and struggled 15 and walked five. Uh, he's been in the show all season long, uh, broke with the team. In 2023, he went double-A uh, up to triple-A. Uh, and in triple-A Vegas, he looked very strong. Uh, he didn't look great in that s short stop in Chattanooga. Coin says, Cleveland, first five money line has my interest. Boyle, solid in two starts. Uh, his last start, 3-1 loss at home to the Nats. Five innings, five hits, one in run, five Ks, and one walk. He looked good. Tristan McKenzie's looked very bad. The A's aren't hitting righties, 206-600. Uh, the last start for Tristan, six runs, five of which were earned in 8-2 loss at home. The Guardians versus righties are hitting okay. I mean, not really. 239, 691 OPS. But what we're used to from Cleveland starting out the year, much better than usual. And both these bullpens are... Very good. Can you believe we're saying that about the A's bullpen? Maybe that will stop at some point, but they're very good. Uh, Morgan Spooner says McKenzie's elbow, it's going to be exposed a lot this year. And Razor Sharp picks leaning to the over. D DC Capper on the Guardians minus one and a half at plus 120. Brent Cook says Oakland plus one and a half, but no way he bets it. So here we go. TJ, best bet time. Take it away. Yeah, so actually this this is a uh, 
two parter for me. I have two bets. One is a gift. Okay. Um, okay. First gift so of the season. First gift of the season. First gift of the season is going to be Oakland first five plus a half. Um, it was minus one ten. I think it's up to minus one fifteen now. Um, but I'm buying Boyle. Okay. He he got rocked by Boston in his first start. You know, since then he went at least two innings in his last two, allowing just one earned run, seven hits. Um, and then his FIP is well below league average. It's below three. It's like two nine five. Um, and I, I started to look into those numbers. He's got a 440 Babbitt uh, to start the season. That's going to come down. No, no pitcher is going to finish with a 440 Babbitt. Um, so I expect that to come down. And then also there's wind blowing from third to first. I got a right-handed pitcher that throws a slider 35 to 40 percent of the time. You're going to add another few inches of break to that slider. Um, at least that's what the windows when I looked at it. I don't know what you're seeing, Jimmy, because I saw your face there. Um, but yeah, so I'm believing I'm I'm believing Boyle, and then I'm fading McKenzie. He came out on a uh, popular baseball podcast this week. I won't say it, but um, they interviewed him, and he's got a, he's got a ligament tear that he didn't get fixed in the off season. He wants to play through it. Um, you know, he's already wild to begin with. That's his. He's got electric stuff, but he's wild. He's allowed nine runs, um, eleven hits, and thirteen innings. Um, but 12 walks and only five strikeouts. Um, that's very concerning. So A's are going to be on base. They've moved up to league average against right-handed pitchers. They started terribly. Um, I don't think they're a good team, but full fade of uh, McKenzie here. I would be shocked if he, if he gets through five innings. Um, and I think, the, I think the A's are good for about three runs here in the first five. So that's why I'm taking the first five plus a half for a unit for this show. We'll just do one unit at a time, obviously. And then I'm going to take the A's money line first five also was plus 140. I need to start posting these, um, but I think it's dropped about 128 now. And that is first five money line. First five money line and first five plus a half. I'm on both. Um, All right. Yeah. Well, let's. I'm going to line shop for both of those. You know, I like it. That makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, we did get a gift earlier in the year, but it pushed. So I shouldn't say oh, the, yeah, first yeah, gift right, yeah. the, season, the second gift of the season. Uh, A's first five plus a half is a gift. A's first five money line is a double up spot for TJ. Let's hear what Jose has to say about this spot. Take it away. Uh, well, I've, I've produced this show and been around TJ long enough to know that when he says a gift, I immediately bet it. So I joined TJ with the gift. First five plus a half minus 115 is the gift. So there you go. I'm on that as well. Um, but yeah, Boyle's done a lot better in his, in his last two starts, you know, just take out his, his start against the Red Sox, five innings, five hits, one and running at the nationals who have been swinging it pretty well. Five innings, two hits, no one runs against Detroit who admittedly their offense is kind of bad, but whatever. Um, I, I love that information that TJ said about Tristan McKenzie. If he's got a torn ligament and he's trying to battle through, I'll fade that every time. So uh, and, and we talk about how the A's do better on the road as well. Getting out of uh, the Coliseum, nicer confines, fans. Um, so, yeah, first five plus a half with me as well. Um, and TJ, I, I, I will agree with Saturated. Uh, he would, says he'd take me more seriously if I had the beard like you. I'd probably agree with that as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, yeah. I got one more interesting thing here. I get a lot. I look at Sierra a lot. I think it's a good indicator. You look at McKenzie, last four years, three and a quarter Sierra, very good. 4.3, okay. Then he goes to 5.95, bad. And this year he's at 7.78. So he's on a hard downward trend, striking out only 5% compared to 12 to 13 in years past. Oh, swinging strikes at only 5% compared to 12 to 13. So he's not missing bats. He's walking a lot. It's almost too obvious for me. I start to worry, but yeah. And Pinnacle giving you the best line. First five plus a half minus 107. A's first five money line plus 135. I like it. Uh, Jose joining Jose joining the gift. And uh, I plan to do that as well. I'd like to see exactly how much that's going to cost me and whether I should just take the money line, which I'm not against. Um, I can understand Coin saying why turn a dog uh, to a fave, but at minus 107 or minus 110, I'm fine with that. And my limit for doing that is minus 115. Although it blew up in my face, you guys saw me do that with the Nationals' first three uh, when two days ago uh, I took the first three plus a half with Irvin on the mound at minus 115. Obviously, it pained me as they easily covered 2-0, and it could have got plus 160, but it is what it is. Uh, JPZ saying the gift is money. I'll tail it. Uh, so 
Uh, circa uh, plus one thirty five says coin, and that's what we got here. And tops that said talk me to A's team total over one and a half uh, minus one ten in case Boyle gets hit. Cleveland bats are still pretty hot. Well, okay. By the way, uh, yeah. by the way, JPZ joining say hey plays tomorrow with Dabby Cap and I. For, oh really? Uh, yeah, four twenty. Oh, that's great. 420 edition of Say Hey Plays. Oh, Daddy Cab, JPZ, and myself are all going to be on a screen together. So shout out to JPZ. Oh, that's dope, man. That's dope, man. We could use him here as well. I love it. I love hearing that. All right. Uh, Gifted Cartel says Guardians money line. They always beat up on the A's. And we have now found a plus 140 at BetMGM for the first five. Thank you for doing that for us here. All right. We are going to trade TJ out. He will be right back after this next game. Uh, TJ on Orioles. Royals, a game that Troy Torrance has already given us insight on. But we replace our friend TJ with our next guest star of Medicaid Mondays uh, and a great, great uh, colleague and friend of the show. He made uh, Papa Blues so much fun. Please welcome from Dallas, Texas, Mr. Dabby Cab to the program. Dabby, how are you, my man? Good, good. Man, I'm uh, I'm fucking hungry. I started a fast yesterday, a 48 hour fast, but I'm not hungry for food. I'm hungry for some goddamn money right here. I wanna, I wanna get some W's. I hear you. Uh, I, uh, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, you're very upset with your record, but six and six, uh, not too bad of a spot. So nothing to worry about here. But I know that you desperately want to get into the black. So let's get you to the black. Uh, by the way, Razor Sharp Pick says over eight at minus 105 is a bet I'll be making. So that would be in that Guardians A's spot. So I'm going to copy and paste that. It is the Guardians A's that you're talking about. And the spreadsheet play of the day from our Ron Crawford is the Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore uh, Orioles for Ron. That will be after this game. TJ will be coming back. So we will talk about that. TJ's best bet. Troy Torrance has some notes on it. Ron Crawford as well. And here we go. Dabby Cab on the scene. Dabby, it is great to see you, and thank you so much for your patience. I know we went longer, and that's my fault, so thank you so much for your patience here. Texas Rangers, 11-9, 6-4 and on the road at Atlanta Braves, 12-5, 4-2 at home at Truist Park in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's get into the weather first in Hotlanta, 82 Fahrenheit, getting nice there, 8 miles per hour, uh, right to left, uh, to the left field pole, uh, and then it dies down, as I said, all these uh, spots die down, down to 5.7 miles per hour rangers braves let's get into the line history we'll start with this total what an interesting matchup heaney versus sale i know we're gonna have a lot to talk about i was surprised with this total opened up at nine and a half and then got up to 10 last night which surprised me not at all and then the under move happened at 9 44 this had gone down to nine now it wasn't a real nine it was plus 105 to the under and it went back right up back to nine and a half then at 11 18 it went down to a real nine and that's what we have now. We have a half run move to the under when we already saw it go half run to the over. So fascinating market movements. From a money line standpoint here, we have Sale and the Atlanta Braves at minus 200. Uh, that's what it opened up at a little after midnight. And it has not moved a cent. From a cash flow standpoint here, we have... And I don't know if I, God, I don't know if I said it here in that Guardians athletic spot, but 78% of tickets and 95% of cash were on that under. Just 5% of the cash is on the over. God, I managed to double the, the now I see what, what Razor was looking at. Also, 95% of the tickets and 88% of cash on the Guardians. The A's are a great spot. I love the gift. Here in this one, 60% of the tickets and 89% of the cash are on the over. And now we see nines on the board. 95% of the tickets are on the Braves and we don't have cash flow and the line is not moved. What a fascinating situation here. What the hell are we going to get from these guys? Andrew Heaney is coming off back-to-back -back starts versus the Astros. Is there anything more difficult in baseball than to face that lineup as a lefty back-to-back? -back? So he's a 6.75 ERA, 1.58 whip. He's 10 strikeouts, 7 walks. Look, it's been tough for him. His last start at Houston, 3 and 2 thirds, 4 hits, 2 and runs, 1K and 4 walks. Then we have Chris Sale. Coming off allowing five earned runs and a 5-1 loss at the Marlins. In 17 and two-thirds, 20 Ks and five walks. That, that was his first you know, ugly start. Rangers are not hitting lefties. 234, 642 OPS, and the Braves are hitting them hard. 272, 765. Poor Andrew Heaney. Rangers bullpen has been below average at 4.56 ERA, where the Braves bullpen has been pretty good. Dabby Cab, best bet time. Take it away. Well, I can tell you what's harder than starting 
uh, those first two starts for Haney, following up with the third start against the fucking Braves. <laughs> I mean, what a nightmare for him to start his season. And I promise it doesn't feel man, he knows what he's going up against today with these Braves, man. Um, you know, I, I saw that Troy put Cow in there for the Braves. I definitely lean Braves here. Um, if I was going to be on a side, I'm not taking a side here. Um, you know, the Braves, they did take two of their last three games against the Rangers last year. Um, you know, they hit like 10 home runs in that series. I want to say there was 34 runs or something like that scored in the, in the last three games, these two teams played. So the over makes a ton of sense. Uh, seeing the market jump around is kind of interesting here. You know, sales been good against the Rangers. He's eight and two against the Rangers. He's got a two, four, three ERA, uh, that's 16 appearances, so that's not, you know, that's not a small sample size. Obviously, we have some different hitters in the lineup here, but, um, you know, he's seen there's there, there's something to go off for a lot of these pitchers. Um, but like I said, the Rangers pitching staff as a whole, they have a five ERA against the Braves over their last six meetings. Um, and I, I don't have to go into how elite this Braves offense is. Anybody here knows we've cashed both Braves team totals that I've given out. And as much as I like that team total today, I'm going to make it even simpler, and I'm going to focus in on one person here. Um, I got Marcelo Zuna over one and a half bases. Um, this season against lefties, he's got 25 appearances. He's hitting um, – or excuse me. Yeah, 20, he's nine for 25, two home runs, seven RBIs, and 29 appearances against lefties. Um, that's 360. And then you look, you know, on the season – I got his numbers right here on the season. Ozuna on the season is just tearing the cover off the baseball, 352. Uh, he's played in all 17 games. He's got eight home runs already on the season. I saw our guy Rocco Rogers dropped his home run sprinkle in there in the chat. I love it, man. I'm right there with you. I think Haney versus Ozuna is just a matchup that in my head plays out beautifully for us to make money on. Uh, I got Ozuna over one and a half bases right there, um, and that's where I'm at. What was the juice on Ozuna? Uh, minus 114. Let me double check for you. And Ozuna, which is perfectly correlated with a Rocco Rogers, who has Ozuna RBI at plus 115, his favorite player prop of the day, sprinkling with the home run at plus 320. So, Cab on the board, best bet Ozuna over one at bases, minus 114. Jose, your old friend uh, with mental health issues, uh, Chris Sale on the hill. What? Yeah. Sadly, what are you talking yeah. about? Oh, he's, he's nuts. He's just from Florida, dude. He's just no, from no. Florida. That's no, just how they're built down there. No, he's uh, should hear the safe words. He has a list of safe words. He's just competitive. No, it's he a, reminds list, me a of, list of safe words. He it's reminds wild. me of every pitcher that was a jackass that I played baseball with. He's just competitive. <clears throat> well, let's hear your thoughts. Can Sale shut down these Texas Rangers who've struggled against lefties? Yeah, Jimmy. I mean, you, you read off the market. This was this was the play that I was referring to earlier. Oh, it's the Braves. They're so good at offense. Oh, my God. They're going against Andrew Heaney. He sucks cock and balls. The Rangers bullpen last night just got abused. Oh, over, over, over. The market says no. I'm on first five under and full game under. First five, five minus 115. Full game. I just got the nine and a half, which just makes me feel a little better. I'm, I'm obviously paying the minus one twenty for the nine and a half, uh, but I got the nine and a half, so I'm on both. The market just dictates that this is like you know. Uh, well, you just said it, Jimmy. This play jumped out at me first. Like, why is this game not going to go over? And then you look at the market and the and the line movements, and it just it just tells the whole story right there. And these spots have been successful. This feels like the Jack Leiter spot from yesterday, but I'm not. A uh, vengeful against one human being, I guess. It's just the market. It, it, when this same game is screaming over, uh, it's saying under. And I will bet the under here. I'll trust the market. Um, now, this game could easily be five nothing, like the game last night with the uh, Diamondbacks Giants. Cap cashes his under. Troy and everyone cashes their minus three and a halves or whatever on the Braves. Um, but I think Chris Sale has a good start here. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting. But Troy mentioned that the, the Braves are a cash cow spot for him. So you guys keep that in mind. Uh, we always love to hear Troy's cash cow spots, mainly, uh, mainly because I like playing this. They couldn't believe that's a cow cab. The, 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 the non-Southern people were like, what the fuck animal is that? It's like, yeah, it's a cow. It's a normal looking cow to me. 
Ah, oh, he's muted. Fuck you, Jose. I, I, I can have like a second. Do you see that, Jimmy? Yeah, Ali, I'll be back. I'm done. I'll be back in a minute. All right, there he goes. Uh, Jose, how tired is the Rangers' bullpen? And did it, did you think of only moving on the first five? Uh, I definitely did think about uh, only moving on first five here. I'll bring up the bullpen usage right now because, again, like we saw the game yesterday. It was just abuse uh, for just handed around to everyone. Um, but the good news is uh, Jose Urania came in and threw 42 pitches. Uh, so he won't be pitching today, and he sucks. We know yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, Kirby Yates won't be used today. Uh, David Robinson threw uh, 27 on Wednesday, rested yesterday, so maybe he's available. Uh, Jose LeClerc will not be available today. He threw 25. Um, and then other than that, they're, they should be fresh and ready to go. Uh, people named Jacob Laritz, Austin Pruitt, and Cole Wynn does not inspire confidence. But, yeah, if I had to pick a side that I like a little more, it's first five. Uh, but I'll say that I just – the market just keeps saying under, under, under. It's just a shocking thing here when you look at this game and the first thing you think of is that both these guys are going to get wrecked by two great offenses here. And the market just keeps saying, here you go, guys. Here's a, here's a nine. Take the over nine. Take that, too. So, yeah, under both sides for me. I'm uh, interested in joining you. I think this uh, makes sense. All right, let's roll on. We welcome back our guy, TJ, to the program. A very, very interesting spot here, TJ. Troy Torrance says, Sharps on the home team, public on the road team, short home dog, massive trend supporting the O's. Ron Crawford, spreadsheet play of the day is your Baltimore Orioles. And they seem to believe that you are with them on this spot. They seem to believe that you are going to join them. Shout out to Ron Crawford. Shout out to Troy Torrance. Baltimore Royals 12 and 6, 4 and 2 on the road. Kansas City Royals 12 and 7, 8 and 2 at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. Let's open up with the weather in Kansas City. 59 Fahrenheit, 9.3 miles per hour left to right, but in. And of course, it dies down in the second half of the game. Let's get into the line history here for this one. I'm on the first five, so why don't we just touch on that? Marsh first Kramer. Right now, the first five, we don't have, I use the Bet Chris and, and Bookmaker. They open this up with the. Uh, Orioles first five minus 139. They're now minus 135. That, that's not the right indication because what a lot of these books do is they have extra vig at first because they don't know where they're going to land. Uh, so, look, uh, you got a better price with the Orioles. They've gone from minus 135 to minus, sorry, minus 139 to minus 135. And you got a worse price on the Royals from plus 106 to plus 115. So, you kind of got to be wary when the books are putting out lines so they can figure out the situation. Uh, but let's go to the um, full game here, full game money line. Uh, full game money line in this spot, you have Kramer and the Orioles at minus 140. Uh, that's right where they open. So there's been no movement there. Then let's get into the total for this one. This total is sitting at 9, minus 105. Now minus 106 to the under. So five cents of movement towards the under. And then when we get to the cash flow for this one, we have 21% of the tickets and 79% of the cash on the Kansas City Royals. Uh, big bets coming in on the Royals. Then you have 35% of the tickets and 80% of the cash on the under. Uh, Eric Jones on the under, nine and a half here. DC Capper on the Kansas City Royals. So the Sharps are on the home team, as Troy's mentioned. The public is on the road team. And the home team is a short home dog. In this situation, uh, Troy's been cashing on with the public. Dean Kramer on the hill, coming off an ugly start, an 11-5 loss at home versus the Brewers. Four innings, 10 hits, eight runs, six of which were in two homers, three Ks, one walk. Look, he's coming off a horrible start, but he's never been a pitcher I've trusted. Uh, Alec Marsh could fall right into that category. Uh, 2-0, 4.32 ERA, 1.08 whip. You know, he can't get strikeouts when he needs them, but he's been getting a lot of soft contact. His last start wasn't the best example. 11-7 win at the Mets, four in runs in five innings, but he's only allowed one jack in 16 and two-thirds. Orioles are hitting righties hard, 267-802. And the Royals are hitting righties much better than we've seen them hit in a long time. 
237 with a 724 OPS. Both bullpens have been very good so far this year, and we expect that to stay. Uh, the Troy says 12 and 1 straight up with the public. So let's hear is our friend TJ rolling with Ron Crawford and Troy Torrance. Take it away, TJ. I don't necessarily hate their bets for the full game, but no, um, I'm rolling KC first five here. And I have some interesting numbers because I was shocked when the model spit this out. I'm not strictly a model player. I want to, I run it, I see what it comes out at, and then I kind of do my analysis, right? Um, so yeah, Marsh already faced, a lot of people say, oh, he already faced Baltimore, so Baltimore hitters have the edge. Okay, but that was the first start they've seen 17 pitchers since, right? It, it's not like it was last week. So I don't, I don't take that into consideration. He pitched very well there. He's got it kind of like Boyle. His ERA is about league average, too a little high, but his FIP is well below that, indicating some of those numbers will come down. He's got reverse splits. Um, you know, the Orioles have five to seven lefties, a couple switch hitters. So they're going to probably have five lefties in there today. Um, and Marsh does much better against lefties. Um, let's see what else. He's thrown his fastball 5% more this year, almost 50%, and his hard rate hit against per fastball is the second lowest of all the pitchers going today. So that's just something to think about. Um, you know, Kramer on the other side, he's got a 12.5% barrel rate this year. There's only one pitcher with a higher barrel rate, and that's Gibson going today. Um, I just haven't been a believer in him. His expected ERA is high. Um, you know, Casey's not exactly a powerhouse for varieties, but they are above league average. At home, they're a 124 weighted run uh, WRC plus um, with the eighth best batting average and fourth best slugging at home. Um, I'm going to believe, you know, with, with Baltimore changing cities, with what just happened with them, um, you know, who has more wins, Baltimore or KC this year? Just right off the top of your head. Uh, I think it's, it's like tied, I would it's guess. Tied. Yeah, it's tied. So, yeah, long term, it's not going to stay that way, but KC's playing good ball. You know, and, and as long as they keep playing, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep rolling with them at least in the first half here. I'm not I'm not going full game. So official bet, KC first five, money line plus one fifteen or whatever, you know, if it's dropped since I bet it. Huh. Very, 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 very interesting here. So uh PJ on the other side now, just first five, not full game. Let's hear what Jose Bouquet has to say about this one. Take it away, Jose. Yeah, I stayed off this game. Um, I was semi-interested in Kansas City, honestly. Uh, but then after all the, the comments in the chat, I was sitting there like, man, do I want to bet Baltimore and lay the minus 135? And I was like, you know what? I'll stay off. I don't want to play God in this game. Um, after TJ cash cashes his first five Royals bet, I'd be interested in jumping in on the Orioles then. Um, but no action here for me. So uh, basically... Uh Kramer's struggles this year, uh, you believe, will continue. Uh, if he improves, it'll be marginally. But the success that Alec Marsh has had this year, you expect to continue. Is that fair, TJ? Yeah, that's fair because I think the success he's had is based off of some changes he did in the offseason and probably analyzing you know, the numbers and going in and saying, hey, on my fastball, I don't get hit. You know, So I'm going to throw my curveball less, my slider a little more um, you know, to complement the fastball. And – you know, we see these guys make these changes sometimes, especially young guys, and it works out. Maybe it won't work out for a long time, but right now it is. So, yeah, I believe that. All right. Well, let's get you your first five here. Did, did you have interest? Because, I mean, it feels like the Sharps. Now, we know that this is not being an advantage having the Sharps in this situation with you, but Sharps are on the Royals. Sharps are on the under. Did you have interest in the under as well? Um, No. No, I have that coming out, you know, maybe a half run low than what's posted. Um, but I just, I don't trust the Kansas city bullpen. Marsh could go five. He's probably not going to go a full six. Um, so you're getting three plus innings of Casey's pen and anything can happen, you know, especially that Baltimore lineup at the back half of games. Royals first five, we get you a plus plus one fifteen available at bet. Chris right now. One fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Bookmaker also. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, top set says Baltimore will get to Marsh. Uh, Markel on his Orioles here. Huh. Uh, Ron Crawford says that the Royals are three and three after starting nine and four. Uh, but there is love for the Royals. There is love for the Royals. Doug says seems like a KC spot. So does Coin. Uh, Eric Jones on the under nine and a half. 
Uh, Rodney Barton says Orioles coming off a sweep and changing cities won't be on my Orioles today. Now that was a spot that we talked about last week, uh, TJ. Yeah. That was the first spot that time it's happened this year, and the Mets destroyed. I think it was the Royals. Yeah, the Royals won seven straight. The Mets destroyed yeah. them. So of course I'm tracking it, and that's the best single angle I've ever seen in in baseball. And I was against you on that, and yeah. during the, when the game started, I was like, ah, oh, crap. Uh, Rod Zawacki on Royals, a money line, Marlins money line, a little two teamer for Mr. Rod Zawacki. Shout out to Rod. Okay. TJ Royals, first five at plus 115. And Jose, you are staying off this spot. Yep. Oh, God. That's a hard one. Okay. I, I, I'm going to have to look at this for longer after the show. I can't uh, be hemming or hawing here. Uh, TJ will be back joining us here with Dabby Cab. That's how our, uh, it's the second to last game of the day uh, here. We'll have both TJ and Dabby Cab will be going four wide for that one. Uh, TJ, thank you for rocking with us. We'll see you shortly, my friend. Yep. I'm going to jump off and sign up for the uh, NHL contest real quick. Oh, I love it. Look at that. I love it. The NHL contest is growing. We move on. 8, 10 p.m. Eastern. The Detroit Tigers, 10 and 9, 6 and 2 on the road at the Minnesota Twins, 6 and 11, 1 and 4 at home. We're at Target Field in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We open with the weather in minnesota it is very cold it's freezing it is 36 fahrenheit at first pitch feels like 27 14.6 mile per hour out it is freezing cold in minnesota kyle hintley in, in the house uh kyle hintley and uh, you had uh, capri's on both sides but there was probably more love for the heat uh, so it was a pretty fascinating breakdown, uh, and BJ's best bet is the Heat money line. Bobano's on the Heat money line, and I'm going to be on the Heat first quarter. And Rod Zawacki also going to be in our playoff pool. I love it, Rod. I love it, man. I love it. Yep. Love it. It's going to be really fun. The more more people in it, the more fun it is. And top 10% get paid. So here we go. Tigers, Twinkies, Target Field, Jack Flaherty, a 4.91 ERA, 1.20 whip. He's looked pretty good at times. He just looks like Flair. Sometimes he looks absolutely elite, and then he looks – he's a funny pitcher. Uh, Joe Ryan here has the 2.60 ERA, 0 0.92 up, 17 in the third, 24 strikeouts, and two walks. I don't have it in front of me here, Jose, but they just faced each other. Is that right? Wait, why do I think uh... that – both these teams, I don't know if they faced each other. They didn't actually, they didn't pitch in the same game, but okay. they faced the teams. Yeah. And that was that their very last start. Yeah. They're both. I have a this blank. A I don't know how I just blew past it. Can you uh, tell us what happened in that last start for each pitcher? Uh, Jack went six and a third, six hits, three earned runs, and a four three victory. Uh, and then Joe, basically the same thing six innings, six hits, three runs, only one of them earned. An 11-5 victory in 12. Um, so, yeah, it, it's been pretty average starts. But I'll tell you, Jimmy, once you get to the market and you see how much this totals drop, you'll laugh. Because I think I think everyone realizes how cold this game is about to be and all the hitters are just going to be frozen. And the pitchers will just be good enough to hit or to, uh, to pitch and stay hot and get them. But this total has just plummeted like a fucking rock. Huh. Well, neither team's hitting righties at all. Twins are the worst in the league, 182, 589. Tigers, 214, 640. And they both have the best bullpens in the league, especially the Tigers. Let's go into this line history here. Joe Ryan. And, oh, sorry. I'm first five still. Damn. Uh, sorry. Let me just move to full game. The uh, Marlins game. Uh, Marlins, Cubbies is off and rolling. So here we go. We have at Pinnacle right now, Minnesota at minus 144. They open up minus 143. There's been very little movement in that regard. From a total side of things here, we have it sitting at a 7. Damn. Open up at an 8. Drop to 7.5. Hmm. Damn. So open up at an 8, down to 7.5, and down to 7. So a big move to the under despite it blowing up. But we know because it's freezing cold in Minnesota. 89% of the tickets, 95% of cash on the under. 18% of tickets and 80% of cash on the Detroit Tigers. Take it away, Jose, your plan for Tiger Swinkies. Yeah, I, you know, I wish I would have seen this at a seven and a half and I probably would have bet the under. Uh, but uh, I think under is probably the move here. Even 
even though, uh, like you mentioned here, the, the cash flow with the under 89% of the bets, 95% of the money on the under, I just think these teams are both bad offensively, too good to decent pitchers. It's super cold. Um, I just think they're just, like I said, the hitters are going to be frozen up there. Um, and then the hit of the pitchers will stay hot, walk around, do whatever. And then this will be an under game. So, um, and, and in a low total under kind of game, like Ron Crawford says in his spreadsheet dog, you just rather be on the dog here, you know, just have a better chance to get that like one or two runs and come away with the victory. And not to mention that obviously, um, that this twins team is like the top dog in the, you know, the division and they want to keep their spot and the tigers are, you know, that nipping at their heels. I think, well, the, I know this is not the first series against each other, but uh, I think that will matters uh, quite a lot. So I pass, I lean tigers. Um, I wish I would have bet this under, but no, I wish I had moved on it earlier. You know, it's funny. I, I, I don't know what, what the hell was wrong with me last night. I don't remember looking at seeing how cold it was. I, Went over the pictures and went over the the odds, but I didn't did not know that. Uh, I wish I had of. I'd be happy to be here on an eight, but I'm not going to take it at a seven. That has to be a seven. Has seven runs have to be a win. It can't be a push. Yeah, like I agree with you. Like I said, if I would have seen it at seven and a half, I would probably would have taken it. But yeah, seven I can't do. Oh, that sucks. So are you moving on the dog? No. Okay. No, I just don't trust Flaherty enough. All right. Let's roll on. If there are any early runs, these bullpens are very good. I would be interested in, in getting in live on the under. Uh, yeah, if they, get scored, like, if they scored a run and make it eight and a half, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it would be perfect. Uh, Collins Clips move on the first three under two and a half. All right. Uh, let's bring back our guy the magic man for our next breakdown please welcome dabby cab back to the show dabby great to see you 8 15 p.m eastern with the milwaukee brewers 11 and 6 72 on the road st louis cardinals 9 and 10 3 and 3 at home we're at bush stadium in st louis missouri so it's freezing in kansas city how cold is it in st louis much much warmer oh sorry that was minnesota of course sorry uh 58 fahrenheit 8.3 miles per hour left to right it dies down to 5.7 not too cold there. Let's get into the uh, Troy Torrance's leadoff double for the Cubs. But why is Pat Wisdom in the lineup, says Troy Torrance. Let's get into the line history for this one. Uh, Peralta sitting, oh, that's Bodog, sorry, minus 122. Uh, Penny, it's sitting at minus 116. Uh, this opened up at minus 126. A massive move to the St. Louis Cardinals. Massive. Maybe not massive, but a, a big move, a surprisingly big move. Now, runners, two runners on for your Chicago Cubs. God, that, that game's going to soar over, and I just sat there like it. Uh, this total sitting at seven and a half. It opened up at eight with a half run move towards the under. And from a cash flow perspective, we have no help on the total, but we know that 90% of the tickets and 91% of the cash is on the Milwaukee Brewers. And Freddie Peralta, why wouldn't it be? He just saw the O's back to back and he shut them down. That last start, six innings, five hits, one earned run, uh, solo shot, 11 Ks, no works. He looks spectacular. 2.55 ERA, 0.68 whip. And yet, and yet the market's moving towards Kyle Gibson. Uh, is it just a mess with us? One and two, 6.16 ERA, 1.21 whip, 11 strikeouts, 19 innings, six walks, five homers. He looks terrible. In his last start, 4-2 loss at Arizona. He did okay. Six innings, six hits, four in runs, one homer, two games, three walks. The Brewers are smashing righties. 283, 15 OPS, while the Cardinals aren't hitting them well. 236, 665. And both bullpens have been very, very good. Uh, Morgan Smith says this is so far off for the pitching matchup. No way Peralta should be at a bettable price here versus Gibson after he's been getting touched like Michael Jackson's neighbor kid. Well, take it away, Dabby Cab. Man. Milwaukee Brewers at St. Louis Cardinals. First thing I wanted to do was jump on the Brewers here, but you know I had a pause just because I thought it. I agree. I thought this should be more like a minus one fifty or something like that, maybe even like minus one sixty. Uh, but you look at you know offense wise, um, you know Milwaukee's coming off a tough series against the Padres. They they weren't able to put up many runs the last game. They only scored one. Um, but even with that, they're averaging five point seven six runs per game. You know that's third in MLB. 
Uh, you touched on how good they've been hitting, you know, uh, 277 as a whole, as a team. That's also third in MLB right there. Um, and not only that, they do better against righties. I mean, they don't have a large sample size against lefties, only 63 at bats against lefties, uh, but they're only hitting 222 against lefties. So really it's just righties that they smash. And this is a Brewers team going back a couple years ago that I talked about. I don't like their play, plate approach, okay? They go up there looking to hit the fucking long ball. Well, they're actually doing it this year. They are they are barreling up the ball. They're 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 hitting home runs this year, um, you know. And Gibson's not somebody you want to have against a team that hits the long ball and hits so well against righties, especially coming off a really tough series where they struggled at the plate. They struggled to score runs. I think this is a spot for the Brewers' offense at least. I'm not going to worry about Peralta. I'm going to cut down my variables here. I think this is a spot for the Brewers' offense to get right. Um, I took their team total over four. And you look at Gibson, um, fourth start of the season, uh, 10.55 ERA, right? He hasn't, he's been terrible. And my biggest thing against him is just the contact that he's given up. It's extremely solid contact. Um, and this is a Brewers team that, like I said, is looking to get right. I think they come to the plate. Um, and I think, you know, he's susceptible to some long balls today. And even with the, with the weather, the way it is, you said it's a little chilly there, like 50 something degrees. That's not, that's not enough to keep me off here. I'll take the Brewers team total over four. You can probably get a three and a half, but it's got a little too much juice for me. So I'll just take that four. And uh, what did you get it at? Cause it's only three, three and a half at pinnacle minus minus one thirty three to the over. What did uh, you I got it. Even money, even money over four. We got razor sharp picks. Dad in the house. Bernie it is great to see you, man. I, God, uh, we have the Triple Crown coming up. I can't wait to be uh, on Razor's channel on the Friday uh, for the Oaks. Uh, great to see you, Bernie. Great guy. Great guy. Uh, just uh, the picture of you hammering Kraken, one of my very favorite pictures in the entire world, in the history of my lifetime, is you smashing Kraken. Uh, Jose, Razor Sharp Picks, Gambler's First Glance is in. Troy, or sorry, Cab on the Brewers team, total over four. And Razor Sharp picks on the Cardinals money line at plus 102. Rod Zawacki, we are told from AOD, also on the St. Louis Cardinals. Wow. I mean... I get it from a market perspective. Can you get there from an X's and O's perspective, Jose? Yeah. No, I'm on it with them. Uh, I'll take the Cardinals full game money line as well here. Uh, it's funny. Razor and I have been uh, in lockstep with his uh, gambler's first glances recently. We're one and one so far. Let's make it two and two and one today, Razor. Full game money line plus 103 for me uh, on the Cardinals here. First of all, obviously weird line, fishy. Um, but I just think Kyle Gibson's a better pitcher than this last two bullshit starts he's given. Six innings, six hits, four and runs. Good, but, you know, not great. Coming off of six innings, seven hits, seven earned runs against the Marlins, and that was their first win of the season, I'm pretty sure. Um, Peralti's pitched well in his first three starts, basically. And, it, Jimmy, we've talked about it many a times. It's hard to string four starts together that are – all excellent here. So I could easily see Freddie hitting a bump in the road. Um, and truthfully, I don't think these teams are all that, you know, like far apart and quality wise. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they were at side by side in division here. So I'll take a home dog here. Uh, Freddie's last starts against the Cardinals last year. For those who want to know three starts, uh, two of them were great. Six innings, one earned run, but sandwiched in between was a five and a third. Six hit, six earn run performance against the Cardinals here. So a lot of familiarity. I think it'll be fun. Uh, but I am on the Cardinals full game. So it's going to be interesting. Wow. This is wild. Cab, what can I? Can I oh, go ahead, yeah. Jimmy. Sorry. Well, I just, I was just going to tell Jose. So we did this with the Tigers game the other day, the, the Tigers and Rangers with the total this low. And I waffled on that Rangers team total with the total this low. If you like the dog, I personally would just bet the three and a half team team total over. That's I mean, it just makes more of a sense. And even in that Tigers game, you know, they would have cashed that three and a half, even though the Rangers won. And so what do you think when you see 91% of the tickets in cash on a side and the market moving to the opposite side? 
I mean, what? I mean, is that why you're not on the Brewers money line? Yeah, I mean, and I thought that the line was funny before we saw the ticket count and before we like. I I thought it was funny when I initially saw it, so I stayed off initially. It wasn't even the the movement that kept me off. It was the initial the initial look and the initial number. What up, man? You gonna say hi, big guy? <laughs> I was like, who the hell is the cab talking to right now? And then I see Carter, who has hair. Yes, he does. And yes, the wife is going to pick up Ella so we can stay here in cap. So Carter's going to be chilling with us. So Carter, hell yeah. yeah. Keep the volume down if you can. And uh, Carter, bet the Cardinals over today. This is an ab- absolutely you wild. You get it. This, this is absolutely wild here. Um, you know, it ma- just makes no sense because you could also say that Freddie Peralta has never pitched better. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not- looked phenomenal. He's the ace of the staff, I'm sure. Uh, he took that like uh, very personally, Jimmy. You know, he's always been the number three uh, coming into this staff, and and now they, Woodruff's not there. Burns obviously not there. I'm sure he took that very personally and came out of the season very hot there as well. Something we probably should have seen coming. Wow. Um, okay, I've got to I've got to set uh, Carter up here for a second. So we got uh, the, the next game, eight forty p.m. Seattle Mariners at Colorado Rockies, where Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. Shout out to Arthur Mead Jr. Thank you so much. Five dollar dono from our guy Arthur Mead Jr. and AOD and now a member for seventeen months. Thank you guys so much for your support. And Arthur, you are uh, just an OG low bagger. It means a ton to us. We have the Mariners nine and ten, two and four on the road. The Colorado Rockies four and fifteen, two and four at home. at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. Let's get to work and pull up the weather first in Colorado. We have thirty nine Fahrenheit, freezing cold, eight point nine miles per hour in. Stays between eight and eight point nine miles per hour. Get into the line history here for this one, uh, Cab. Why don't you? Uh, I know you don't have this spot. Did you want to take a? Do you want to roll with us here? Sorry, my bad. Do you want to roll with us? Because you are two games away from the big game with you and TJ. I'm always good, man. If you need somebody else's opinion, I'm here. If not, I'll, I'll light this joint for a second and be back. Either way is good with me. Okay, yeah, stick around. Let us know if, you want, if you're moving on anything here. Emerson Hancock versus Dakota Hudson. Uh, Hancock looked very good in his last start, uh, which is his first nice performance of the year. Let's get up his um, uh, old uh, Hancock get his up here so uh emerson was the sixth overall pick in the 2020 draft out of uh, georgia uh, university of georgia and a very highly thought of pitcher uh this year he's thrown 14 and two-thirds and that was his first really strong start he threw three starts uh, last year and you know didn't look that good uh this year in spring training he got touched up as well you go back to Last year, he went from high A to, excuse me, last year he was all in double A before he went to the majors. And he was, spec- well, he was really strong at times. You know, 107 strikeouts in 98 innings, uh, 38 walks, allowed nine jacks, 4.32 ERA, 1.23 uh, whip uh, for him in in double A. So this sixth overall pick in the 2020 draft here going up against Dakota Hudson, 0 and 3, 4.15 ERA, 1.27 whip. Uh, last start, six innings, five earned runs, one homer, five case relocks, five three loss to Jays. He looked bad. He looked vulnerable at all times against the Jays, who have a weak lineup. Mariners versus righties, 212, 640 OPS. Rockies versus righties, 252, 723 OPS. And the Mariners' bullpen has been very strong, but it's not easy pitching in Coors Field. It will be easier with these uh, low temperatures. This total is at 10 and a half juice to the under. It opened up at 11. Uh, that 11 was juice to the over because Bet Online opened it up at 11 and a half. And now we are at 10 and a half. When we get to the uh, money line moves here in this one, we have Hancock and the Mariners at minus 134. They opened up at minus 131. So three cents of movement towards them. And when we get to the cash flow, then for this spot, we have. Sorry, one second. Here we have 47% of tickets, 69% of cash on the Colorado Rockies. Well, that explains the lack of movement. 74% of tickets and 96% of cash on the under. Jose, take it away, and I will be right back. I got to set Jose up. Uh, TJ says this is uh, he's on the under based mostly on the cold. Uh, take it away for us, Jose. I'll be right back. Mariners at Colorado. 
Good luck, Jimmy. Yeah, I uh, I'm interested in the Rockies here. Honestly, it's Emerson Hurt Hamcock's first start in Coors, and and typically I want to fade someone making their day their first start in Coors, but. Again, you have to bet the Rockies, which is always kind of scary. Uh, this line opened up at minus 125, uh, now up to minus 120 uh, for the Rockies there. It opened up minus, plus 115 for the Rockies, so not much movement on it. But I'll tell you, whoever said they like the under, 74% of the bets and 96% of the tickets on the under in this game. So a lot of people like the under in this game. Uh, this opened up at an 11 and a half. And it's all the way down to 10 and a half. So at least it's moved down. The cold definitely going to be effective in this game. Uh, I probably don't want anything to do with it personally. Uh, David, do you have any thoughts? 96% of the money on a under at a in, in Coors Field is a, is a crazy thing that I don't think I've heard. Look, I get it. It's a good spot for the Rockies, I guess you can say, to bounce back. What, five losses in a row for them? Uh, they're coming back home here. I mean, I, what's my rule, Jose? What do I not bet on, though? And I don't don't give me the market; it'll tell you when to do it. Type shit. What do I not bet on? You do not bet on shit. I don't bet on shit. Baseball teams. I don't. I don't care if we think this is the time when they're they've lost five in a row for a reason. They're terrible. I, I get it. The the numbers low. It seems like a good chance to take the Rockies. And if you gave me a free bet, I would take the Rockies. Sure, but with my money, fuck that. I'm not betting this. I. I wonder, uh, TJ, can you let us know in the chat, did you get, what number did you take the under at? Did you get an 11? Because I agree, this, um, I agree, this says underwritten all over it because the Mariners aren't going to come in here and smash, they've been playing indoors, in a, you know, uh, they're not going to come in here and smash anything, I don't think. And Emerson and Hancock is better than his numbers indicate. He got the 11, oh, minus 125 though. Uh yeah, I'm gonna be on the full game under in this spot. Full game under. Do I wish it? Do do we, Jose? Do you believe that this line has moved far enough towards the under? Uh, Ten thousand eight hundred eighty-five tickets. I don't know how many are on the total. Do you feel like it's gone far enough to warrant uh, some well, concern from the books? Well, Jimmy, you have. What did you have this opening up at? Because uh, Bet Online opened this up at eleven and a half. What was the juice? Uh, it opened up at minus one ten each way. And then 30 minutes later, it got juiced to the under, minus 128. And then uh, a couple hours after that, it officially moved to the 11. And then it's just been going down since then. Huh. So do you believe this is just... Um... No, I, I like the under spot. I, I consider taking it with you. The issue is, like, you know, we can rationalize or kind of think about in our heads, like uh, that spot earlier spot from eight and a half uh, it went down to like seven or whatever it was. We can like kind of make that in our heads and, and think about it. But from the 11 and a half to 10 and a half, it doesn't feel like such a big movement. Uh, but that might be just my ignorance uh, in Coors Fields game. So I lean under here with you and I might end up moving with you. I expect to. Let's move on to 9.40 p.m. Eastern. This is the game before we'll have both Dabby Cab and TJ's best bets. 9.40 p.m. Eastern. Toronto Blue Jays 10 and 9, 4 and 6 on the road. San Diego Padres 11, 10, 5 and 6 on the road. Petco Park in San Diego, California. Let's get into the weather here in San Diego. 62 Fahrenheit, uh, 7.5 miles per hour, left to right, slightly in. Dice down to 5.9 miles per hour. Uh, we're pretty excited up here about the Ariel Rodriguez. Uh, there's a lot of hope, uh, especially after that last start problem is he throws about 93 we're not going to get harder than that we're trying to uh, improve his velocity but we everybody was extremely pleased off of his last start this total opened up at eight and a half minus 112 to the over you know it's now and it dropped down to eight for a while and now it's eight and a half juice to the under from a money line perspective here we have uh Rodriguez and the Jays sitting at minus 105. They opened up at plus 104. So the Jays have gone from dog to favorite in an appealing situation. Then we have 70% of the tickets and 86% of the cash on the Padres. 67% of cash on the under. I mean, there's no question in my mind 
Uh, I love it, Kong. And I've, I've got your bets RBI uh, copied and pasted for our next spot. DC Capper on the Padres minus 113. And, and DC Capper has shown no fear when these market moves have gone against him. And he was heavy on the Giants yesterday. And that came to fruition. For me, there's no question who has the better pitcher on the mound. And his name's not Matt Waldron to me. Uh, also, nobody's seen Yariel Rodriguez. You know, nobody saw him last year. He's Cuban. It was tricky to get him over here. Uh, so I don't, I think that really benefits the Blue Jays right now. Razor Sharp picks on the Toronto Blue Jays and minus 105, a 1777 memorabilia as well. Jarek White, a smoking tree. Also, the Jays' bullpen is not as bad as it's looked. Uh, now, they've looked awful, bottom five, but they're not going to be a bottom five bullpen. So I don't think I don't think you need to focus on first fives with them. Now, if you are so afraid of the Padres' bats that you want to cut it down to five, that's something different. Uh, I get that. Uh, Padres versus righties, 270, 749. We know what they do to lefties. If Tim Mesa comes out... Uh, I'm going to smash my teeth. I'm going to lose my shit. I just, uh, he's just so, so terrible. And the Padres bullpen is not that good. So take it away, Jose. I don't like going up against DZ Capper, but in top set on the Padres first five fading Yariel here, again, nobody knows what they're going to get from Yariel. And he's got a lot of movement. Take it away, Jose. Blue Jays Padres. I'm on it with you, Jim. First five full game Toronto Blue Jays here. Um, again, dog to favorite flip spot on top of that dog to favorite split spot. Uh, 70% of the bets and 86% of the money on the Padres. On top of that, I don't bet knuckleballers. I don't think, uh, respectfully, there's no chance that Matt Waldron turns into R.A. Dickey or uh, Tim Wakefield this year. So I'll just keep fading them. I'm on the Blue Jays here. First five full game. First five minus 115. Full game minus 107. Um, let's go, Jays. You know, I agree. I agree. With this. What was the sorry? Uh, uh, very quickly here, Ron. Uh, I I actually had the exact same problem just because I'm I'm just so bad with uh, any kind of technology. But but then if then I I cut out and I just went back to popsportsradio.com because it's just on the bottom of that front page. So yep. you you know you signed in all that stuff, but then get out and then just it's on the the front bottom of the very. You know, pubsocradio.com, there'll be our video playing right now. And if you go underneath it, it'll have the ticket to buy in. Yeah, and make sure you're logged in as always, yeah. Uh, see, this is an interesting thing. It says, uh, may regret it, but nerves are nerves. These Cubans, they don't have nerves. They're I thought not... you were talking about Top Set being the Cuban with no nerves. No, no, I'm talking about Yariel. This guy's not scared of anything. None of the Cubans are scared of anything. They got out of Cuba. Yeah, dog. You, you think they, they give a fuck about... Just a casual Friday afternoon baseball game. They had to fucking go through the fucking Cuban and like Florida Peninsula with all those fucking waves on a fucking raggedy ass boat. They don't give a fuck. They don't get. Uh, they don't get. They're, 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 these guys are. I, I. I. No concern. Watch it, and this is gonna be sold out at Peco Yariel's. This is. Is this what he was born to do? Yeah, I've, been, I, I've switched my focus recently. I haven't bet the Yankees in a little bit now. I've been Blue Jays for the last few days, and it's been quite funny. Uh, I, I I think this makes a ton of sense. I want to fade Waldron. Now, he's coming off a nice start at the Dodgers. You know, uh, maybe I'm being a little hard on Waldron. Uh, what do you think of this spot, Debbie? I'm not a big fan of knuckleballers, like Jose said, or be betting them, just because just it's such – it's it's – well, it's nothing like a split finger, but it's like one of those pitches where it's like if it's on, I mean, he could go through any lineup at any time, but if it's off, he could give up 12 runs in two innings. Like it's just a knuckleballer is a hard thing to judge. Um, one thing I will say, he has had back to back decent starts, but it was working for him. This is kind of an unpopular opinion here on this game, but I think I'd lean towards the over. Um, I know there's more money on the on the under here, and I, I do think Rodriguez could have a good game, but I don't know. I just think we see runs here. It just kind of has that that aura to it here. Rodriguez is not going to be in for long. I mean, if he, if he gets to five innings, we're, you know, we're going to go to the bullpen. Um, and at least it's a day rest, fully rested bullpen as well. So like you said, we'll get our boy Yimmy 
aka Jimmy. Uh, we'll get Romano and uh, hopefully not Swanson and not Tim Mason. Swanson's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. He hadn't, was, not in the ninth inning. Just it was throw the seventh part inning. Of the year. They put him in. It's, it's, it's Schneider. It's Schneider who needs to be slapped in the face. <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, Swanson. Swanson will be fine. Uh, I'm interested. I'm interested here. And I do have some interest in the under because if I think Rodriguez will be fine, if I know our bullpen's ready to go, then, the, you know, our offense is horrific. The Blue Jays' offense is so bad. It's so weak. Uh, now, if you can get through Springer, you know, the opening of the lineup, you know, whether it be Springer, Bouchette, Vladdy, Turner, there's nothing after it. So um, I'm interested in getting involved. I'm interested in getting involved. I would like not to have three bets on this. So Jose's on the Blue Jays' first five and full game. Uh, I'm interested in also being on the under, but then cabs and cab your uh, feel for your kind of lean towards the over was based on uh, Waldron, you know, being somewhat vulnerable as a knuckleballer and Yariel just pitching average. Yeah. Him having a third Waldron, the idea of Waldron having a third game in the row in a row, like he's had, I just, you know, especially, I don't want to say that, that the Jays aren't intimidating and he's at home, but coming off of uh pitching like that against the Dodgers. It just feels like a spot where he could let down a little bit. Um, and if he lets down a little bit, you know, the Padres are the number one team in baseball and scoring runs. So I just think eight and a half is a, is a number that I would, I would consider going over. Very, very, very interesting spot. All right. Uh, I'm going to, I'm getting involved in the Jays and I'm going to get involved in under. I, I'm not entirely sure. I do not want to have triple up on the spot. That's just, but I'm very interested in getting involved. Let's bring on our guy, TJ. We have a four-headed monster here for our next game. The New York Mets, the Los Angeles Dodgers here. Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. And Sean Manaya has somehow found another home. And unfortunately for Mets fans, it's... Uh, with the New York Mets. Uh, Manai opening up at plus 177. He's now plus 175. Very, very small move there. I've got Smoke and Trees max bet. I've got Kong's Clips action. We're going to talk about all of this here. From a a total side of things, this is sitting at 8.5 minus 111 to the under. So there's been a 5-cent move to the over. There's been a 2-cent move towards the New York Mets. There's not been much movement on this line. Although... Uh, the sharp action seems to be all over the New York Mets, 20% of the tickets, 91% of the cash, and all over that over of uh, 50 50 on the tickets, but 83% cash on the over. So, Kong's clips RBI of the day is Mookie Betts 10 for 29, eight RBIs, three homers, two triples, two doubles against Minaya. Also, took him for two or more bases. Smoking Trees Max play is the Dodgers' first five minus a half. We have best bets from both Cab and DJ or TJ here. Sorry. So, Minaya's last start, 11-7, loss at home versus Rose. He got lit up and smoked. And now he's going up against Yoshinobu Yamamoto, 4.50 ERA, 1.06 whip, 21 K, 16 innings. He fits in. He didn't look great in that 8-7 loss at home to the Padres. Five innings, three in runs, two jacks, six Ks, one walk. But Mets don't hit righties, 227, 667. And the Dodgers uh, are hitting lefties well, not with a ton of power, but well, 272, 746 OPS. The Mets have the bullpen to pull Minaya very easily. Here they have a strong bullpen. Dodgers bullpen is being uh, average. Billy Friedrich looking at the first five over in this one. TJ, here we go. Best bet for you. Best bet number three. Take it away. Yeah, you mentioned the Dodgers against lefties. Um, I'm just looking at the last week, last two weeks. I think we're far enough along. We can I can start breaking it down a little bit that way. And they've slowed off. They're 81 weighted runs created plus, sitting 22nd in baseball. So kind of well be at below average of late. Yeah, that's only 150 at bats, but um, the plate appearances. I'm going to give Yamamoto, I think everybody should, a break on his first start. You know, that was a very high pressure situation um, overseas, you know, with a lot of his fans there. Um, in those games since, though, he's only allowed three runs in three games, 19 strikeouts, 15 innings. Um, you know, and then on the other side, the Mets, while they do hit lefties, or sorry, do hit righties a little bit, and they're starting to more, they, they don't hit for power. They have low ISO. Um, I'm not really worried about, you know, a three-run jack um, coming early in the game. 
Uh, Manaya, you know, for a long time, he really struggled with LA, but in his last three starts with him, he's got a 0 0.7 whip, a 3 1 ERA, and no homers allowed. Obviously, he's seen them a lot being down there in San Diego. Um, he started off hot. I don't think he's going to continue that for the whole season, but um, I'm confident enough he can hold the Dodgers down here early. And I got first five under four and a half, uh, minus 105. First five under four, TJ. First five under four and a half. And that's a little bit against the market. It's start. It's moving up a little bit, but. Well, let's hear what Dabby Cab has to say. Bet best bet time, Dabber Cadaver. What's your move? Yeah, this is uh, probably my favorite bet of my three bets today. Um, and I tell you what, Manaya has pitched a little bit better because uh, I'm looking at bets in particularly. He's zero uh, and five. His last five at bets. Uh, God, that's hard to. Too many words that sound the same. He's 0 and 5, his last five at bats off Manaya, but he's got 26 appearances. Uh, Mookie Betts first Manaya here, two doubles, uh, two triples, three home runs, eight RBIs, and he's hitting 385. Um, and I think this is a spot where he's going to get me the one and a half bases. It's at even money, seems a little bit fishy on the line, but no chance I'm not taking it. I got Mookie Betts over one and a half bases at even money, and I absolutely fucking love it. Mookie over one and a half bases at even money. Mikey Money says teams uh, longer than plus 155 are one and 31 straight up and six and 26 on the run line if their starter won the previous meeting or lost by one run. Dodgers minus two and a half at plus 168. He says the margin shows a four run beating. Very, very interesting. Everyone talk about Tyon rolling here. A DC capper on that under eight in the Detroit game, Milwaukee and Atlanta minus one and a half. Jose Bouquet, New York Mets, Los Angeles Dodgers. And for those of you watching right now, don't forget, next game is our final game and it's horse racing time. I say we go back to the Greyhounds today. Jose, take it away. Mets, Dodgers. Yeah, no action for me to keep it uh, short and simple here. I, I didn't want anything to do with either squad, but uh, respect to the Mets who have been playing well. But no action for me, keeping it short and slow. And so... The, the your concern, I imagine, as you see all these huge bets coming in on the the Mets, who could possibly want to bet the Mets in this situation? You don't want to back Manaya in the Mets, so you stay off. Yeah, I if I was going to back them, I'd be like looking at a team total because those bets make it seem like Yamamoto struggles here. Um, let's look at the over uh, the total market here, real quick, one more time 50 50 cash flow and 83 percent of the bets on the over in that game. Um, and it has moved from eight and a half. Oh, actually, it didn't move at all. Uh, eight and a half minus 120. It went up to uh, eight and a half under minus 115 for one point, but it stayed around the minus 120. So, yeah, I'd, I'd probably lean Mets, and I don't even, the market doesn't even agree with me on a taking a team total here. Um, but it's interesting. You know, you think that first time around through the majors, you'd think that Yamamoto would pitch really well, but. We'll see if he does it here again. We'll see it. I'm I find that first five under a fascinating look. So if you like the first five under four and a half, TJ, you must think that Manai is going to be okay through this Dodgers lineup. Yeah, I, I don't want him to see the lineup the third time. Um, but you know, I think if he can get through it twice, five innings. Yeah. But that's why I'm not on the full game under. I, I just want to isolate these two pitchers. I think Yamamoto can shove here. Um, so, so yeah, you know, something like two to one after five makes a lot of sense. Wow. Wow. What a wildly interesting breakdown. I'm going to need to sit with this TJ first five under four and a half at minus one Oh two here in this one, his next spot on the board is the Royals first five at plus one fifteen, and then he doubles up the gift A's first five plus a half, and the A's first five plus one forty is TJ's action. Dabby Cab is on Marcel Ozuna over one and a half bases at minus one fourteen. He is on. Sorry, here we go. Uh, Cab's on Mookie Betts over one and a half bases at plus one hundred. Where's the one I missed here? Oh, Cabs on the Brewers. A team total over four at plus 100. Smoking Tree says Manaya is getting destroyed early and swift. Yeah, I mean, I can understand that thought process. It's just 
I mean, even when this moved up to minus 116 on the over four and a half, it came back to minus 112. So we got TJ that minus 102. You have 83% of the cash on the over. Yeah, it's not really moving. It's very, very interesting. I can understand why you'd think that Manaya would get destroyed. We just watched him get destroyed. And the Dodgers hit lefties hard. A fascinating spot. Smoking tree, max bets on the Dodgers' first five minus a half. Uh, Dabby Cab, TJ, you add so much to the show and so much to our community. Thank you guys so much for making time for us. And thank you for your patience as we went really long in NHL and NBA. Uh, but thank you guys, both of you. Uh, Dabby Cab, follow him on X at Dabby Cab. And Dabby, is there going to be a special 420 show tomorrow? There will be. So we'll be live for the uh, the playoff games. We got, you know, NBA, we got NHL, we got uh, MLB, obviously. We're going to be live for all of it. I think Jose might join us, hopefully, because it'll be right after Say Hey. Uh, but I know Mikey Money is going to be up there with me. Uh, Dutch is going to hop up there before he goes to work. It'll be a good time, man. We're going to make money, and we're going to smoke a lot of fat bats, man. I got some. I got some goodies set aside for tomorrow. So hopefully you guys can show up with us. I love it. I love it. So big, big 420 show here with Dabby Cab. TJ, my man, I'm telling everybody you're going to see a lot more of TJ here on the channel, capping MLB with us. Excellent, excellent work. I'm excited for you to be here weekly so we can track you so everyone can understand just how good you are at this. Uh, so thank you for making time for us, uh, TJ, my guy. Any last words for the Capper Support in the show? Let's go Rangers. Take Have a good day. Ooh. New York Rangers is TJ's team. Uh, please follow uh, TJ on Twitter. Let's see if I can get TJ to to, to switch his handle. Probably, that'll be one of my projects here. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, let me just pop it in here for you guys. It is TJ uh, TTJB32. Yeah, not as memorable as I'd like, but I'm gonna pop it in the chat for you guys. Uh, our guy TJ. Home growing talent at its finest with our guy, uh, TJ. All right, let's move on to our final game on the board. Jose, uh, we rolled this shit up, lit it up, and smoked it. 10.15 p.m. Eastern, Diamondbacks, Giants. I mean, I only, uh, I only had them first half, and I probably should have more on it. But, you know, it's early in the season. I'm not in the black right now, so it's hard to have a ton of confidence. Oracle Park in San Francisco, California. We have the... Uh, Jose, especially, highly anticipated season debut for Jordan Montgomery. It's 53 Fahrenheit in San Francisco, 10.5 miles per hour to center. It dies down to 8.1 miles per hour. Then we're going to move on to the line history here for our final game on the board. I got five or first five up. So first five for you guys thinking about it. This total is at four, uh, minus 114 to the under. Uh, it opened up at four and a half, minus 120 to the under. It only lasted there for 21 minutes. Let's go to the full game in here for this one from a full game perspective. This one is sitting at seven and a half minus one twenty one to the under. Uh, this touched seven. This was at seven for not for very long, you know, for about five minutes. But it opened up at eight as a pick 'em. So there's been a real, and it's minus one twenty one to the under. So it's a big move towards the under. You know, we're watching Tyon shove in his first appearance of the year. What is Montgomery going to do? From a money line standpoint here, we are sitting with the Giants and Blake Snell at minus 126. Uh, that's right where he opened, so there's been no movement there. Mikey Money says San Francisco 7-0 to the under, under 12 when pitchers lost consecutive starts. G. Martinez says is Snell going to turn it around today? From a cash flow standpoint, we have 90% of the tickets and 78% of cash on the over. Oh, wow. 69% of the tickets, 75% of the cash on the Arizona Diamondbacks because everybody thinks Blake Snell is trash. Cy Young Award winner is trash. Now, there's more problems than that. The Diamondbacks destroy lefties, 307, 834 OPS. Giants are hitting lefties hard, 266, 720 OPS. Both bullpens have been bad. As Rant says, Snell doesn't go long, leaning Diamondbacks. Troy Torrance says, my ROI in Giants games is minus 100%. Point says 90 to 78 splits on San Francisco over. How do you not go under here with Montgomery and Snell? Uh, TJ says, why are the Diamondbacks dogs? 1777 says Snell no spring training. You know, we know that he's a late sign, but now he's probably getting ready to roll. Take it away. Jose Bouquet, Diamondbacks Giants. Yeah, I don't know what to expect in the Scott Boris Bowl here. 
Um, Montgomery's first start. And he's fired him already, right? Montgomery's fired the board. Yeah, no, cut his ass. You fucking fuck. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't know what to expect here uh, from either one of these guys. You know, Montgomery had a little bit of time to, to get there, but the Diamondbacks definitely needed him to get like Tommy Henry out of the, out of rotation. Um, his two starts, three and two thirds, nine hits, seven earned runs on two home runs. Uh, last time out, and then four innings, three hits, two earned runs for Montgomery. Um, yeah, I think Snell bounces back. Uh, I thought it was a bad start for him last time out at Tampa Bay, especially because Tampa Bay probably knows him the most and the longest out of any of the organizations. Um, I just don't want to go back, back him here against the Diamondbacks who crush lefties. So no action here for me as well. Uh, Coin saying first start for Snell in front of San Francisco fans. He should deal here. Uh, again, this line is not moved okay. at all on the money line, but everybody has this uh, recency bias that Snell sucks. You have 75% of the cash on the Diamondbacks. This line's not moving. It's, you know, 78%. I mean, it feels like both pitchers are going to deal here. Uh, you know, I guess I got to. I'm surprised that you're not interested in backing Blake Snell here. It is simply because of the splits for the Diamondbacks. Yeah, and I'm a little wary of Blake Snell too. I don't like the guys that had the late starts to their seasons. You know, I just I don't feel great about that. You know, Snell still 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 ramping up. You know, I think uh, I assume this is his third starts, Jimmy. Uh, yes. So I wanted to look when Musgrove had his good outing, his his third start as well. So yeah, you know I can see it, I can see it, but I just don't want to back guys that didn't have you know spring trainings. I don't know what to expect from Montgomery. The Giants' offense isn't you know amazing against lefties. Is it's average 102 weighted runs created plus right now. Uh, but yeah, I and you know TJ saying uh, Snell over K prop. You know, shout to the spin doc. I know he he always says that it's the Blake Snell experience when you bet on him. You don't know what you're gonna get. Anything that could happen will happen. Um, but I saw him and, and Sharpie, I believe, both liked liked it last time. So shout out to them, but I'm nothing no nothing for me. I have a lot of action here today. I thought I was gonna have like three bets and ended up looking down. I was like, why do I have seven bets now? What the hell? Wow, I, I um I wouldn't be surprised if Montgomery looks good. This is probably a perfect ballpark for him. And then I think Snell bounces back like Mike Money says. So I think that the that the first five under is in play. The problem is, is that you're coming up with this plan at 3.08 p.m. on the day of the game is not how you make money in, in totals. Uh, move to the first five here quickly. Uh, I just want to see what market moves happen here. The opened up at four and a half minus one twenty to the under, but that was there for twenty minutes, and now we have a juiced under four. Yeah, I um, that'd make me more interested in it. I'm gonna bet it. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet it. I I think it's a mistake to to count Snell out. Uh, you know, yeah, the Diamondbacks smash lefties, but now they're in the pitcher's ballpark. And it's, what what's the weather? It's going to be cold tonight, right? And not really fifty three, but not warm. Yeah, you know I challenge these guys. Uh, Ron, Ron Crawford saying no. Yeah, five yeah, and one versus Arizona. Uh, first five under, and and then I wonder if I wonder if I should back Snell first five or go that far. Comes. Yeah, I I, uh, I like I said I lean that way, but. I'm, I feel like I'm leaning that way just based off Montgomery not pitching any and Blake Snell being on his third start. So, but shout out to the people that bet the Cubs there. Looks like five zero money, now. I guess. Five zero Cubs. Good. As long as it goes over, I told one of my friends. He asked me, if "Cubs or money line of the over?" I told him the over. So, hope it does go over. Well, I think this is the right time to live bet the under because we know that. Uh, we know that Tyon's dealing. You get Puck out of there. Um, sorry, just give me a second just to go over a couple things here. Uh, get Puck out of there. And 
but both bullpens are trash. Uh, this is just – it's. what are they going to give us? Oh, wait. Did he just go yard? Jesus Christ. Off the wall. Ah. 6-0. Good. 7-0. Good. They're over. 7-0 and two out. Who's – all right, I'm gonna look the live, but I'm gonna wait a second and see what this is up at. But this game becomes sleepy the rest of the rest of the way, don't you think? Hopefully. But yeah, I I I'm I'm at with everyone. I'm with you guys now at this point. AJ Puck might just need to go back to being their closer. Just be done with it at this point. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna. I guess I guess I need him out of any. I just I can't understand. I gotta wait till Puck's out, I guess. So as soon as, as soon as they're not, as soon as they don't have a lefty on the mound, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna live bet this under. So we'll be able to talk this out uh, through this uh, horse race here. Why are they? Are they just giving up? Like are they not even trying? God, I can't believe we, this was. This should have been a gift opportunity here for us tonight. Wow. I've been trying to make mental notes, uh, Troy, specifically about those public spots where the line is, is just moving towards them a ton and them cashing like the Yankees the other day with Luis Severino and the Pirates game. All the money was on him. I thought about laying all the juice there and just rolling with it. But, yeah, so I, I like that as well. And uh, for, for TJ, he's asking about the gold member races. Oh, my gosh, TJ. How behind are you, TJ? If we have uh, we have two membership tiers. Shout out to everyone that's in the Weeby Pub and tier, the gold tier, nine ninety nine a month. You get entered in two races a week, whether it be horses, dogs, camels, you name it. Uh, we race them. Fifty dollars to the winner. Bunch of uh, other stuff going on in the gold member tier. Discounts to the store. It's a great time. I thought I thought we get a thirteen and a half. What you getting? Hmm. 12 and a half. Hmm. Okay. I'm, I, I'm not going to do that right this second. I'm going to sit with it. Uh, the wind is blowing up. All right. It is horse race time. And we will be also uh, going over all of the action in the chat. Uh, Jose, that is all gold members here in one heat, my friend. Yeah. 64 members. And I'll give, I'll give TJ some time here to... Sign up oh, for his gold membership. And so can you can, add? Can you add thirty yeah. seconds? Actually, uh, yeah. Can you add at least thirty? I would. How about a two minute race to finish this one off? Let's go sure. two minutes. Two minute race to finish this one off. Oh, Phil the Kill says that thirteen and a half was up for a split second. Not here in my book. I, I imagine it's the right bet, but it is still blowing out. I don't need to force it. I'm on just the dumbest run live, uh, I've ever been. I mean, like, I, I don't mean to, like, fucking, you know, sit here and brag, but uh, Cisco last 48. Suck your own dick a little bit. Oh, no, I don't, no, I don't even want to talk. <laughs> no, I don't even want to talk. Uh, yet, sorry, what? Oh, last 48 hours. I got the last 24 hours. Here we go. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, Angels plus two and a half cashed the under two fifty three and a half in the Hawks game. So there's two straight. I got to do a date range though. Uh, whatever, fuck it. It's a. I think I'm about, and I'm not. I think I'm seventeen for my last eighteen. I know how crazy that sounds. And I think I if, if here, let me prove it. Let me just go back last five days from before that. Uh, Panthers plus one thirty five on the sixteenth. That was on Tuesday. Cashed Red Wings plus one sixty five. That was on Tuesday. Cashed. The under 236 and a half. I don't even know what that game is. Uh, that was uh, a Lakers Pelicans uh, that cashed. So there's what? That's five straight. Uh, Hurricanes money line. That was five days ago cashed. So that's six straight. And then if I go further date range, let's go. Uh, so let's do like from April 1st. April 1st. So we've given you those six straight cashers. Oh, there's a loss. The under eight and a half. Under eight and a half in the Red Wings Penguins live. That was stupid. So there's so six for seven there. Uh, Nuggets minus two and a half on the 10th cashed. 
Uh, Brooklyn Nets minus 165 on the money line and minus three and a half. Uh, they both cashed. That was against the Raptors. Yankees plus three cashed. Jazz plus 20, uh, plus 22 and a half. Jazz plus 22 and a half. That was the Nuggets Jazz that cashed. That was after the first quarter. Uh, so uh, then uh, uh, Pacers minus four and a half cashed. The under 149 and a half. What was that game? That was uh, Purdue, Connecticut. That cashed. How many is that? This was like 12 for 13 at that point. And then um, Angels plus three and a half. That's 13. Uh, Hurricanes plus 165. That was on the 5th of April cashed. Clippers plus 10 and a half cashed. Right there, that's 15 of 16. Um, but I won't keep doing it, but it's the best run of my entire life. Okay, don't forget, we also have the Moonlight Trist, Santa Anita Race 4. Moonlight Trist is the Guillermo Zeratucci Santa Anita pick of the day. So don't forget that. I will be betting that here shortly. Uh, and we have Greyhound Race Time. Welcome, TJ, now a gold member of Pub Sports Radio. We have 50 bucks on uh, the line. We will review all action, and thank you guys here in a second. But let's get to the cash flow. Jose, you call the first minute, my friend, and I will finish it off. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support of Pub Sports Radio. Uh, we love this. I absolutely love this. And there's TJ, number one. He's uh, the on the inside lane, right beside the nuke worker there. How many uh, racers do we have here, Jose? You're muted, my man. 65 racers on the track here today. We appreciate it. And as oh, we learn that public Trist is being scratched. Damn it. No. Thank you, Billy. Uh, thank you for letting us know. Thank you for letting us know. Tragic. All right. Uh, take it away, Jose, my friend. Yes. Uh, shout out to the 65 gold members. We appreciate you guys, all of you that make this channel go. Let's. Start race. We're off and racing here in San Antonio. Beautiful Greyhounds here. And who is our guy that Ray rehomed these beautiful Greyhounds? Ron Walsack. Our guy, Ronnie Walsack. Shout out to Ronnie Walsack. I'd rehome all these dogs. Chosen one, Director 97, whose dominance on the track does not does not stop at horses. It might be in dogs here as well. And remember, as we learned in Pub Palooza, Rubin is racing here. Saturated dog just pounces to the front. Director 97's hound is just... Oh, there it goes. I was going to say this. But there he falls back. There he goes. Rico Lopez, LJ from H-Town, Iron Eagle in here. Kelsey in the mix. Top set in here talking about Cubans. Oh, boy, this is going to be a fun, fun race. A minute left here, LJ from H-Town. And the league. Oh, look, Jose Bouquet makes an appearance oh, here. Shouldn't have said it. Take shouldn't it away. Said it. Shouldn't uh, have said it. There's C-Mac on the outside moving forwardly. Cheshire Cat also making a big move. Big T in business. Lexicon moving to the front. Top set moving strong here. But Gerald Jones and C-Mac moving to the front. Lexicon is, oh, but then they're falling back. And Johnny Guns, look at that white dog with smoke and mirrors. Uh, and falling back. Saturated making it. Here comes Old E. Old E making a move to the front with 33 seconds on oh, backtracking. Randall said, there's Nasty Nate. Can Nasty Nate break the seal? Oh, sadly, he can't. Randall oh. Sheffield moving to the front. There's Nut Flush Allen and Crystal Craig. I'd love to see Crystal Craig get paid in full. Chris Boggan on the outside. Nasty Nate. Nut Flush Allen trying to find the wire. 13 seconds left in this horse race. And Nut Flush. But here comes Joe T. Joe T with late pace. And Ricky Bobby. Oh, oh boy. Oh. No, Ricky's not going to do it. Joe T to the wire. And your winner is Joseph Thompson. Wow. Joseph. I feel like says, that's like three dog? for him. He says, where's my dog? Wow. Where's my dog, Joseph? The fucking front, my man. What the hell? $50. Oh. Richer is Joe T. Please email pubsportsradio at gmail.com. Chosen one coming in second. K-Wolf right there in third. Smoke and Mirrors. LJ from H-Town, fourth and fifth. Jimmy the Bag made an appearance all late. Dutch Boy Fresh there as well. Uh, why don't we see who was last place? As this continues to grow... Uh, we are just trying to get more cash up for us uh, for these awards, and maybe there'll be something for last place. 15th. That was 15th. I thought it looked a little closer than that, but lot, oh Fat Wally was up there second. as well. Nasty uh, Nate at 34th. Better no, luck next yeah. time, Nate. And 47th. 
BT Crystal Craig in last. Jay, Jay oh Peasy. no, Jay Peasy Jay bringing up the rear, Peasy. but uh, at least he will be the say hey guest tomorrow and say hey plays with that's Daddy's exciting. Cap. I love it. That we need sense. more Jay Peasy on this channel. We need more JPZ on this channel. Let's do a review of all action here. Uh, Razor Sharp Picks gave us, uh, amongst other things, gave us a few spots today, but he gave us Dallas Mavericks to win the West at plus 700 and to win the championship at plus 1,400. Uh, Justin McKelvey, Stacks Play Day, Matt Olson, RBI, plus 140. Viper MB gave us the Braves, minus one and a half. Dodgers, minus one and a half. Gerald Jones gave us the Brewers, minus one uh, and a minus one first five. Uh, minus one first five plus 145. Mally Mal gave us Cubs first five money line. The minus one and a half first five. The first five over four and a half. What a monster our friend Mally Mal is. There he is in the chat sure right there. Mally Mal. Yeah, he's here. By the way, Mally Mal, you're not a PSR gold member. I love you, but you're not yeah. a PSR gold member. That's why you weren't in the chat in the uh, race there. You're we'd be pumping upgrade with all those fucking winnings you just got there, though. What a dude, he just milked that. Uh, Tone Miggins gave us Gunnar Henderson home run plus 475, over one and a half hits, uh, two or more bases, and RBI. Wow, Gunnar Henderson going all in on the gun. Fat Wally gave us the NASCAR Geico 500 action. Let me pop that in the chat for you all. There Shout we out to Fat go. Wally. There's our guy, yeah. Fat Wally, in the house. He's the only capper I trust with NASCAR action. Yeah, he's very strong with it. Very, very strong with that action his nephew also a very good uh nascar capper uh his nephew also delivering the good Chaz is his name Chaz. uh i'm gonna move on this first period under one and a half full game under five and a half and islanders hurricanes i know that bobano said that he expects more offense than um people expect in this series um i know what lou lamorello and patrick Waugh are going to do against the hurricanes they're gonna tighten the ship up i believe and i'm gonna you know bet it and deal with the goddamn consequences then here i'm gonna take the Leafs in game one i'm gonna take the Leafs in game one and if they win i'm not gonna go back to them uh troy torrance on the bulls and the kings in nba uh, bobano gave us bertuzzi to be the leading scorer in the series at 25 to 1 bobano gave us the over five and a half minus 118 in tampa bay florida and when the Rangers go down in this series, bet them live. But not in the first five or seven minutes of the game. Got to wait a little bit. Got to wait a little bit. Uh, then we have uh, Mel gave us the Winnipeg Jets to win the series. Jets to win game one and the series. She also said Edmonton to win two or more rounds. Bobano gave us the Jets to win the series and the over five and a half in game one. Very, very interesting that uh, even the Colorado cappers are backing away from the colorado avalanche table bobano gave us connor garland to be leading scorer at 12 to 1 in this uh knuckleheads uh, predators matchup nationals uh, nashville to win the series plus 145 i gotta figure out how i'm gonna bet this and and i guess maybe i gotta bet the predators every game um but then uh, I, when they're at home it'll be a pick em. won't be as advantageous uh, NHL spreadsheet play today. Islanders plus one and a half in game one. Uh, Land of the Blinded two says uh, Love Nats plus 151. Still kind of do at plus 128. That's another spot that DC Capper liked. I'm going to copy and paste this. And Ron Crawford's spreadsheet play of the day for Nolans. Let's get this in here. Uh, here and copy and paste it here. Okay. Then uh, Stars minus one, uh, both. Oh, no. Uh, Boban's going to be on Dallas money line and Dallas to win game one of the series. I'm going to be on Stars minus one. I don't want to mess with the Knights in the series. In fact, I'll be interested in backing the Knights once they go, if they go down 1 0. Bobano's only draw is Kings Oilers. I'm surprised there weren't more draws from him, plus 370. And he's also on the over five and a half. And then uh, Operation Garcia going to be in effect here. All my action will be locked in here shortly. And uh, our guy. Dan Kelly, Miami, Sacramento tonight. It says Orlando to win the series. Oh, no, that was Sky Dragon. My fault. This is Sky Dragon. Miami and Sacramento tonight. Orlando to win the series. The Knicks have been steamed enough. Give me Philly. Bobano's on the Miami Heat. BJ's best bets on the Heat. I'm going to be on the Heat first quarter. 
Then Smoke and Trees Max Bet is on the Sacramento Kings money line, and neither Boban and I have moved on that spot yet. I will be definitely moving live on these spots. Smooth Balls play of the day, same game parlay. Brewers money line and Freddie Peralta over seven and a half strikeouts, two oh eight. And Subhuman Gaucho gave us the Hurricanes to win the first three games of the Islanders Hurricane series at plus two fifty. And LJ from H Town Cash at Fridays play of the day. Jordan Alvarez over one half bases at plus one fourteen. We you know it's into- more important than all of those things, Jimmy. Uh, okay. Nuke Worker says have a good weekend. He's off for the uh, off to his nice. local uh, <laughs> pub, and he's gonna go uh, have a tug in the parking lot if he has time. So shout out to you, Nuke Worker. I hope you can make time for that. Oh, he's got the time. He's got yeah. the time. He's got the time. <laughs> if we have, if if you have time, Nuke, if. Okay, I'm going to be moving on this over in White Sox Philly. I'm going to go up against the market move. I'm going to wait till it hits rock bottom. Maybe it's already hit it. And maybe I double up on it. We'll see. Jose's on the first five under four in Astros Nationals. I'd like to join him on that. We had Millsy give us Thad Gene. Thad Gene in PFL, inside the distance, minus 135. And Keegan Murray over 18 and a half points. The gift play of the day, Oakland A's first five plus a half minus 107. And A's first five plus 140. Uh, Jose's tailed the gift. Razor Sharp picks give us the over eight in A's Guardians. Cab is on Ozuna, best bet over one and a half paces at minus 114. Jose's on the first five under and five in the full game under nine and a half, and I'd like to join him on that. TJ give us the Royals first five plus 115. Ron Crawford spreadsheet play today's Baltimore. Troy Torrance also on Baltimore. Tigers, Twinkies, we stayed off. Cab's on the Brewers, team total over four at even money. Jose's on the Cardinals full game plus 105. Razor Sharp picks gamblers first glance is on the Cardinals plus 102. I'm going to have to sit with that one. That's a wild, wild, wild situation, which I imagine will catch. I'm going to be on the under 10 and a half in Mariners Rockies. I imagine uh, the final score is six to five, and I lose by a half run and don't get the push. Uh, that's what's been happening, missing these totals, which won't happen as soon as we get deeper into the NHL and NBA playoffs and baseball is our main priority. Jose's on the Blue Jays' first five in full game. I'd like to join him on that. I'd also like to be on the under. And yes, we believe in Yariel Rodriguez and. Matt Waldron is not somebody I believe in that much, but Jay's offense, trash. TJ's next spot, first five under four and a half in Mets Dodgers. Dabby Cab bets, Mookie bets over one and a half bases. That's a Kong's Clips look as well. Mookie bets over one and a half bases. Smoking Trees Max bet there is Dodgers, first five minus a half. And I'm going to be on the first five under in Diamondbacks. Uh, Giants. Look at look at Mikey trying to shorten his fucking play, just calling yeah, it the grandma. grandma play. I don't even know what that is. What the fuck is that? What's the grandma play today? I don't know what that is. I don't. We don't acknowledge that bullshit, Mikey. Don't I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that. No, I don't. That doesn't have a good ring to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's Gross. It's horrible. My grandma over here in the tiniest panties you ever seen. She's sick to her stomach. Yeah. Grandma Francis. Sick sure. to her stomach. Francis, a, a woman's name. Yeah. She's just, she can't believe it. She's sitting here in the tiniest little panties you've ever seen that she borrowed from my sister, mm-hmm. Susie, and she's very, very upset. <laughs> very, very upset. Uh, the fact that, I think the fact that you dropped the S, the S word there made me, may got me there. It got me. It Susie? Got me. Shout out to Suze. Shout out to yeah. Suze. I didn't, yeah. I didn't realize it was so home. It hit home there. Call uh, it what you yeah, want, to... says Mike Money. What the, What happened to him? I guess his grandma's pissed off. I, I, I might have to suspend him. We might have to block him again. Fuck does he, does he need to be blocked guy. again? This guy, man. Jesus. Unbelievable. This is just, uh, this is really upsetting. I mean, I know. Yeah, I said, you think, well, this guy's... You think you can do that? Just give people what they want and then take it away from us and not be pissed? Does You, you think you can just arouse us whenever you goddamn well please and then stop? Just, exactly. Just stop arousing us? It's not, I'm not Jimmy. I don't show these pictures that often. If no. I did, you could accuse me of the same thing. It's only for rare circumstances. Oh, uh, n- now, uh, now he's now he can't even spell wearing. Worrying? Oh, worrying? What, what's what's worrying? Is is your grandma worrying about your sister's panties? I don't know why she would be worried. She's very concerned about your sister's panties. I'm guessing, Mike. Fuck. Jesus, what a goddamn disgrace. What a goddamn disgrace. Uh, we had such a great show, and I feel like this just... I feel ruined. like he's ruined this whole fucking We just thing. hit the iceberg. Oh, my God. It's a horrific... Four and a half hours, Mikey? And and you just throw it all away? Just, he doesn't care. You know, do we even leche after this garbage? 
Look at Justin. Even <laughs> Justin's very, very upset. I, I, you I know what, Mike? We might have to pull close this. Like, what, what are we doing, Mikey? You know, very upset. But but Justin is very, very upset. Yeah. Thank you, Perky. Don't let this happen again, Mike. Yeah, this is absolute fucking trash, man. Um, absolute goddamn trash. Phil the Kill says it's outrageous. Yeah. Well, uh, this, this is how we fucking end the show. Mike just Thanks, Mikey. Hey, we had a great week. It's Friday, I think, too. We're going to end the week like that, Mikey? Good what God. What the fuck, dude? Good God. And he's got his show, Last Call, popping off in, in two and a half hours. I'm sure no one will mention it at his program. I'm sure no one will mention about how his grandma's worrying about his sister's underwear. Oh, this is just enough to... Now, uh, now is the most important time of my day. <laughs> Got to get the bets in. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to figure out here, man. Uh, but this puzzle that we've been trying to figure out has been paying us. We must keep it going. Must stay locked in. Don't forget, we have our big 420 show tomorrow. That is right after our weekend Say Hey plays of the day at 11 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. And tomorrow's guests are uh, Jay Peasy and Dabra Cadabra. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. On. Now, you got to stay hot, Jose. Uh, our lives and summer depend on it. Thank you guys so much. Morgan Spooner, J Dub, Mally Mal, Justin McKelly. He's very, very upset. Very, like that face upset. says it all. Uh, Madad, Madadi uh, says uh, uh, everyone's advertising their picks. I don't know who is legit or not. That's right. That's, that's why you that's, gotta that's, stick yeah. around, man. Don't just come in and drop your balls off in the pool. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. Takes time to figure out who's legit. <laughs> Madadi. I mean, did you see Mikey now? I can't, my, I, I can't take Mikey fucking seriously after what he did. Yeah, no, it's Mikey. Mike, so I think you got to cross him out, Ma Dadi. Yeah, I see. Yeah, this guy can't even properly talk about his grandma's panties. Uh, Phil the Kill, Gerald Jones, Jason Work, the Nuke Worker, Fat Wally, AOD, Bo Jackson, Philly Eagle Flyer, Von Polo, Razor Sharp Picks, Perky Bump Sanderson. Thank you, guys. Land of the Blinded 2. Big Daddy Boom. Thank you, guys, uh, for your support. Johnny K in the house. Let's go out there and get that cash uh, right this very, very second. Um, we're running so hot here on the show, uh, and it must continue. Jose, thank you for all your hard work. Uh, to our guests, uh, thank you. Bobano, Millsy, who dropped by. And to Dabby Cab and TJ, thank you, guys. Thank you both uh, for all of your uh, angles and thoughts and hard work and sharing it all with us. DC Capper, keep up the great work, my man. Let's go get paid in full. Jose, thank you for all that you do. Uh, have another big, big night. You're seeing the board so clearly. It's so crucial. And uh, Razor Screaming Shot Time, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I've cut down. I, I've cut down heavy on the uh, heavy boozing, but it'll come back. Don't worry. Now Are you what still I going do to the is, gym? I have been this. I went uh, on Wednesday. I got to go today. What I do now, Razor, is I, I drink way less often, and I uh, I blackout when I do. Uh, I go very very <laughs> hard. As soon as it touches my lips, I I get overserved. Everyone loves overserving me because I'm very kind. Sure. No matter how intoxicated I get, I'm very kind. Sure. Um, but I yeah, I'm, a, I'm a very sentimental out. too at times. I do. I get sentimental. I do get sentimental. Uh, let's go out there and get that fucking cash. Jose, great work all week. Stay hot, my man. Let's milk these fucking bookies, man. Milk these fucking bookies, man. Legit! Lost bookmakers. Milk these bookies.